Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 209 The first part of the riddle and the second part of the riddle didn't match at all. Was this truly a riddle? The silent master believed that the lantern seller had intentionally set up the riddle to deceive people. How can there be an answer to that riddle? Seeing that the silent master refused to leave unless the riddle was answered, Yi Mu became speechless at his childishness. She pondered for a moment before she asked in a loud voice, Do you really want this lantern? A monk cannot have any desire or longing, so the silent master will definitely pretend that he didn't want it. Even so, his gaze was still fixed on the lantern. He pondered over the riddle in his mind over and over again. Yi Mu sighed like an adult. Since you want it that badly, then I'll solve it for you. The silent master looked at her in surprise, do you know the answer to the riddle? Of course. Yi Mu replied confidently. The silent master frowned, you are still young, how do you know the answer to a love riddle like this? Yi Mu froze for a moment and quickly said, don't fret over these minor details. With that said, she slammed the table and said to the busy shopkeeper, shopkeeper, we have solved the riddle for the lantern. The shopkeeper dropped what he was doing and walked over. He said with a smile, little girl, have you guessed the answer to the old riddle? He glanced at the riddle. A pair of mandarin ducks played in the water while the butterflies longed for flowers. The monarch had many wives, but who will manage to end up as his one true love? The red bean roots yearned to grow, but in its previous life, it was planted in a concubine's heart. They will wait for the day they will finally meet, so they can enjoy spring, summer, autumn, and winter together. Then he chuckled and said, why don't you tell me the answer and he'll check if it's correct. Yimu tugged the silent master's sleeve, and when he bent down, she whispered in his ear, the answer to the riddle is, to find and fall in love with each other so that their love will last forever. The silent master turned red at once, how is that possible? Yimu put her hands on her hips and said, why is it impossible? Tell the shopkeeper the answer and you'll know whether or not I'm correct. The silent master braced himself and answered the riddle. Unexpectedly, the old shopkeeper clapped his hands and said, you guessed correctly. Here, the lantern is now yours. With that said, he handed the lantern to the silent master. The silent master took the lantern from the shopkeeper. He was unable to disguise how much he liked the lantern, but in the next moment, he handed the lantern to Yimu. Here, you can have it since you're the one who guessed the riddle. Yimu didn't take the lantern from him, instead, she laughed and said, let's go. I wouldn't have bothered guessing the riddle if you didn't like it. You can keep it, consider it as a gift. The men and women around them looked at the silent master enviously when they heard Yimu's words. Some men even made some exaggerated noises with ill intention while others loudly gossip about how blessed the silent master was to have such a clever and pretty girlfriend. The silent master's face turned red once again, but he held on to the lantern tightly as Yimu dragged him away from the crowd. He looked at the lantern in his arms as his heart pounded rapidly against his chest. This was the first gift he received in many years. They strolled around the fair and Yimu bought a lot of things. They walked by the lake as the crowd started to disperse. The silent master held the lantern up the light from the lantern reflected on his handsome and charming face. He looked like a celestial fairy. Yimu suddenly asked him, are you happy being a monk? The smile on the silent master's face faded a little, it's my nature to be a monk. Yimu smiled and asked, what if you have another chance to choose again? If you can turn back time, would you still choose to be a monk? The silent master fell silent and a smile on his face gradually disappeared. Just when Yimu believed that he would not answer her question, he quietly responded, if I can turn back time, then I think I might strangle myself to death. Chapter 2.10. Why? Yi Mu looked at him in shock. The silent master said, because some people are not meant to be born into this world. He smiled again when he said this, but Yi Mu was able to detect the sadness underneath his smile. He tried to lead Yi Mu through the crowd, but Yi Mu stopped walking altogether. Is it because of the Empress Dowager? The silent master's back was facing Yi Mu. The truth is, the emperor and I already knew a long time ago that the empress dowager would often look for you to listen to you preach about Buddha. 
that happened before the current emperor had returned to the palace. When the silent master heard this, he turned sideways and slowly looked at her. At that moment, he looked both noble and aloof. His blue clothes fluttered in the wind he looked as if he was about to fly away in the next moment. Then why didn't you say anything? Aren't you afraid that I'm one of the Empress Dowager's people? Aren't you afraid that I will do something evil to you? Yi Mu shook her head, of course I was worried at first. But because my condition continued to deteriorate, I had to receive help from you. But you never did anything evil to me even though you had so many chances when you were treating my illness. So, the Emperor and I concluded that you should be a good person. After he listened to her explanation, he suddenly revealed a smile. It was obvious he was trying to hold back his tears with that smile. Perhaps, just perhaps, I am a good person. It's getting late, let's return. The silent master started walking again when he said, but the relationship between the Empress Dowager and I is not the kind of relationship you're imagining. Yi Mu froze for a moment she didn't know how to respond. Soon, the silent master's voice returned to his usually gentle and kind tone. I will help you soothe out your internal energy later, but you can't head back to Qianshou Temple today. I forgot to tell you that all the rooms there are occupied. Is the room that I usually occupy taken too? Yi Mu looked at him with a condemning gaze. Yes. The smile in the silent master's eyes deepened. Yi Mu looked up at the darkening sky and said, If I return to the palace now, they'll be scolded since it's already very late. Should I squeeze into a room with you? The silent master was a monk, so Yi Mu was not afraid that head turn into a beast. But the silent master shook his head and said, if you squeeze into a room with me, you might die an even worse death. From his tone, he didn't seem to be joking. Yi Mu shrank her neck back in fear. By now, it was already very late into the night. The palace was already locked up for the night, so most people would never be able to enter at this time. Yi Mu snuck into the palace. The palace guards all recognized her, so they quickly opened the door and let her through. Miss Yi, why did you return so late? One of the guards asked curiously. Yi Mu was slightly embarrassed as she said, There are too many worshippers at Tianshou Temple today, so there aren't any rooms left. I had no choice but to return. The guards nodded his head and suddenly said, Then you should have a good night's rest. I heard that His Majesty lost his temper today. You should stay away from him for now. Ha! Huh? Yi Mu turned to look at the guard, The Emperor lost his temper today. Why? The guard stroked his head and said, I don't know the details, but it's best if you stay away. Yi Mu nodded her head, thanked him, and then walked towards the inner palace. She walked quickly, and in a short while, she was on the road back to where she lived. When she turned to look around, she saw that the palace where Mo Linyuan currently resided in was brightly lit. Why was he still awake at this hour? Yi Mu temporarily forgot the advice the guard had given her because she was curious and headed toward where Mo Linyuan lived. When she got closer, she discovered a row of people kneeling outside the palace. Wen Feng was one of the people kneeling too. Yi Mu quickly walked to Wen Feng's side and asked him, What happened to you? Did you get in trouble? Wen Feng was surprised to see Yi Mu, Miss, why are you back today? Chapter 211 Yi Mu said, Tianshou Temple is full today. I originally planned on squeezing in with the Silent Master because he had a large courtyard. But the Silent Master rejected my request, so I had no choice but to come back. When Feng breathed a sigh of relief, fortunately, he didn't agree on sharing a room with you. What? No, I didn't say anything. When Feng quickly said, Miss, you should return to your chambers and rest for the night. Your Majesty is in a bad mood right now, so it's best if you don't disturb him. Yi Mu raised her head and looked into the palace where Mo Linyuan was residing. All the windows and doors to the palace were closed, so she couldn't see anything. Why is he in a bad mood? When Feng glanced at her, wasn't it all because of you? You told us that you are merely getting your injury treated, so why did you have to attend the temple fair with the monk? Not only did the two of you play together, but the two of you looked very happy spending time with each other. In addition to that, you have been avoiding His Majesty. You ignored H.I.'s Majesty and played around with a monk. Do you think it's possible for His Majesty not to be mad? Of course, Wen Feng didn't dare to say all of that to her. He shook his head and said, 
it's best if you don't bother him for now. Wen Feng was the second person who told her not to disturb the emperor today, so she could already guess that Emo Linyuan was angry because of her. She pondered over it and headed straight into the palace despite Wen Feng's warnings. The entire hall was empty because everyone was kneeling outside. Even so, the lights in the palace hall were brightly lit. Mo Linyuan's study was at the end of the hall. Yimu cautiously opened the door and saw that Mo Linyuan was writing something at his desk. He didn't raise his head when she opened the door. His hair wasn't tied up, so his long black hair spilled down from his head, making him appear more aloof than usual. His eyebrows were tightly knit together, making it obvious that he was worried about something. His phoenix eyes were downcast, and his long eyelashes looked like two small brushes in the candlelight. His thin lips were pressed together tightly. He was only wearing a thin layer of clothing with a yellow dragon robe draped over his shoulder. Yi Mu had been avoiding him before because she felt uncomfortable around him after his confession. But after playing today, she felt much better. She entered the room because she believed that there was no need to continue avoiding him anymore. After all, they had been friends for many years. Mo Linyuan wouldn't do anything inappropriate to her, right? With that mind, she quietly entered his study like a little thief. You remember that this is your home? She could detect that anger in his voice. Mo Linyuan did not look up at her, but Yi Mu knew that his entire focus was on her right now. Yi Mu straightened her back and smiled, of course I will return. Your Majesty, why aren't you resting? Mo Linyuan finally raised his head and looked at her. Did you have fun today? Although he was smiling, Yi Mu knew that his smile was not sincere. Are you tired after playing for an entire day? Although his voice was very gentle, Yi Mu could feel the threatening tone underneath his gentle voice. He looked at her like he was looking at a prey goosebumps rose on her arms. She casually approached him, pretending as if nothing was wrong. Although the pressure around them would increase with every step she took, she still had a relaxed expression on her face. She acted as if she couldn't detect any danger at all. I'm a little tired from playing all day today. I planned on returning tomorrow, but all the rooms in Tianshou Temple were occupied, so I had to return. Mo Linyuan was surprised by how honest she was with him. He stopped writing and asked her another question. Did you have fun today? Yi Mu stood beside him and said, I had fun today. But I do have some regrets. What kind of regret? Yi Mu stretched her hand and placed a protection amulet on his desk. She said in a soft voice, the temple fair today was very lively. I went with the silent master and we strolled around the fair. But I feel somewhat regrettable because I realized that we haven't gone out together for a long time. Mo Linyuan was taken aback for a moment while he stared at the protection amulet in front of him. Is this for me? Chapter, 212 Yi Mu smiled and said, of course this is for you. I really wanted to bring you a gift when I went out shopping today, but none of the items caught my eyes. I only liked the protection amulet from the temple, so I kneeled for half an hour to get it. She stuffed the talisman into the fragrance sachet on Mo Linyuan's waist. After she stuffed the amulet in, she patted the sachet. Although I don't believe in things like these, I still want you to have it. The situation in the palace is getting more and more complicated, I want you to stay safe. She was kneeling on one knee as she spoke. The pressure around Mo Linyuan's body slowly dissipated. He looked down at the girl kneeling at his feet and suddenly sighed. Isn't this the only thing I need? Ha! Huh. Yi Mu looked up when Mo Linyuan suddenly grabbed her hand. The room spun around her and in the next second, her back was lying against the dragon couch. Bang! Mo Linyuan's hands were on her sides and he smiled faintly when he saw the frightened expression on her face. All I want is you, and only you. Yi Mu looked startled as he stared at him. She stuttered, why you? Hush. Mo Linyuan touched her lips by putting a finger against her lips. The dragon robe draped over his shoulder had slipped off, revealing the thin layer of the silky white garment he was wearing. The silky white garment contrasted sharply against his ink-black hair. Under the dim light from the candlelight, he looked like an immortal fairy. I was unhappy all day the moment I heard the news that you and the silent master headed out to play. His gaze was a little cold, but it was obvious that his frigid gaze was directed at the silent master. 
I heard that he held your hand when the two of you strolled around the temple fair together. I even heard that the two of you tried guessing the lantern riddles. I am extremely upset. Even if Yimu had a low EQ, she could still tell that Imo Linyuan was jealous. She could neither laugh nor cry when she said, What are you thinking? I'm only eleven years old. How can he still be jealous when she was only eleven years old? Mo Linyuan did not smile, although eleven years old is still a little young, you could still get married. Are you being serious? Yi Mu was a little terrified. She tried to sit up, but she was pushed onto the couch by Mo Linyuan again. There was a dangerous glint in Mo Linyuan's alluring eyes. He suddenly lowered his head and directly kissed Yi Mu's lips. As she was being kissed by Mo Linyuan, Yi Mu shoved Mo Linyuan with force and then she asked him, what are you doing? Mo Linyuan stumbled backward after being pushed by her. The corners of his mouth curved upward, revealing an evil smile. Can't you see what I'm doing? He took a step forward and looked down at her. I told you that I like you and after my confession, you started to avoid me. You are only willing to see me right now because you believe that I wouldn't do anything to you, right? You believe that I was merely all talks and no action. Yi Mu stared at him, why you am only eleven years old? Do you really need to act so insanely? Mo Linyuan tilted his head slightly. Eleven years old. Do you know how old my royal mother was when she gave birth to me? Yi Mu stared at him while bent closer to her. My royal mother entered the imperial palace at the age of thirteen and she gave birth to me at the age of fourteen. Now, do you still believe that eleven years old is very young? Yi Mu was simply speechless. This society was evil. Even if that's true, I still can't do it. She raised her head and stared at him firmly. I know. That's why I won't do anything to you, I just want to tell you this. He hovered over her as he emphasized each and every word as he spoke. I am the emperor of the M.O. country. Everything in this country belongs to me, and that includes you. So, you should be prepared to be taken by me at any time, okay? Chapter 213 Yi Mu was utterly speechless. The young teenager in front of her was very different compared to the first time they've met. He had become taller, strong, more handsome, and dangerous. She was the only one who continued to treat him like a child. She believed that his confession was merely a joke, and nothing more. In the end, Yi Mu returned to her residence in a daze. Her face burned like she had a fever when she recalled that she had just been kissed by Mo Linyuan. She was taken advantage of by a brat. Well she couldn't call him a child anymore. The possessive and overbearing attitude he had shown towards her exceeded her expectations. Do all children in this era mature this quickly? He was only fifteen, yet he already knew how to kiss a girl. The feudal society was a really bad influence on the children. Although thousands of thoughts raced through her mind, one of those thoughts particularly stood out. She did not feel disgusted by his kiss. The scent that Emo Linyuan exuded smelled good. It was not an ambergris scent, rather it smelled more like an orchid. After Yimu left, Emo Linyuan took out the protection amulet she had placed inside his fragrance sachet. Yimu still remembered him even though she went out to play with another man today. This knowledge made all the anger and unhappiness he was feeling earlier this morning vanish like smoke in thin air. He carefully wore the amulet around his neck and tucked under her clothes. When he recalled Yi Mu's flushed expression when she pushed him away and fled, he couldn't help but chuckle. It's fine, he will give her a little more time. After the silent master returned to the temple, he didn't return the cloth wrapped around his head. Instead, he secretly hid the cloth away. Today was the first time he stole something, but he believed that he probably won't steal anything else in the future. He also received his first gift today. He liked the gift a lot. He put the glazed lantern and the blue cloth together. Under the flame from candlelight, his eyes became more and more gentle and he was even smiling. But the smile on his face suddenly faded when he recalled something. He put the two items that were in front of him into a box. It seemed like he wanted to lock and seal up the memory he made today. He didn't deserve to possess such beautiful things. What he experienced and received today was a gift from Buddha. The following day, Mo Linyuan started the royal court early. When he was recuperating after being poisoned, he left most of the affairs related to the royal court to Prime Minister Wen. 
people could smell that something fishy was going on. When he returned to court, many people thought that he would take back his powers from Prime Minister Wen, but surprisingly, Mo Linyuan did not do that. On the contrary, he repeatedly praised the Prime Minister for doing the job so well. The three great families originally made a pact to trust each other, so that the emperor will not be able to break up their relationships with each other. However, some of the members from the three great families were a little dissatisfied when they saw how the emperor had continuously praised one. One didn't try to explain himself at all either. The emperor had severely suppressed the three great families' powers. Many of the policies and laws he passed were directed at influential families by preventing them from continuing to monopolize certain businesses and prevent them from gaining more influence. Recently, these policies weren't enforced as harshly as it usually was because of Prime Minister Wen. Many people suspected that Wen had poisoned the emperor in hopes that he could control the emperor as his puppet. The Empress Dowager was also very unhappy when she saw this. She believed that it was the Wen family who had poisoned the emperor because the young emperor usually didn't allow a speck of sand to dirty his eyes. It was suspicious how the young emperor treated the Wen family so kindly. Therefore, when the royal court ended, the Empress Dowager blocked one from leaving. One, what tricks are you trying to play? How could I don't understand what's going on? Although one looked much thinner than he was before, there was still a glint of shrewdness in his eyes as he said, What is the Empress Dowager talking about? Did this official do something that displeased you? Bah! The Empress Dowager saw that there was no one else in the royal garden, so she immediately wrapped her arms around one of his arms, How long has it been since you've last visited me? Tell me, who is the woman that has snared your soul and heart? Chapter 214 Wen Zhe looked at her deeply for a moment before he finally pried away her hand. Empress Dowager, please have some respect for yourself. Have some self-respect. A glint of hostility flashed by Zhao Yunqing's eyes, don't tell me you're going to throw me away after you finished using me? The young emperor follows your orders blinding while all the other influential families all obey your commands. It seems like it won't be long before I will fall under your control and follow your orders too. That's not true. Wen Zhe said sternly. Zhao Yunqin immediately noticed that his reaction was strange, so she dragged him toward her palace, I don't care. I will not let you go today unless you explain everything to me. With that said, she forced Wen Zhe to leave the royal court. After the two of them left, Mo Linyuan walked out from the shadows along with Yi Mu. I'm surprised that the Empress Dowager has such a wide network of information. Even Prime Minister Wen served as an advisor to her. Mo Linyuan said, if a woman wants to survive in the imperial harem, then she will need to depend on a man. But if she wants to stand above everyone else, then she will need to depend on many men. Yi Mu was slightly confused by his explanation, are you implying that Zhao Yunqing has more than one man backing her? Mo Linyuan looked at her with a mysterious smile on his face. What do you think? Yi Mu didn't dare to ask any more questions. She recently noticed that Mo Linyuan was acting very strange. He kept looking at her like she was a tiny lamb waiting to be slaughtered. He may appear gentle, but his smile made her blood run cold it made her want to run away from him. Yi Mu shrank her neck and realized that her peaceful days were soon going to end. Mo Linyuan said, you said before that the Empress Dowager will probably back out of this scheme because of guilt. But I believe that she won't stop scheming unless we catch her red-handed. Otherwise, she wouldn't be acting so unbridled in broad daylight. Yi Mu said, even if we catch her, she won't necessarily admit to the crimes. She is a cruel woman, so if her schemes were exposed to the public, she will probably push all the crime on to one of the men backing her. Mo Linyuan glanced at her approvingly after listening to her deductions. There is only one man that can possibly make her willingly admit to all her crimes. He smiled and squeezed Yi Mu's face, she wants to protect that adulterer. If their crimes are exposed, she will probably willingly bear all the crimes. Yi Mu forgot about her cheeks that were being squeezed and widened her eyes in surprise, is it possible for her to willingly bear all the crimes for that man? Who knows? Mo Linyuan led Yi Mu away. They still had a long time ahead of them, so he didn't mind if things played out slowly. Time gradually passed by and another year had passed. On this day, Yi Mu was hiding in her palace, refusing to head out. Miss? Miss? The maidservant finally managed to drag Yi Mu from under her bed, as His Majesty's study companion, 
he should accompany his majesty when he's attending class. Yi Mu just wanted to cry. She had taught him everything she could teach, and she didn't want to see him. She wanted to hide. Yi Mu was curled up in a ball in the corner of the room, refusing to come out. The maidservant smiled when she saw that and said, His Majesty sent someone to ask you to head over. If he doesn't see you in a quarter of an hour, he said he will personally come here in person. His Majesty is someone who keeps his words. Yi Mu's cheeks were streaming with tears. He was so hateful. She couldn't even try to feign illness to avoid this. She crawled out from under the bed with grief and indignation. The young girl had grown a little once again she looked extraordinarily beautiful. There was still some baby fat on her face right now, but her large and charming eyes looked very quick-witted. But the expression on her face looked very sullen. The maidservants clothed and freshened up Yimu. Then, she pushed Yimu out the door. Chapter, 215 His Majesty cares a lot about you, so you must not let him down. Fighting Yi Mu was the one who taught them how to use the word fighting. Yi Mu couldn't say anything before she was kicked out of the room. She was feeling very sullen because her life was very difficult since Mo Linyuan ruled over the entire imperial palace. The Emperor's Imperial Study Oh! You're finally willing to come here. Mo Linyuan's tall and slender body blocked Yi Mu from entering the study. She didn't know what he had eaten, and even though he was merely four years older than Yi Mu, Mo Linyuan was much taller than her. Yi Mu had to admit that she didn't have good genetics. Generally, most twelve-year-old maidservants in the imperial palace were taller than her too. Mo Linyuan smiled when he noticed that she was daydreaming again. He leaned towards her and kissed her ear. Yi Mu immediately snapped out of her trance, covered her ears, and jumped backward. What are you doing? Mo Linyuan stepped back and smiled gently when he saw how vigilant she looked when she jumped backward. Come in, I've been waiting for you for a long time. The surrounding servants pretended not to have seen them blatantly flirting with one another. When Yi Mu arrived at the study room, the servants had all stepped out and closed the door. Yi Mu was like a delicious plate of roasted lamb as she was pushed into the guest's table to be eaten clean. Today, Mo Linyuan wore a white dragon robe. He didn't like the gold color, so he usually wore light-colored clothes unless he had to attend court or a major ceremony. He also didn't like to tie his hair. Once court ended, his hair was loosely tied in the back. Looking from the back, he looked like an immortal fairy. But when he turned around, he gave off a different aura. He looked more devilishly charming from the front when he smiled. Originally, he should have drafted for women to be selected as his concubines last year, but he refused. Many women in the capital were heartbroken when they heard the news. Some young ladies even refused to marry because they wanted to wait for the emperor to draft young women into the imperial palace. Mo Linyuan always appeared gentle and aloof to the outside world, but he acted like a big bad wolf in front of Yi Mu. He would take small advantages of her from time to time. Yi Mu was frightened all day and night because of this she couldn't sleep well anymore. By now, Yi Mu was no longer Mo Linyuan's opponent. Because she couldn't use her inner strength and could only rely on her martial arts skills, she was helpless in front of Mo Linyuan. She wanted to beat herself up for teaching Mo Linyuan everything she knew. If she hadn't done that then she wouldn't be in such a passive position now. The apprentice had now surpassed the master. Come here. Mo Linyuan waved at Yi Mu, beckoning her to come over. Although Yi Mu was unwilling, she had no choice, but she slowly moved towards Mo Linyuan. Mo Linyuan asked her to sit down and then pulled her onto his lap. Seeing how effortlessly he had done that, it was obvious that this had happened many times. I didn't sleep well last night, so my head hurts a lot today. A bunch of the officials quarreled with one another during court today, and I barely had any reaction because of this headache. Yi Mu was curious, so she couldn't help but ask, why are they arguing? Due to Mo Linyuan's brilliant methods when it came to dealing with people, few people dared to act so disrespectfully in front of him. It seemed like something big was going to happen. Mo Linyuan stretched his hand and squeezed her nose gently. You should be asking me why I didn't sleep well last night. Yi Mu burst into tears in her heart while she maintained an unwavering smile on her face. She quickly cheered herself up and fawned over him. Why didn't you sleep well last night? 
Mo Linyuan narrowed his phoenix eyes and suddenly smiled coldly, shouldn't you worry about me right now since I'm having a headache? Chapter, 216 Yi Mu really wanted to strangle this bad guy. Between laughter and tears, she said, let me give you a head massage, I have some experience in this. Mo Linyuan was pleased with her suggestion. He found a comfortable position on her lap, closed his eyes, and allowed her to massage him rhythmically. The two of them didn't say anything for a while. A moment later, Mo Linyuan called out, Little Muir. Hmm. Is your period still not here yet? After realizing he was asking about her period, Yi Mu almost pushed him off her legs. Despite coming from the postmodern world, she still couldn't control her blush as she felt unbearably embarrassed. Should he really be asking these things? Sensing Yi Mu's rigid body and strange expression, Mo Linyuan opened his phoenix like eyes. He slightly turned his pair of gorgeous and deep eyes at her, taking in her crazed expression. Why did you become bashful now? Could she not be shy? It took Yi Mu a while before she swallowed her resentment. She said moodily, How can you ask me this? She pouted, seemingly unhappy, Don't ask me that ever again. Why not? Mo Linyuan chuckled lightly his voice particularly magnetic. However, it sounded like torture to her ears at this moment. If I don't ask now, what if you don't tell me in the future? Yi Mu widened her eyes. Well, why would I even tell you about this? Mo Linyuan looked at her disapprovingly, yesterday, I read from a book that once a woman has her period, she is mature enough to give birth to a child. If you don't want to tell me about these things, who do you want to tell instead? Yi Mu felt that she could no longer communicate with Mo Linyuan when did it become this difficult to understand a 16-year-old boy? What did her period and her ability to give birth to a child or not have anything to do with him? You are such a pervert. Yi Mu angrily reached over to pinch him but Mo Linyuan caught her hand halfway, pulling it under his lips and kissing it. Okay, don't be shy now. He'll stop talking about it, alright? Yi Mu flushed deeply. She tactfully jumped over this topic and asked seriously, then tell me why you guys were fighting about in court today. Mo Linyuan's expression turned cold. Nothing serious. Zhou family's heir died. As a result, they were making a commotion in court, claiming that he died of murder and demanded that I thoroughly investigate it. And you say this is nothing serious? Yi Mu glared at him. Mo Linyuan put away his smile and said solemnly, compared to why I couldn't fall asleep yesterday, this is really nothing serious. Yi Mu hastily asked him, why couldn't you sleep last night? Mo Linyuan glanced at Yi Mu then, he suddenly pounced and pressed her down on the imperial bed. He said in a low voice, because I was thinking about you. Ah. Little Muir, why don't you move to my imperial palace starting today? He was asking seriously, but when Yi Mu heard that, she quickly pushed him away. In your dreams. She is still a child, yet he had been thinking about her daily. If they really slept in the same room, she would definitely be eaten up within minutes. Mo Linyuan knelt down next to the imperial bed, glanced at her as though he was in a difficult position, and sighed. Little Muir, you are always so disobedient. He said sternly, I have always given you whatever you want so you can't reject my requests either. His words made Yi Mu recall all the suffering she went through this year. One time, she didn't want to wear any skirts, so she ran around wearing simple trousers all day long. Mo Linyuan didn't say anything on the surface, but he ordered someone to take away all her pants and trousers, leaving her with only skirts to wear. Chapter, 217 There was another time when she didn't want to go to the imperial study with Mo Linyuan, so she would hide from him. Again, he would smile and say nothing. Then early next morning, while she was sleeping in, the noise of gongs and drums rang outside her door, forcing her to get up and go to the imperial study. Things like this happened often. He had committed too many evil conducts for her to even count. Whenever she wanted something, he'd give her the opposite. Whenever he wanted something, she would refuse, but it was never successful. But this was the first time in a long time that he wanted her to sleep with him. It wasn't enough for him to occupy all her time during the day, but now he wanted to torment her at night as well. She absolutely couldn't tolerate this. No way. There's no way I'll move to your imperial palace. I won't sleep with you. Yi Mu stood her ground firmly. Who knew that Mo Linyuan glanced at her in surprise? 
when did I say I wanted to sleep with you? He smiled, a mischievous glint in his eyes. I just wanted you to move to the side chamber, but you actually wanted to sleep with me. He pretended to think, you can but, aren't you afraid of me? Yi Mu wanted to strangle him again. She gritted through her teeth, I refuse to move into the side chamber or sleep with you. With that said, she turned around and wanted to run out. If you refuse, then you won't be getting any of your daily desserts. After Mo Linyuan finished speaking, he saw Yi Mu slow down unsurprisingly. Recently, Mo Linyuan spent a lot of effort to find a very skilled dim sum chef to cook for her. Eating such great food consistently has made Yi Mu's face rounder and chubbier to his pleasure. Yi Mu felt that she couldn't give in just because of food, so she quickened her pace. Besides, you won't get the token to leave the palace anymore if you don't accept my requests. Yi Mu's footsteps stopped again. It's fine. Once she gets familiar with the guards, she could probably sneak out with their help instead of relying on the token. As she was thinking this, there was a hint of a smile in Mo Linyuan's voice as he spoke, it seems like you really don't want to move over. He sat on the imperial bed and said very leisurely, then I will reluctantly move to your place. Mo Linyuan, you. Yi Mu turned around annoyedly only to see Mo Linyuan resting a finger on his lips. Silly girl, all's fair in war. It was you who taught me this. Therefore, Yi Mu helplessly went back to pack her bags since Mo Linyuan wanted her to move in by today. After Yi Mu left, a man in black walked in and knelt at Mo Linyuan's feet. Your Majesty, I have received news that the Zhou family is likely to act tonight. The Prime Minister warns you to be prepared. Right now, Mo Linyuan's relaxed expression has vanished. His refined face became gloomy right then, mixed with a glimpse of danger. His red lips twitched slightly. Little Muir will naturally be safe if she lives with me. The Zhou family first needs to have the capabilities before thinking about capturing her to threaten me. The man in black didn't know what to say. In the end, he said, Your Majesty is brilliant. Your Majesty, are you sure you aren't doing this for personal gains though? Yi Mu started to pack her things angrily. Poor Yi Mu, she just wanted to get the city boundary map, but that bastard, Mo Linyuan, always bullied her. The worst part was that her resistance was to no avail. She couldn't even run away she was forced to stay by his side. This was really frustrating. But the people around Yi Mu didn't understand her resentment. When they found out that Yi Mu was going to sleep in His Majesty's bed, they couldn't contain their excitement. Finally. His Majesty should have done this a long time ago. This is what a true emperor should do. Chapter, 218. Yes, yes. Your Majesty has finally taken the initiative after waiting for so long. Said one of the maids. Another maid took Yi Mu's hand and said with sparkling eyes, Young miss, you have to work hard. Try to quickly become pregnant with an imperial son in one go. That way, your future as the queen is guaranteed and you can live honorably from then on. What? Yi Mu exclaimed. She was both annoyed and amused by their comments. These palace maids have been with her for a long time, so they don't seem to be afraid of her at all now. You do realize that I'm only twelve, right? Yi Mu placed her hands on her waist and pretended to say angrily, Are you all so eager to watch me get married off? The oldest maid laughed, It's because we don't want young miss to get married off that we hope for you to marry his majesty. Plus. She took Yi Mu's hand again, although twelve years old seems young, you can still build an intimate relationship with His Majesty early on. That way, we don't have to worry as much anymore. Yi Mu was simply at a loss for words. Okay, so all of you were so blinded by worry that you've forgotten that I'm still a child. The other maids laughed merrily. They're just teasing you. The head maid replied while fixing Yi Mu's messy bun. His Majesty treats you tenderly, so how could he possibly bully you when you're still not mature yet? We have all witnessed how His Majesty pampers you all these years. There's no need for you to worry about this. Yi Mu felt a little embarrassed after hearing their words. Although she lived in the palace, she had never followed any proper etiquette. Her freedom was because Mo Linyuan had continuously indulged her. Even if she slept with him during the night, Yi Mu believed that he wouldn't do anything but tease her at the most. Yi Mu didn't know whether to laugh or cry. It got dark quickly. 
Yi Mu continued to linger in the bathwater and refused to go out. Originally, they'd agreed that she'd live in the side chamber. However, once she arrived at his palace, Missouri Lin Yuan, that guy, changed his mind unsurprisingly. He said that the side chamber wasn't ready, so they'd take care of it tomorrow. Damn it! How could the palace where the emperor lives not have a side chamber ready? He was clearly messing with her. Yet, the sad part was that she couldn't even call him out on his schemes. At that moment, the head of the maids walked in. She stood behind the screen and giggled, Young miss, your majesty said if you don't come out, I'll come in. Ha! Huh. Yi Mu was shocked. She folded her arms across her chest, got it, in coming out now. Damn it! Screw it! I might as well head out. I doubt Mo Lin Yuan would dare to do anything. About an hour later, Yi Mu stood at the foot of the bed hugging a soft pillow. As a twelve-year-old girl, she naturally gave off the sweetest appearance without doing anything. She slightly curled her fair and tender feet on the golden tiles. Her ink-colored hair scattered on her shoulders. She stared at the imperial intently with her pair of huge black eyes, unsure of what to do. The pillow was something she suddenly wanted on an urge. When Emo Linyuan found out her wish, he collected the softest swan goose down feathers to create her dream pillow, which she brought with her today. As for Emo Linyuan, he was currently sitting on the bed reading a book, eyes not lifting. Yi Mu looked at the three meter wide bed in front of her. She hesitated for a moment before climbing up from the foot of the bed. She placed her pillow comfortably and prepared to sleep when Emo Linyuan suddenly chuckled. You plan on sleeping by the foot of the bed the entire night? Yi Mu's back stiffened, I just like to curl up into a ball when I sleep. Mo Linyuan put his book aside and commanded, Come here. You can curl up in my arms. Chapter, 219 Yi Mu was speechless. Mo Linyuan looked at her calmly, You're going to reject me? Similarly, his hair was untied and flowed like a curtain. His handsome face still carried a smile. His chest was slightly exposed because his nightwear was tugged a bit to the side, revealing his delicate collarbone. He had a noble and elegant appearance, but his words left people to indulge in their fantasies. What should she do? The big bad wolf revealed his sharp claws and teeth. Should she go over? Yi Mu's body shrunk back. She became a coward in front of a person who she couldn't hide or hit she tried to gather her courage by hugging her pillow tightly and leaned forward to nervously assert, I'm only twelve, you really can't do anything to me. Mo Lin Yuan was torn between laughing or crying. Does he really typically treat her that badly? She was so young and pitiful, so how can he possibly do anything to her? Of course, cuddling and kissing didn't count. Come here. He smiled and sternly repeated it again. Yi Mu knew that normally someone would be punished had he repeat his words a third time. Therefore, she quickly crawled over. Thinking back, the last time they shared a bed was when they were very young. Now, Mo Lin Yuan has already grown into a handsome young man. She could longer be comfortable around him as she used to be when they were kids because he gave off a dangerous presence to her now. Yet, the young boy from back the past still had a wise temperament than most kids his age. However, he was a seasoned hunter now. Why are you looking at me like that? Mo Lin Yuan enjoyed pinching Yi Mu's cheeks. They were still soft just like when she was still a child. Her cheeks were warm, making him want to squeeze lovingly and never let go. Yi Mu stared at him and gritted through her teeth, let be clear about one thing, you can't move around at night because that will disturb me from sleeping comfortably. Mo Lin Yuan raised his eyebrows slightly, oh. He pressed Yi Mu down as he laid down. Then he scooped the little Yi Mu into his arms, sighing in content. Is this okay? Be good and I promise I won't move. When she heard that, Yi Mu blushed involuntarily. It was strange. Mo Lin Yuan was still very young in her eyes, but why was her heart was beating rapidly while he hugged her like this? Mo Lin Yuan rested his chin on top of her head and Yi Mu's back was against his chest, feeling his heartbeat clearly. Not only did it not feel embarrassing at all to completely curl up in someone's arms, she instead felt very safe. After a moment, Mo Lin Yuan's phoenix-like eyes narrowed slightly. In a low and ambiguous voice, he whispered in her ears, Little Muir, your heart is pounding. Yi Mu's heart started beating even faster instantly. 
that's probably because I don't like sleeping with the candles lit at night. Her voice was nervous and jumpy like a tense rabbit. But to him, she looked like a docile, innocent little rabbit. Mo Linyuan smiled lightly. In the next second, he waved his hands and the candles in the room were all put out. Only the moonlight teased them from the window. In the end, much to her dismay, Yi Mu quickly realized that her senses were amplified in the dark, she became even more hyper-aware of Mo Linyuan's gentle breaths tickling her head and above all, his heartbeat. Humph, what a hypocrite. Although his mouth has a talent for teasing people, his heartbeat gave away the truth. Not only was his heart beating against his chest very quickly, but also very loudly. How was she supposed to sleep tonight? Both of them were at a loss for the helpless feeling they felt. Both of them were perplexed by the feeling of wanting to touch, but not daring to. After a while, Mo Linyuan said softly, Sleep. No matter what you hear tonight, don't open your eyes. Chapter, 220 Yi Mu was depressed as she replied with a half-hearted MHM. She wiggled around a little before Mo Linyuan tightened his arms around her. He was a little vexed as he said, Don't move around because ITLL make things difficult for me. Eh. Mo Linyuan stretched out his hand and rubbed Yi Mu's belly, If you move around again, I will make sure you'll be pregnant with a little Yi Mu tonight. Yi Mu shrank her body even smaller. She definitely won't be able to sleep a wink tonight. An adolescent boy probably doesn't have much control over their urges, so she must be vigilant. If something were to happen, she would beat him up. Even though all kinds of confused and chaotic thoughts filled Yi Mu's mind, she fell asleep very quickly. She was always very vigilant, but she felt very safe and comfortable like she had returned to her mother's womb when she was being gently held by Mo Linyuan. In the darkness, the corners of Mo Linyuan's mouth curled up slightly. He carefully touched her eyelashes, nose, and mouth. When he saw that she didn't react at all, he couldn't help but sigh. Even though your mouth acted ruthlessly towards me, your body seems to trust me a lot. He scratched her nose dotingly inside, this is really making things difficult for me. With that said, Mo Linyuan also closed his eyes and hugged her to sleep. He originally thought that it would be difficult for him to fall asleep, but just like Yimu, he fell into a deep slumber after a short moment. It seemed like he had never slept so soundly before. In the middle of the night, Yimu was awakened by a loud fighting sound. The sound was not very far from where she was currently sleeping. Instead, it actually seemed to be coming from the palace where she usually resided. She quickly got up to check it out, but she was immediately pushed down onto the bed again by Mo Linyuan. What happened? There is a fight outside, Yi Mu said with a frown. Mo Linyuan listened to the sound for a while before he smiled and said gently, ITLL be okay, you don't need to head over. Yi Mu hesitated a little and asked, is it really okay not to check it out? Mo Linyuan turned over and pushed her underneath him when he heard this. Does that mean that you can't fall asleep anytime soon? Their ambiguous position made Yimu tensed. She stared at him with wide eyes as her hands were pressed to her sides by Mo Linyuan. This position was already very embarrassing, but it was much more embarrassing for her because they were both in bed. Are you really not going to check it out? What if they manage to come all the way here? Mo Linyuan was amused as he watched her struggle to change the topic of their conversation. He said wickedly, don't worry, if someone comes, then I will protect. Even if I'm unable to protect you. They'll have to step over my dead body to hurt you. Yi Mu glared at him, I dislike you. Why you get down from me? I want head out and check out the fighting, so get off of me. You're really heavy. Am I that heavy? Mo Linyuan lowered his head and rubbed her face with the tip of his nose. What should I do? I really want to stick to you like glue. Yi Mu was speechless at how shameless he was, so she pushed him hard and sat up, then I can only use force to solve this problem. She looked very serious, but Mo Linyuan burst out laughing. He was overjoyed even though he was pushed away by her. After he stopped laughing, he also sat up and suddenly grabbed both of Yi Mu's hands. His eyes seemed to be sparkling in the darkness. I admit that you are definitely stronger than me since you have hundreds of years of inner strength stored inside of you, but are you willing to hurt me? Yi Mu met his gaze and she immediately noticed how heated his gaze was. I'm certain that I will not hurt you. That's enough for me. As soon as he said that, 
he suddenly leaned forward and kissed Yi Mu's small lips. He gently sucked on her lips and then licked it carefully, like he was eating a delicious candy. Yi Mu widened her eyes in shock. It was loud and noisy outside because there were assassins, but it was quiet inside the palace. Two people were inside the quiet palace doing shameful things in bed. Chapter 221 Are you really not going to check it out? What if they manage to come all the way here? Mo Linyuan was amused as he watched her struggle to change the topic of their conversation. He said wickedly, don't worry, if someone comes, then I will protect. Even if I'm unable to protect you. They'll have to step over my dead body to hurt you. Yi Mu glared at him, I dislike you. Why you get down from me? I want head out and check out the fighting, so get off of me. You're really heavy. Am I that heavy? Mo Linyuan lowered his head and rubbed her face with the tip of his nose. What should I do? I really want to stick to you like glue. Yi Mu was speechless at how shameless he was, so she pushed him hard and sat up, then I can only use force to solve this problem. She looked very serious, but Mo Linyuan burst out laughing. He was overjoyed even though he was pushed away by her. After he stopped laughing, he also sat up and suddenly grabbed both of Yi Mu's hands. His eyes seemed to be sparkling in the darkness. I admit that you are definitely stronger than me since you have hundreds of years of inner strength stored inside of you, but are you willing to hurt me? Yi Mu met his gaze and she immediately noticed how heated his gaze was. I'm certain that I will not hurt you. That's enough for me. As soon as he said that, he suddenly leaned forward and kissed Yi Mu's small lips. He gently sucked on her lips and then licked it carefully, like he was eating a delicious candy. Yi Mu widened her eyes in shock. It was loud and noisy outside because there were assassins, but it was quiet inside the palace. Two people were inside the quiet palace doing shameful things in bed. Yi Mu's heart was beating rapidly. After she finally snapped out of her trance, she stretched out her hand to push Mo Linyuan away. Mo Linyuan avoided her this time, and she didn't succeed in pushing him away. Instead, he wrapped his arms firmly around her and pushed her down on the soft gilt. Just at this moment, someone from outside the room anxiously yelled into the room, Your Majesty, the assassins are advancing here. They vastly outnumbered us. Mo Linyuan stared into Yi Mu's eyes and only said one word. I don't care how you fight against them, but they will not be allowed to enter this room. This subordinate will obey Your Majesty's command. Yi Mu grabbed onto Mo Linyuan's clothes and protested quietly. That's enough. They're almost here. Mo Linyuan smiled gently, they won't be able to get in. After he finished speaking, he lowered his head and kissed her small mouth gently again. It seemed like the news from the Prime Minister was wrong. The Zhou family and the Empress Dowager had united their forces. There were many people involved in this turmoil this time. They originally wanted to kidnap Yi Mu and use her to threaten Mo Linyuan. However, when they arrived at Yi Mu's residence, they realized that Yi Mu was not there. So, they decided to have a small-scale coup and force the Imperial Palace to surrender since they had more people. Little did they know that Mo Linyuan had already made preparations against them a long time ago. Today's surprise attack was merely the first battle between Mo Linyuan and the influential families. Once tonight passed, their peaceful days will be gone forever. Two tigers cannot coexist on the same mountain. The MO country was supported by three sides. If one of the three sides becomes unbalanced, then the country will face the dangers of collapsing. MO Linyuan smiled slightly. Right now, he just wanted to taste Yi Mu's soft lips again. Whether it was his country of Yi Mu, he wanted both. Yi Mu was about to go crazy because of MO Linyuan. The sound of the fighting was getting louder, meaning that the fighting was coming closer. Due to Yi Mu's extraordinary hearing abilities, she could tell that the opponents had vastly outnumbered them and were close to arriving at their doorstep. Now, instead of fleeing to safety or trying to lead the counterattack, he wanted to bully her. How can he act so willfully? But without her inner strength, how could Yi Mu still be Mo Linyuan's opponent? He firmly held on to her as he kissed her. She could feel her lips slowly swelling up. Was it that delicious? Her lips were tasteless. Mo Linyuan suddenly laughed because he saw Yi Mu licking herself. He knew what she was thinking when he saw her action. 
You are very delicious, M.O. Linyuan whispered into Yi Mu's ear. While Yi Mu's right ear could hear the sound of the assassin's approaching footsteps, her left ear was cringy love lines. You're so tempting. It makes me want to become a fatuous ruler for you. T.N., a fatuous ruler a monarch that only cares of self-indulgence. Here, he says that he rather indulge in his beauty than become a good emperor. She knew that her heart should not be pounding for him, but at this moment, her heart pounded happily against her chest. What was wrong with her? She had obviously been trained to resist any forms of temptation in men, so did she feel so touched by M.O. Linyuan's words so easily. In the noisy and chaotic night, Yi Mu unexpectedly began to fall in love. In fact, being in the special forces was not something as grand and special as others would imagine. The special forces were the backbone of the country, so each of the members of the special forces needed to receive extremely rigid training. Not only are they trained physically, but they also receive technical training in many other forms of training. For example, they needed to be trained to be alert at all times, even while they're sleeping. They're also trained to obey orders without any resistance and maintain their loyalty to the country no matter what happened. These training sessions were imprinted deeply in each of the members' hearts. They had little to no ego of their own. They were taught to value the general situation compared to the life of one person. As a result, none of them had any violent or distinct personalities. When they were under training, they were usually isolated from the rest of the world. As a result, the special forces aren't in touch or understand ordinary people in the world. Chapter 222 The majority of them were as stiff as robots. But right now, Yi Mu herself felt vividly alive. Someone liked her a lot. Yi Mu finally detected his feelings for her and this made her feel like she was worthy of love. This was because the guy in love with her was, not only an imperial ruler, but also the perfect man in the world. Hiss. Yi Mu suddenly let out a breath of air and looked at M.O. Linyuan with grievance. H.M., seems like you're thinking about something else even though I'm kissing you. I'm going to have to really work on improving my kissing skills some more. M.O. Linyuan was also sullen because he took pity on her young age and had to restrain himself. He didn't dare do more than nibble her lips and kiss her. However, this little girl was really pushing his boundaries she dared to have the audacity to be distracted while he was kissing her. Was he invisible to her? Yi Mu froze before whispering, Can you get off of me? M.O. Linyuan gave her an unfriendly gaze. I'm going to run out of breath if you keep kissing me. She paused, then added embarrassingly, It's true. If you don't believe me, just feel how fast my heart is beating. Seeing how honest she was, M.O. Linyuan couldn't help but snort. He then sat up and gave her space to breathe, Silly girl, how can you be so cute? So cute, that he could never truly get enough of her. Yi Mu froze again. She stuttered, I it's gotten pretty quiet outside. Should we go and take a look? M.O. Linyuan nodded his head. He took out a cloak and placed it over Yi Mu. He then got out of bed and personally helped Yi Mu wear her shoes. Yi Mu was overwhelmed by his actions and instinctively wanted to pull her feet back, but M.O. Linyuan stubbornly held on to them. If you don't behave, they'll bring you back to bed and well do something fun instead. Yi Mu immediately obeyed and stopped moving. M.O. Linyuan shook his head helplessly. After putting on her shoes, he then put on his clothes and took her outside. As M.O. Linyuan brought Yi Mu out of the room, the people outside found it rather shocking, but also unsurprising at the same time. For many years, M.O. Linyuan had always guarded Yi Mu from the public's eyes everyone knew what she meant to him. Countless men in black kneeled outside in front of the palace court. Although most of the corpses were dragged away, the smell of blood permeated the air. There were still twenty to thirty rebels that were kept alive. Just give up, you despicable emperor. We won't tell you anything. The leader of the rebels was forced to kneel on the ground, but he was still arrogant and unyielding, refusing to admit defeat. Yi Mu raised her head to take a glimpse at M.O. Linyuan. The palace lanterns revealed M.O. Linyuan's exquisite profile, cold and icy like night dew droplets. His hair was wet from the drizzling rain, but it never got into his eyes. M.O. Linyuan softly said one phrase, you're quite unyielding. He didn't want to interrogate these people in front of Yimu. Although he knew that Yimu wasn't a weak woman who can't handle bloodshed, he wanted to pamper her like a princess. 
he never wanted to see her protecting him anymore like when they were young. She should be pampered and act as insensibly as she wished without worry. She shouldn't have to face the strong wind and pouring rain nor think about these complicated issues. With a wave of his hand, he signaled the imperial guards to take them away. But the leader of the rebel was still unwilling to be dismissed, and continued to shout, You despicable emperor! You killed your father and little sister in cold blood. You disregard etiquettes. You are lustful and immoral. You make me despise righteous people. Just you wait, God will punish you one day. There will come a time when a true emperor will come to save our M.O. country. After yelling, the man fiercely banged his head against a mystical beast statue. However, he was stopped by a guard at the last moment. Chapter, 223. M.O. Linyuan stood aloof and mighty. He pulled Yi Mu towards him, and mocked the rebel with a sneer, the people I killed were sinners. The people I protect are blessed by God. And why should I follow the laws of etiquettes, when I am the law? You are truly ridiculous. He then squeezed Yi Mu's hand, besides, you all were the ones who wanted to threaten me with this little girl first. How could your actions be considered righteous behaviors? Don't try to cover up your filthy greed with deceptive words. I'm annoyed just hearing your words. Afterwards, the rebel was gagged and dragged out. The rest of them were also taken away to be interrogated and tortured. After witnessing the whole imprisonment process, Yi Mu then asked Emo Linyuan, when he was accusing you of being lustful and immoral. Is it because of me? Emo Linyuan grimaced. He then squeezed her face with anger and humor, making her cry in pain. Are you serious? Besides you, there are no other women who've been by my side. Yi Mu thought about the history of China that she knew of. Historically, M.O. Linyuan had a lot of concubines and an empress. Unconvinced, she said doubtedly, but what if you find another woman in the future? M.O. Linyuan's eyes softly lit up. He abruptly stretched out his hand and pulled Yi Mu into his arms. He lifted her bright little face towards him. He asked in utter seriousness, Are you jealous? No way. Yi Mu subconsciously denied. Regardless, M.O. Linyuan still said delightfully, Okay then, why don't I make you a promise? He embraced Yi Mu, placing his chin on top of her head. He said happily and gently, As long as you stay by my side, I promise that you're my only woman. Only you inside and out my heart belongs only to you. Despite them being high up on top of the white jade steps and surrounded by hundreds of imperial soldiers' gazes, he just simply embraced Yi Mu and swore an emperor's oath. Yi Mu couldn't put any words to her feelings, but she did feel satisfied and a bit stuffy. But when she remembered what she had to do, her eyes involuntarily dimmed. She still had to go back. Once she found the city boundary map, she would return to her world. Yet, why does she feel that reluctant and upset? In the end, M.O. Linyuan took the opportunity to pull her into his arms. Okay, something is bound to happen this time, but we just have to sit back and watch the show. Don't overthink this too much. Do you want me to tell you a fairy tale story? Chapter, 225. A fairy tale story too. After hearing his words, Yi Mu forgot her desire to escape his arms, and demanded, You want to tell me a story? She had a very strange expression. Because she had started her training at a very young age, she never had the chance to enjoy this type of childlike doting. Was Mo Linyuan trying to raise her as his daughter? Please don't say that M.O. Linyuan had these intentions. The carriage continued to sway, making it difficult to read the book. So, M.O. Linyuan simply put the book aside and hugged her before he said, Okay, just behave for a moment. Let me tell you a story. He paused for effect, before starting, a long, long time ago, there lived a crow, a fox, a wolf, and a tiger. Yimu didn't know whether to laugh or cry, this couldn't be the exact same fairy tale that I told you when I was a kid right? M.O. Linyuan glanced at her and said sternly, Behave just listen. Oh. Yi Mu sealed her lips and said nothing. M.O. Linyuan continued. The four animals originally all lived harmoniously in the forest together but one day, each of them received a piece of meat. The fox said to the wolf that he can help the wolf acquire the crow's wealth. His condition was that the wolf must give the fox the piece of meat in his possession. The wolf thought of all the precious treasures the crow had, and agreed to give the meat to the fox. 
The fox then said to the tiger that he possesses the piece of meat that the tiger wants. His condition for the meat was that the tiger must work with the fox to kill the wolf. The tiger agreed to help. While waiting for the wolf to exterminate the crow, the wolf then became the target. It didn't take much effort before the two of them killed off the wolf. Yi Mu was stunned. Having understood a little bit of the fairy tale's message, and being the straightforward girl that she was, she asked directly, then, are you the tiger or the fox? Mo Linyuan laughed but didn't say a word. When Yi Mu turned around to look up at him, in the darkness of the carriage she saw the corner of Mo Linyuan's mouth held a mysterious smirk. An incomprehensible light shined deep within his eyes. His beautiful thin lips hooked slightly, before he patted her on the head, silly girl. How can I be a beast? Although he said it jokingly, Yi Mu felt a chill run down her spine upon hearing this. They arrived at their destination soon after. The Imperial Army was well trained in setting up camp. And soon, things started getting busy for the accompanying officials. However, due to recent events, the Imperial Court tranquility was still disturbed. This caused the usual excitement of the hunting event to only give off an air of solitude and silence. No one dared to say a single word for fear of making any mistakes. During the evening, the camp was finally set up. The wonderful smell of food floated in the air. Once everyone had finished setting up, they changed into new clothes and went outside to attend tonight's required bonfire dinner. Seeing how most people had arrived, Mo Linyuan entered leisurely late with Yi Mu in tow. Because the hunting event allowed families to attend, Yi Mu saw many girls sneaking glances at her, their eyes overfilled with envy. They were incredibly jealous of how, for so many years, with the exception of Yi Mu, there had never been any other woman who had been by Mo Linyuan's side. Even though the court was restless for him to draft more women, Mo Linyuan still continued to do what he wanted. Who was he doing it for? It goes without saying. Since ancient times, marriage has been the most efficient way to gain power. Yet for Yi Mu, Mo Linyuan avoided the easy path of marriage. Instead, in order to not make her sad, he refused to marry more women into his harem and chose to deal with the consequences of this choice. All girls wanted this kind of love. After taking a seat, Mo Linyuan pulled Yi Mu down beside him. Seeing how a senior official seemed to have something to say, he happily stated first, today, we've all come out to hunt. Let's all focus on having a good time. Let go of customs for the time being and let's have fun. As he said that, he picked up a glass of wine and happily proposed a toast, for tonight's banquet, there is no monarchy. Only friends. Cheers. Chapter, 226. Your expendable one. Thank you your majesty. Despite M.O. Linyuan's celebratory toast, everyone still couldn't fully loosen up. After picking up a glass of wine, they'd force a few jokes, but then immediately go silent. Since the death of the Zhou's family heir, the murderer still hasn't been found. And yet, a large hunting banquet was being held. The hundreds of officials just couldn't laugh and celebrate with the head of the Zhou family present. As expected, only after a few cups of wine, the head of the Zhou family suddenly sighed, if only my son, younger was still here he was especially great at hunting at night. If only he was still alive, it wouldn't be so dull tonight. His words left the dinner banquet in utter silence. Only the occasional crackling of the bonfire could be heard. Mo Linyuan chuckled faintly, if my dear minister wants to make a suggestion, just be frank and say it. Chief Zhou stood up quickly and anxiously answered, thank you for your generosity, your majesty. This old official is simply expressing his mixed feelings of pain in this situation. He paused before continuing, since we are already here, rather than simply drinking and lazing around, why don't we host a night hunting event? That way we can test our skills before tomorrow. Mo Linyuan went silent for a while, before replying cautiously, going night hunting is unwise. We wouldn't be able to see the road in front of us, let alone catch any animals. Chief Zhou was being unusually pushy, but being able to shoot in broad daylight isn't much of a challenge. Night hunting is the true test of one's ability. Sounds amusing. Mo Linyuan said unexpectedly. Your Majesty. Prime Minister Wen tried protesting, but Mo Linyuan waved his hand in dismissal. Let's do it like that then. Before the hunt tomorrow, let's test everyone's skills tonight beforehand. 
Only those who successfully hunt tonight can enjoy the bonfire banquet. This is my final decision. The emperor had made up his mind. No one dared to disobey and began preparing their horses. Notably, everyone glanced at Chief Zhou, his meaningful eyes subtly hinted that something will definitely happen tonight. One could only hope that the innocent fishes in the pond were left unharmed. Minister Xu walked up to Chief Zhou and muttered, What? They have all been gathered together in one place and securely protected. Mo Linyuan stopped his horse and said, Well done. You are responsible for their safety. I want everyone to know that those who behave will live longer than those who are disobedient. Yes. Yi Mu shivered. She couldn't help but ask, could it be that you already knew early on they wanted to host a night hunt? Is that why you already have some court officials under protection in advance? Mo Linyuan lowered his head and lightly pinched her little nose. Under the moonlight, his drooping phoenix-like eyes were exquisitely captivating. I didn't know ahead of time, I just guessed correctly. Some people are just way too impatient and can't wait until the official hunting event tomorrow. Isn't that to be expected? He laughed wickedly, besides, I only need to protect those who follow me. As for the others, their death has nothing to do with me. If all your people have been protected, who was the person that just died? Is there a conflict among the families? Yi Mu asked in confusion. Mo Linyuan didn't answer the question directly. He only chuckled, you don't need to pay those rotten people any attention. Let's go. Winter is just around the corner. Let me hunt a fox so that we can make a scarf for you. How does that sound? As he was saying this, he clenched his thighs and directed the horse deeper into the forest. Their group didn't light any torches, making them resemble ghosts-like figures strolling in the forest. In the corner of the forest, the initial battles gradually slowed down. Only the corpses littered on the ground gave proof to the tragedy that just occurred. Ha ha ha, Zhong Zhao, you never even suspected that this trap was meant for you all along. The head of the Zhong family was surrounded by the Zhou family members. His face went white with fear. How is this possible? Wen Zhe clearly said that he definitely said that. He definitely said what? The short and chubby chief Zhou became visible in the flame. His face was twisted in excitement. Did Wen Zhe tell you that, as long as you got rid of me, he would help you slowly devour my family's assets? After Zhong Zhao heard this, his complexion went deathly pale. He started crawling towards the protection of the surrounding corpses. Chief Zhou laughed again, you may not realize this, but Wen Zhe also said the same thing to me. However, he obviously meant it when he said it to me. He also promised both yours and the Empress Dowager's piece of the city boundary map to me. Even all these dead soldiers around us were gifted by him. Accepted Zhong Zhao, you're expendable. Chapter, 228 There's already someone in my arms one. Expendable. What a cruel word. His pair of eyes widened, before he stuttered, Zhou Gu, have you forgotten what I told you before? Your son's death was caused by the Wen family. Chief Zhou laughed coldly and looked at him as if he was a dead man. I remember. He extended a hand, signaling the people around him to raise their bloodied swords. But Young Er is not the only son I have. His ruthless voice faded away slowly. In the next second, a nightmarishly desperate cry could be heard in the gloomy darkness. The voice traveled far and wide throughout the woods, causing the few people listening to become horrified. The aristocratic family holds quite a few positions in court. At this time, some were on a mission and walked purposefully through the forest. Others were terrified and pale, desperately wishing for this game of life and death to end soon. Before entering the woods, they already had a hunch that the game tonight was not one they wanted to play around with. Their hunch was correct, but they didn't know who to seek for protection. In the deepest part of the forest, Mo Linyuan was holding onto a bow and arrow, while freely bringing Yi Mu around the forest. He seemed to be in a good mood. His eyes shined faintly in the dark. Suddenly, he swiftly braced his bow and shot an arrow. The sound of a scream quickly followed, indicating the violent death of the ambusher. Yi Mu was stupefied, who did you just kill? His murderous intent didn't waver at all. Were all these people spies? Mo Linyuan hugged her waist and said in a low voice, all my supporters are already secretly protected by me. Everyone in the forest is expendable. 
Yi Mu trembled in her sleeveless garment. Everyone in the forest is expendable. Why does this ruthless sentence sound so unsettling? The sound of numerous galloping horses was headed their way. Mo Linyuan calmly swerved in another direction. Right after, a group of people flew right past them. Search thoroughly, we must find the emperor. He only brought four guards with him. Find him. Yi Mu could feel their killing intent as they searched throughout the forest. She suddenly realized that the reason why tonight's absurd game went smoothly was because Mo Linyuan used his life as bait. Normally, when he had a lot of people guarding him, others knew they shouldn't attack. However, by participating in this game, everyone was stuck in the same situation so there was no other choice but to fight for survival. After hearing them go farther away into the distance, Yi Mu then asked in a low voice, What exactly do you want to accomplish tonight? What unresolvable conflicts made you use this method? Mo Linyuan patted her head, replying tenderly, Little Muir, it's true that we could resolve some conflicts with words, but when no one wants to back down, words can only go so far. If we want to break through this deadlock, we must make sacrifices. Yet, no one is willing to be sacrificed, so why not give everyone a fighting chance in battle? Yi Mu's heart skipped a beat, this is such a mess. If the amount of deaths were discovered tomorrow, how are you going to explain it to the hundreds of other governing officials? Mo Linyuan paused, then hugged her tightly. He whispered coldly, as long as enough people die, that wouldn't be a problem. After all, dead people don't have the ability to bring any trouble. Mo Linyuan confidently smiled and reassured her, whether you believe it or not, after this is over, no matter how many people died, they will act like this didn't happen. I.D. even say that everyone will only treat this as an accident. Yi Mu pondered over this, her heart trembling. That's right, if the people that died were important, then their supporters would have lost their higher ups. They naturally wouldn't be able to protest. What's more, for people who actually benefit from this battle, they would have even less to protest about. That's to say, this was a thrilling game of murder, with each person participating having a target in mind. Once involved, they were all driven to make life and death decisions. Chapter 229 There's already someone in my arms too. No wonder Mo Linyuan was so supportive of this since the beginning. He wanted to use this opportunity to do a blood cleansing of the imperial court. Who would have thought that these people who were selected at various levels for their talents were not actually suitable for their positions? They were now readily being replaced with new candidates. Yi Mu finally realized the truth. Seeing the risk they were taking, her hands started to become nervous with sweat. It would seem that tonight, only a few people will return safely for dinner. Four hours later, miserable shrieks could still be heard in the woods. Mo Linyuan also killed quite a few people. His royal dragon robes were stained with blood, but to others he still resembled an elegant immortal fairy. Just then, there were two people in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As soon as one of them was killed by the other, Mo Linyuan swooped in to finish off the last man standing. Very quickly, the originally murderous group of people all died together. Mo Linyuan started heading over to the one remaining individual and discovered that it was a lady. This woman was dressed in black from head to toe. Her clothes were torn, exposing her snowy white skin underneath. It was difficult to hide her appealing physique. Under the tranquil moonlight, she raised her head to reveal a pair of extremely frightened and pitiful eyes. Even Yi Mu was moved by what she saw. I beg of you, please save me. This woman knelt next to the horse and extended her hands up towards the man on the horse who already had a little girl occupying his arms. Who are you? Yi Mu demanded, weren't all the ladies and children instructed to stay at the campsite? Why did you come out here? After hearing this, the lady trembled and whispered, I am Wen Xian, a daughter of the Wen family. After Mo Linyuan heard her identity, he abruptly started laughing. When Xian began to whimper, Ow, my leg my leg is broken. Could why you can you help her get on the horse was what she wanted to ask. Hearing that this was Prime Minister Wen's daughter, Mo Linyuan's guards didn't dare to approach her. After all, the status of the Prime Minister was different from others. Their thought was, why not let Mo Linyuan help her, and let Yi Mu ride by herself. But would Mo Linyuan be willing? Zi Su. Yes, Your Majesty. I'll leave this woman with you. Hearing this, Zi Su felt uneasy. 
this lattice clothes were in bad shape. If she rode on his horse, she would lose her reputation. When Xin refused and, under Mo Linyuan's suggestion, they all quietly took a seat. Seeing the other group's entry, how could they still not comprehend what had occurred? It would seem that Mo Linyuan already prepared for the blood cleansing of the court early on. The group who returned safely was his way of warning others. Mo Linyuan wanted to inform them of their fate, those who followed him were safe while those who misbehaved were destined to die. Realizing this, an unexpected weeping individual could be heard among the forty people on the ground. The crying man was in his fifties. The tears he wept were unhindered old tears that would bring sorrow to anyone that heard it. Tn, original unhindered old tears also means crying profusely, but old also refers to his old age. A little double entendre. Chapter, 231. Devoted to. He got down and crawled forward a few steps. He then bowed deeply in front of M.O. Linyuan. Your Majesty. My King. This minister doesn't dare. This minister would never dare. Originally, the reason why there were so many officials who followed and supported one of the three aristocratic families was because they assumed the emperor wouldn't dare to go against those families. For many years, previous successive generations of emperors would simply keep turning a blind eye to their misdemeanors. And so, they naturally didn't think that Mo Linyuan would be able to eradicate the families in one whole sweep. That's why for their own sake, the supporters formed groups that each obeyed one of the three aristocratic families, and disobeyed the emperor. But today, not only did Mo Linyuan manage to capture all of the aristocratic family's members, but he also managed to impact every other chess piece involved, with just one move. The fact that none of the members of the three big families returned made it clear that the conflict was resolved. What's more, even the children of those families had been annihilated. Never dare. M.O. Linyuan snickered, never dare to do what? I'm not quite sure what you're implying. After hearing one person speak up, the rest started to beg for mercy too. Each and every one of them continuously bowed their heads, trying to stir up emotions with their words. Your Majesty, show us mercy. We don't want to die. We will definitely obey you in the future. Well be devoted. They had quite a bit of power in their hands, some even had their specific family's trust. Others also held information to control the family they supported. The surrounding original loyal officials couldn't bear to see this scene. Yet at the same time, they also did not dare to beg for mercy. They just trembled fearfully in their seats. They didn't want to bring any disaster to the innocent fishes in the pond. You'll be devoted, eh? M.O. Linyuan regarded them lightly, does every single one of you think like this? How would you all certify your pledge of devotion to me? They all looked at each other, and finally a senior official in the back bowed to the point of prostration and begged, we are willing to do anything for you, your majesty. Anything? Are you guys sure? M.O. Linyuan's eyebrows raised happily, you all better remember what you promised. The officials were shocked as M.O. Linyuan continued to laugh lightly. His fingertip softly tapped his throne's armrest. He said menacingly, because all of you will soon have to fulfill your promise. These people still didn't quite understand what he meant. However, it didn't matter, because they would soon understand. At that time, when Fong stepped forward and whispered into M.O. Linyuan's ear, the third group of people will be arriving soon. M.O. Linyuan smiled softly, not responding. In fact, everything that's happened thus far were all a part of M.O. Linyuan's schemes. He already planned a year before to have multiple imperial guards conceal themselves in the forest. They were divided and hidden evenly, not alerting anyone to their presence. Mo Linyuan had full control by using the fireworks as night signals, which alerted the soldiers to manipulate who came back first and who would arrive later. After all, if the family members came back first, these terrified followers would have someone to depend on and wouldn't surrender as easily. However, since the family members arrived later, these horrified officials would assume that the family members had already died. Naturally, they would be more willing to pledge allegiance and wouldn't dare make another attempt at betrayal. But, how could it be this simple? Mo Linyuan also hoped that he could destroy the three families in one move. However, it was near impossible. Therefore, he decided to cooperate with the Wen family. By doing so, he could use a diversion tactic and seize the early opportunity to subdue the supporters in the first group. Chapter, 232 
Which one? Mo Linyuan waved his hand and soon after, a man was shoved forward. Everyone was astonished to discover that the man was Zhou Yong. The son who was supposedly missing for many days and declared to have been murdered. Currently, he was tied down and pushed onto his knees facing the bonfire. He started to panic when he saw the people surrounding him, especially when he noticed the forty people that were kneeling behind him. Mo Linyuan happily exclaimed, Now, would you look at that? Everyone, this is your opportunity to demonstrate your devotion. Mo Linyuan then gestured for someone to bring in many different forms and variations of wines that had been poisoned. I've heard, when Zhou Yong was alive he loved to drink wine. If he didn't have access to good wine, he would throw a tantrum and cause the people around him to suffer. That's why I specifically prepared numerous fine wines here tonight. Now, why don't all of you here, who are his friends, step forward and offer him a drink? That way, he can happily go on his journey to the afterlife in hell and beyond, and he wouldn't be so lonely. Tn, in Chinese culture, when someone dies, they would offer the deceased things like paper money, fruits, tea, and wine. So this is an ironic use of offering wine to the dead as well as offering wine to the guy who's still alive to kill him. The nuance in his words were clear, these were all poisonous wines. If Zhou Yong drank them, he would definitely be well on his way to the afterlife in hell. His words stunned the bystanders who were loyal followers of the emperor. Zhou Yong was usually someone arrogant, and they've all been mistreated by him before. However, if the head of the Zhou family was already dead, that would mean Zhou Yong is the first in line to become the heir. If they killed Zhou Yong, that would mean the feud with the aristocratic family would be completely won by the emperor. What's wrong? Are you all reluctant to send him off? Some of you must have had a good relationship with Zhou Yong. Even at this time, you are still unwilling to go against him. When Zhou Yong heard this, his face became ashen. His hands were tied behind his back, with cloth stuffed in his mouth. He made sure to viciously glare at these people. If they dared to kill him, they also will not have a good ending. Understanding Zhou Yong's warning in his eyes, the forty people remained hesitant for a while. Zhou Yong's past violent nature was so impressionable that they were still scared of him even though he was currently restrained. Yi Mu, who was seated next to Mo Linyuan, calmly watched the scene. She wanted to know what these people would choose to do, would they kill Zhou Yong to show loyalty? Or would they choose not to do anything? In short, there was currently a conflict between outward devotion with inner opposition. A moment later, one person suddenly stood up. I'll do it. Everyone's attention was now centered on him. Mo Linyuan also remembered this person he was a fairly minor official, a historian who works in the Department of Literature named Li Hao. That person faced Mo Linyuan to make himself completely visible within the emperor's line of sight. Step by step, he advanced and knelt on the ground. Your Majesty, let this official go first. Zhou Yong had humiliated my wife before. This official is willing to use these hands to send him off to the afterlife. Li Hao finished speaking before he pitifully lowered his head. Due to the fact that the Zhou family's power of influence was so immense, no matter how Zhou Yong treated them, he could only endure it in order to protect his family. What's more, his own father was a devout supporter of the Zhou family, so even if he wanted to do anything against them, his father would reject it. Consequently, his wife committed suicide by hanging herself. Yet, he could only act like nothing happened. However it was different now. Just now, not long ago, his father died in the forest. Therefore Li Hao was now considered the head of the Li family. With this opportunity dangling in front of his eyes, he absolutely cannot let it slip by. Mo Linyuan had a delighted expression, great. You can propose a toast then. I want to witness your loyalty. Li Hao nodded his head, stood up, and slowly made his way towards Zhou Yong. Confronting Zhou Yong's oppressive eyes, the imperial official lifted the wine glass. Let the heavens be our witness, killers are always killed in the end you cannot blame anyone but yourself. Chapter, 233 After finishing his speech, with all the nuance hidden in his meanings, he took the wine glass and poured it into a green jade bowl. Li Hao retreated and sat down on the side. Mo Linyuan happily nodded in approval, anyone else? Crickets were heard. Mo Linyuan chuckled, looks like all of you are still the same as before. You really like to test my patience. His words made the faces of those kneeling turn even paler. 
Yi Mu was aware that the Imperial Guards could not block off the others for too long. Those returning were quickly approaching the camp now. In this pressing race against time, she suddenly giggled childishly, Brother Emperor, I'm hungry. Let's modify this game so that we can finish this up quickly. Oh. Tell me. Yi Mu replied, let's distribute these fine wines among them and give them around 15 minutes to decide. In this time frame, they can choose to offer the wine to Zhou Yong's Jade Bowl, or drink it themselves. After 15 minutes, if they still can't make a decision, well just have the Imperial Guard brothers help them drink it themselves. What do you think? Mo Linyuan's eyes shined in admiration for her plan, your idea isn't bad at all. After the discussion, he signaled the poisonous wines to be poured and distributed into these people's hands. Quite a few of their hands were shaking so uncontrollably that they almost spilled the wine. Seeing this, Yi Mu maliciously cackled, you guys need to hold your glasses steady. Behind this camp are where the women reside. If you don't steady your hands, I'll go give all the women a glass of wine myself. At that point there will be no argument of who will drink or not drink. Yi Mu usually doesn't speak, but when she does, it causes apprehension deep in their guts. It's no wonder she's Mo Linyuan's most significant person she's an absolute witch. Her actions seemed awfully ruthless. In fact, even Mo Linyuan was astonished to hear Yi Mu talking like that. He knew deep down Yi Mu was not a cold-blooded killer. She was doing this for his sake. She clearly comprehended and feared that dragging this on would ruin things. As once the others returned from the forest, these people would loosen their manners, and consequently, he would have to face more exhaustive troubles. That's why, for his sake, she was willing to abandon certain inhibitions. She firmly stood by his side. Her frame and stature was commanding, leaving no indication of her restlessness, with the exception of her hands. Mo Linyuan saw her hands tightly gripped onto her skirt, faintly trembling. He was suddenly consumed by anger, and sneered, let's forget about the fifteen minutes, you all only have three seconds to consider. Besides, a lot of people already died tonight during the hunting event, adding a few more wouldn't really make much of a difference. After he impatiently stated this, everyone tensed up. This time, they did not dare to hesitate again. Everyone immediately carried the wine in front of Zhou Yong. Regardless of his scowl, right in front of his eyes, they poured those cups of poisonous wine right into the bowl. Rapidly, the bowl was full. The bowl of wine permeated an enchanting aromatic fragrance, with a faint green tint in it. Perfect. Mo Linyuan immediately commanded, Z Su, you can personally send him off. As you command. Z Su walked in front of Zhou Yong and pulled him off the ground. As he removed the cloth from Zhou Yong's mouth, the guy started to furiously yell, How dare all of you! I am the heir of the Zhou family. You still dare to do this? Just you wait, you all will die for this. My dad won't let you off. All of you will definitely die. The delicious smell of roasted meat and wine floated in the air. Taking advantage of the son who was working at the Ministry of Revenue, they slowly sliced off big chunky pieces with a knife, exploiting the funds layer by layer. In the end, what could be left of the funds intended to arrive in the hands of the refugees? You're speaking nonsense. Zhou Gu was in disbelief that this person would betray himself. He abruptly stood up, pointed an accusative finger, and angrily roared, You are speaking malicious slanders. Mo Linyuan ignored his rage and simply asked the next person, Mu Guangzai, speak up, when I sent you to inspect the relief situation, what did you report back to me? Whatever Mu Guangzai had said in the past, the people here were all already well aware of it. He had said that the refugees were thankful for the immense kindness of the powerful emperor. He even brought back a book filled with tens of thousands blood signed fingerprints, stating it was their way of expressing their gratitude. Mu Guangzai was put on the spot, here it is. The thing he did, he will now face retribution. He didn't dare tell the truth. However at this time, he was riding a fine line. The emperor's goal right now was to bring down the Zhou family. Although he had done some misdeeds, if he helped the emperor right now, he would be safe. Mu Guangzai might have to sacrifice his status and power but at least he could still save his life. If he did not cooperate, the emperor could still make a move later on. Mu Guangzai would inevitably be faced with something that could be worse than death itself. At this critical moment, Mu Guangzai's mind had never been more set. 
From the night hunting to the situation with Zhou Yong, every single incident was going according to the emperor's plans. That's to say, Zhou Gu would die tonight. As he stood there, it became clear to him too. Thus, Mu Guangsai suddenly pressed his forehead onto the ground deeply and loudly yelled, Your Majesty, this official deserves to die. I confess, during the disturbing disaster in Liangzhou, due to the court relief supplies being excessively sparse, many refugees starved to death. Once this official had arrived, there was a catastrophic plague. It was only by suppressing them with governing forces that we managed to avoid a revolt. His words made everyone incessantly apprehensive. Mu Guangcai actually admitted to it. Wasn't he afraid of death? Zhou Gu recoiled in disbelief. He also couldn't believe that Mu Guangcai would actually admit to lying about the disaster report and deceiving their sovereign. This was a capital offense. Chapter 236 Eliminating the Zhou Family 1 In the past, after Yi Mu returned, she had told Mo Lin Yuan about the situation in Liangzhou. At that time, he couldn't restrain his emotions. Who would have thought that three years ago today, he would have such an outburst? Mo Lin Yuan slightly smiled, who gave you the guts to deceive your monarch? He spoke gently, but the killing intent present in his question caused everyone to tremble in fear. Mu Guangsai knew he was a dead man. Now, he could only hope that his crimes wouldn't bring harm to his family members. He suppressed his remorseful tears, and gritted through his teeth, this official received 50,000 tails from Chief Zhou at that time. I have not touched the money at all it is simply hidden under my resident. I beg your majesty to show mercy. Mu Guangkai's accusations caused Zhou Gu to retreat backwards. He gave Wen Zhe a pleading look, but Wen Zhe wouldn't meet his gaze at all. Zhou Gu's heart twisted. Could it be that the scheme tonight was not only to eliminate the Zhong family, but also the Zhou family as well. Zhou Gu was confused, why? The three big families were all doing so well. Why would Wen Zhe want to help the emperor? He couldn't comprehend the matter. However, one thing was clear, he absolutely could not admit to committing this sin. As a result, he gritted his teeth and knelt down once more. My honorable king. This old official doesn't know why these people are slandering me. We even had to purchase the lowest quality linen where a light tug could easily tear it apart. In order to prevent this from being exposed, I have the account books that contain this information. At that time, the Zhou family bribed me with 30,000 silver tails, but I have not touched it at all. The only reason why I did this was because the Zhou family coerced me into it. Account book? Everyone was shocked to hear there was even documented evidence. Zhou Gu could feel the sharp cold air whirling around him Mo Lin Yuan was trying to kill him off today. Mo Lin Yuan replied, Okay, you guys can step aside. Whatever proof you have, just hand it over to Zisu. Furthermore, we should continue discussing the matter about how the head of the Zhou family has been buying and selling official positions in the bureaucracy. With a wide grin, Mo Lin Yuan's eyes honed in on one particular individual who had returned to the camp alongside Zhou Gu. Your name's Han Pin, am I right? I've heard that you purchased your official position from the Zhou family. After that, you've held on to this position ever since. Is this true? Han Pin flinched in fear. He rapidly rushed up behind Zhou Gu and shouted, there was no such thing. This official had slowly climbed up through promotions, only through passing the imperial exam and political achievements. Chief Zhou was gracious enough to select this official. Apart from that, there are no other relationships between us. Chapter 237 Well then, let me first start by addressing your imperial exam performance. You were originally the son of Su Zhoufu. You finally passed the provincial level exam at the age of 18 and became a local county magistrate, is that right? Han Pin shook fearfully as he replied in a low voice, yes, that's correct. Mo Lin Yuan smirked. The eunuch by his side immediately took out some pen and paper and handed it to Han Pin. The emperor stated in a chilling voice, then you must be talented in literature. Let me test you a little. Write a poem about the hunting event tonight. How does that sound? When Han Pin heard this, he almost dropped the pen in his hand. He was just barely literate, how could he possibly write a poem? However, Han Pin was still very clever. After fiddling with the pen for a long time he finally spoke, Your Majesty, 
writing a poem requires inspiration. Please forgive this official for speaking so bluntly, but I currently lack inspiration. Oh. Then let's have you write out Yu Zuzheng's most favorite poem. He was your main examiner back then. He even said he was addicted to the poems you wrote. Assuming you are well versed in what he likes, this shouldn't be difficult right? All the color drained from Han Pin's face. He had someone else take the test for him. How could he possibly know what the examiner liked in the poems? He clenched his teeth before he randomly wrote down a poem. He then offered it and said nervously, Your Majesty, Yu Xuezheng is a man of great talent. This official feels he would really like a poem similar to this one. Who would have known this was a poem he made up on the spot? Zhou Gu, who stood in front of him abruptly felt an ominous feeling in his gut. Indeed, right away Yi Mu's giggle could be heard as she cheerfully voiced, it wasn't Yu Xuezheng who proctored the exam back then, it was Zhang Xuezheng. After she finished speaking, a man stood up among the officials who were sitting on the side. He quickly stated, reporting to your majesty, it was this official who supervised the exam that day, but this official has never received any bribes. At that time, I really did feel like Han Pin's poem was well written and truly moved the hearts of those who read it. After the man finished talking, Han Pin's face momentarily went rigid and gray. He rushed to say, yes, that's right, it was Zhang Xuezheng. I simply have a faulty memory. After speaking, he tore the white paper to shreds in front of everyone as he trembled in fear. Right then, Yi Mu gleefully replied, Oh, actually, I was lying to you. It also wasn't Zhang Xuezheng who proctored the exam either. After she said this, Han Pin's face turned lifelessly gray in shame. Mo Linyuan tried to hide his smile, and he claims to have made political achievements. The emperor took out a notebook and softly smiled, Back then, your rise to becoming a government official was because you were able to predict and warn us about an incoming flood and built a dam that permitted local civilians to avoid the flood. Is that true? Han Pin didn't dare to respond because he actually didn't build any dam at all. As expected, Yi Mu jumped out and exclaimed, Back then, it was clearly me. I was passing through the embankment in Changfeng when I noticed how the local riverbed was too high and the terrain was too low. As a result, I decided to join the efforts to build the dam. In the beginning, there were governors who blocked this project. If I didn't have the gold token in my hand, this dam would have never been repaired. But, why would the governors want to prevent the dam from being built, especially if you took credit for it? Right now, Han Pin was really speechless. Since the beginning, he was a dead man in the emperor's eyes. He now had no other choice but to confess to his crimes. Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes, his voice sharply declared, How dare you Han Pin! You still won't confess the truth. How did you receive your current official position? If you don't speak now, everyone in your family, old and young, will be buried with you. With these words, Mo Linyuan was able to destroy the rest of Han Pin's defenses. Han Pin lowered his head and cried, Please forgive me, your majesty. I confess. I will confess. These were all under the support of Chief Zhou who recruited me. My government position was also something I bought from Chief Zhou. Chapter, 238 The Wisdom of an Empress One Han Pin's words caused Zhou Gu's expression to become stiff as a corpse. Even now, he had yet to recover from the realization that the emperor wanted his head. His questionable defense had collapsed under the attacks of everyone around him. After the confessions from Mu Guangxi and Han Pin, those who were against the emperor before, were now betraying and selling Zhou Gu's past affairs one after another. Seeing how now was the best opportunity to do so, everyone was taking advantage of the chance to confess to their own crimes. Under the supposed name of lawful responsibility, they revealed the truth. It was not only to get out of the danger from hiding the truth, but also to indirectly assist the emperor. Having helped him, the sovereign will definitely be more lenient in their punishments. With these thoughts in mind, they each spoke a line, which eventually revealed everything there was about Zhou Gu. It was the first time in Zhou Gu's whole life that he had been exposed to have committed so many malicious deeds. Now, he could no longer bend over or kneel for mercy. Tonight, he had already annihilated the Zhong family. He didn't think that he would quickly follow in the other's footsteps, and be eliminated as well. Was all that had worked for Bin in vain? 
At last, when everyone had said their part, Wen Zhe no longer had the heart to close his eyes. As Mo Linyuan regarded everyone who knelt down below, he finally let out a long sigh. All your statements have truly opened my eyes to the truth. Mo Linyuan wore a half-hearted smile as he said, I would have never thought this could happen under my rule. Yet, you've all already committed all these crimes cunning. Clearly you all are very cunning individuals. After hearing this, they all bowed their heads in guilt. Even the ministers sitting on either side were uncomfortable. Having governed for many years, those who genuinely governed with a clear conscience were few and far between. And they normally only worked on the easier state of affairs. It was only by allying with the emperor that they were able to escape danger. Mo Linyuan rubbed the space between his eyebrows for a while before exclaiming, Zhou Gu, you have violated Article 31 of the law. 27 of which are unforgivable crimes that are punishable by death. I sentence all the men in the Zhou family to be decapitated. See how your wives are innocent, the women in the Zhou family will become members of the Buddhist temples to atone for the Zhou family's evil deeds there. At that point, Zhou Gu no longer had any rebuttal to give. All of the Zhou family members had their eyes shut in despair. They hadn't anticipated for this doomsday to come so quickly. As for the others, with exception to Mu Guangzai, they were sentenced to death. Others who committed lighter crimes were exiled. The remaining simply had their government position demoted in rank. Now that Zhou Gu's affairs were exposed and his reputation was dragged into the dirt, his face became dejected. Before, he had an aspiring dream of annexing the Zhong family's wealth, but now. He abruptly glared at Wen Zhe. Wen Zhe. You ignorant old geezer, you have deceived us so cruelly. The guards were pulling Zhou Gu as he continued to struggle and snarl. You thought you could eradicate all of us like this and have your family be the last one standing? You're mistaken. He pointed at Mo Linyuan who stood high above, that person is not a cub you can control. Someday, you will also face the same fate as me. Even till the last moment as he was towed out of sight, Zhou Gu continued to bellow again and again, you will face the same fate as me. Wen Zhe's complexion was pale as he glanced at Mo Linyuan. Although Mo Linyuan did not return Wen Zhe's gaze, his expression was tense. A while later, besides those who were imprisoned, Mo Linyuan waved his hand to signal for the remaining guests to take a seat. At that moment, the horizon barely held a faint light, but Mo Linyuan still ordered the chef to prepare dishes for the banquet. They had already gone through so many repeated bombardments. Having almost not slept for the entire night, he didn't want them to also not eat anything either. Yet, none of them felt sleepy or hungry. They only felt that this banquet was honestly going on for a ridiculously long time. Chapter 239 The Wisdom of an Empress too. Plate after plate of delicious meals were presented to everyone. There was even an exquisitely juicy golden brown barbecue roast meat that was cut into fine slices on the table. The last to arrive was the rich fragrance of a good, fine wine. Mo Linyuan first proposed a toast as he happily declared. You've all worked hard tonight. As it's nearly impossible to see during a night hunting event, someone's bound to get injured. Everyone, by drinking this cup of wine, you all acknowledge that those who couldn't leave the forest are now simply memories in the past. Mo Linyuan's lips curved up slightly. Due to the Zhong family and Zhou family fighting each other, the forest already had quite a few corpses that still needed to be disposed of, but that wasn't a big problem. It really wasn't important. He has seized total victory tonight. He raised his head as he downed his glass and drank the wine in one gulp. As for Yi Mu, she noticed that many of the people had to secretly wipe away tears as they drank their wine. The faction conflict was a very bitter, desperate struggle. It was very likely that many of their close relatives and friends died in the forest during the struggle. A quiet whimper sounded, but Mo Linyuan acted as if he didn't hear it. His previous threats were so excessive that right now, everyone was afraid to reveal their true feelings for fear he may react erratically. Notably, Yi Mu saw Wen Zhe continuously drown cup after cup of liquor, it was as if he was trying to drink away his sorrows. She unexpectedly left Mo Linyuan's side and went over to Wen Zhe. Prime Minister Wen, you seem to be in a bad mood. When Wen Zhe saw her, he replied in fear and trepidation, Miss Yi. Yi Mu giggled, no need to be so formal. I simply wanted to see what was bothering the Prime Minister. 
why not share with me and let me ease a few of your worries? Wen Zhe glanced at Imo Linyuan who sat above, shook his head, and muttered, it would seem my Xiang'er has given Miss Yi quite a bit of trouble tonight. Yi Mu deduced that Xiang'er could only be Wen Zhe's daughter that Imo Linyuan saved before. Yi Mu shook her head in disagreement, Prime Minister Wen, you aren't worried about your daughter. You're worried that the Emperor will treat you like he treated Chief Zhou. He didn't expect Yi Mu to be so direct, so Wen Zhe simply stared at her, unable to formulate a response. Yi Mu smirked, if that is the case, Prime Minister has nothing to worry about. Wen Zhe knew Yi Mu was the closest person to Mo Linyuan. Hearing this, he didn't hesitate to ask, what exactly does Miss Yi mean by this? Yi Mu clarified, His Majesty once said to me that he could raise a fierce tiger as well as raise a snake that bites. With the assumption that those beasts will only be vicious towards others and not him. Wen Zi laughed softly. But his smile was filled with bitterness and pain. What if the snake has already bitten him once before? Would he still keep it? Yi Mu merrily replied, I also asked him the same questions back then, but he stated that. Yi Mu glanced over at Mo Linyuan, he said that, since this was a fierce animal, it would clearly be difficult to train it. Not having tamed it yet, he is bound to be bitten. That outcome is only to be expected. As long as it can be tamed, it wouldn't be a problem. Moreover, once this ferocious beast is docile, it would be extremely loyal and useful, especially because he is in need of this type of pet by his side. Wen Zhe couldn't help but guffaw at her words. He praised Yi Mu intently, no wonder the emperor values you so much. You truly possess the wisdom of an empress. Yi Mu blanked, before she promptly waved her hand in dismissal, I simply didn't want any distance to form between you two. Previously, you guys always jumped between gratitude and grudges, which is understable. However, that is all in the past now. Yi Mu suddenly lowered her voice, although it was you who indirectly killed the former empress, as long as you agree to continuously help his majesty, the things in the past will remain in the past. You have my word and promise. Her words slowly calmed Wen Zhe's heart. He laughingly replied, with a face filled with gratitude, Miss Yi, you may still be young, but your promise has put me extremely at ease. Please, if I may request that you also pass the same sense of relief and reassurance to His Majesty for me. Okay, I can do that. Unexpectedly, as Yi Mu was grinning happily, Mo Linyuan was looking at her with a seemingly dissatisfied expression. Chapter, 240 Finally growing up one. Really, what is she chatting so happily about with the Wen family? Mo Linyuan thought unhappily. After Yi Mu said goodbye to Wen Zhe, she returned to Mo Linyuan's side. Quickly after, Mo Linyuan began interrogating her, what did you say to him? Yi Mu cheekily retorted, it's a secret. She had her own reason for preventing a rift between Mo Linyuan and Wen Zhe. Mo Linyuan already spent so many years planning his takedown of the two big families in one go. Even though he had been successful, he still had an awful long way to go. She didn't want to tell him that she had helped him so that he wouldn't feel burdened. Which was why she sought out Wen Zhe to discuss with him, in hopes that he wouldn't get any ideas from Zhou Gu's demise. Despite Mo Linyuan's frown after hearing her retort, he still thoughtfully offered her a skewered barbecued meat, eat up, you're probably famished by now. Eat a little more so that you can keep growing. Yi Mu didn't hear his words as her attention was captured by the golden luster of the tender meat slice. Moving boldly, she eagerly took it and gobbled up the skewer with no trace of politeness. On the other hand, Mo Linyuan studied her behind the edge of the wine glass, watching her eagerly devour the meat without a care for her image. I keep feeding you like this, but when will you finally grow up? Mo Linyuan gently smirked with anticipation as he imagined Yi Mu's potential future growth in appearance. Although it was a celebratory banquet, it seemed like Yi Mu was the only one who was cheerfully eating away. A lot of the guests struggled to swallow down any food. The majority were desperately drinking their life away, doing their utmost to become so intoxicated they could forget their sorrows. The second day, due to the fact that the corpses in the forest needed to be disposed of, the hunting event was cancelled so everyone went home instead. Even though they spent a whole trip just to attend this hunt, no one dared to complain. On the road heading back, there were 87 dead bodies that littered behind them. During the march back, the women could no longer stifle their tears and sounds of weeping echoed throughout the journey. 
They were guarded tightly in the tents and had no idea of what went on, let alone, why there were so many deaths over a short nighttime period. Consequently, every inch of outside influence over the imperial court had now crumbled into pieces, leaving M.O. Linyuan as the sole authority. After returning to the palace, Missouri Linyuan promptly wrote around a dozen imperial edicts to publicly denounce those that violated the laws while simultaneously dishing out punishments one after another for their crimes. All the men in the Zhou family were escorted out of the gates and then publicly beheaded. Their deaths not only signified the demise of the family, but also the end of the era dominated by the aristocratic families. They were now a thing of the past. In addition, the emperor sent people to confiscate their property. Just from the search and seizure of the possessions of only two eliminated families yielded astonishing wealth in total it added up to almost ten times the state treasury fund. Everyone was dumbstruck. Just how much embezzlement were they involved in? During the string of continuous oppression, the one who was most terrified was the Empress Dowager. She didn't attend the hunt because she knew that the event wouldn't be safe. However she never considered that the Emperor would, not only return unscathed, but also eliminate two big families at the same time. The Empress Dowager, Zhao Yiqin, was deeply petrified. She wanted to instruct someone to bring Wen Zhe to her, but Wen Zhe refused to visit. His ridiculous excuse was that a simple foreign state official was not permitted to enter the inner courts. This made Zhao Yiqin really lose her temper. Unable to sit around passively anymore, she had to think of countermeasures to deal with the situation by herself. These days, M.O. Linyuan kept growing more and more mature. After years of polishing, he was even more difficult to deal with compared to before. Realizing this, Zhao Yiqin was suddenly possessed with fear. It would seem that M.O. Linyuan has become a profound obstacle, one that was difficult to overcome and made others feel helpless against. Zhao Yikin's eyes danced crazily as she plotted, I can't accept this. Wen Zhe, that old nutcase actually helped him O Linyuan. I didn't know that they privately made some kind of pact together. Now, I'm just sitting here waiting for death to descend upon me. Do I still have any means of survival left? All of a sudden, her eyes lit up. If she remembered correctly, back then, M.O. Linyuan's mother had a pleasant encounter with Wen Zhe in the past. If she seized this information and stirred up a scandal, saying that M.O. Linyuan may not be of royal blood, then how could M.O. Linyuan be able to face this while sitting in his position above? With this, Zhao Yiqin became more and more smug. She immediately summoned a reliable aide to her side and carefully discussed the logistics of this plan. Chapter 241 Finally growing up too. Meanwhile, on the other side of the emperor's palace. Ah, stop that. Yi Mu evaded Mo Linyuan's attempt to grab her. Unfortunately, no one around was willing to help her. Mo Linyuan nervously said, Be good for a moment and let me take a look. You're bleeding. Yi Mu's face furrowed and resembled a stuffed steamed bun. Her face was full of bitterness as she made futile attempts to cover her buttocks with her hands, It's none of your business, I can take care of it myself. How is that okay? Quick, let me take a look. M.O. Linyuan was under the assumption that Yi Mu was injured by someone while he wasn't paying attention. He was so cluttered with concern that he was unable to think of any other possible causes for her bleeding. Yi Mu was blushing profusely, when she finally said indignantly, You're just faking your concern. Why you? Weren't you looking forward to me having this? What? M.O. Linyuan's brows knitted in confusion he contemplated before he reached a revelation and instantly stared at Yi Mu with huge eyes. Why your menstruate? Luckily Yi Mu had sharp eyes and deft hands, so she quickly covered M.O. Linyuan's mouth. The surrounding people could only laugh into their sleeves as they witnessed this. They had all already guessed what was going on, it was only the emperor who was too worried to recognize it. So it was because she's menstruating. M.O. Linyuan could barely contain his grin. How could he have not noticed this? Then what are you still running around everywhere for? Come over here and let the imperial doctor examine you. No way. Yi Mu dipped her head in shame, just tell someone to give me some female products and that should be good enough. It'll take care of it. Are you sure? M.O. Linyuan regarded her dubiously. Yi Mu puffed her chest and said proudly, of course, I already have my own natural female skills. Evidently, a big package of female products was delivered straight into Yi Mu's hands. 
She flusterly used the product, but was embarrassed with how long it took her to use it correctly. Eventually she changed her clothes and awkwardly came outside. By the time she made her appearance, it was already dark out. She noted something before she timidly asked him Oh Linyuan, I want to sleep alone tonight. Being on my period makes me unclean. There's no way you can endure that. At that time, Mo Linyuan was looking through some documents. He looked up at her in astonishment after he heard her request. Ever since the hunting event, he had used all kinds of excuses to make Yi Mu sleep beside him every night. Although right now they still couldn't go beyond little touches, hugging was still a possibility right? After all, he found Yi Mu's sweet scent and soft body addictive to cuddle. Particularly when he caught sight of Yi Mu's defying expression, it made him unable to let her go even more as he raised his eyebrows in joy. I already know everything there is to know about your body. Besides, we've already slept together for several days now. Wouldn't you say, it's already kinda late for that? Yi Mu hugged her pillow tightly in a chokehold, determined to stand her ground. That's not the same. Haven't you heard? Yi Mu whispered ominously, periods are very unsanitary. If you were contaminated with it, you would be cursed with bad luck. Mo Linyuan snorted. He tossed his brush pen aside and started walking towards her. Yi Mu wanted to run away but was caught by Mo Linyuan in an instant. He brought her back to sit down with him behind his royal office desk filled with paperwork. Now, she couldn't run all over the place. I am the renowned emperor of this country. This sort of filth can't possibly affect me. Besides he swiftly kissed Yi Mu's cheek, blood is considered the essence of a person, how could that be considered filthy? Even if it is considered unsanitary, anything that's a part of you is different from other people. Yi Mu flushed crimson, let me go right now, I'm seriously really dirty. Mo Linyuan intimately murmured, I'm not afraid. On another note, from now on you cannot run around barefooted. He paused before he clarified solemnly, the doctor said that during these times, you can't catch a cold. Please, for me, just behave a little. Chapter, 242 The Sovereign's Questionable Birth 1 Just behave a little. Yi Mu hugged her pillow. Mo Linyuan was embracing her from behind, both of them were quiet and motionless. She forced herself to divert her attention elsewhere. Shortly after seeing Mo Linyuan's calligraphy, she realized his handwriting had become more and more refined. For a moment, Yi Mu was entranced by the elegance of his writing, and couldn't help but compliment him. Your calligraphy looks amazing. Despite how she has been living in historical China for a while now, her calligraphy still looked like chicken scratch. It was truly shameful. Does it look amazing? Mo Linyuan faintly raised his brows. His long eyelashes drooped, as the corner of his mouth lifted gently, Ah yes, compared to your calligraphy, yours is not very pleasant to look at. Yi Mu responded with a humph. A few seconds later, Mo Linyuan seized her hand. Although your handwriting isn't pretty, I have some free time right now. Let me teach you a thing or two. After speaking, he encapsulated Yi Mu's hand within his palm. His hand tightened around her so that her hand would hold on to the brush pen. Hey, how could you possibly write well holding my hand like this? Mo Linyuan's hand was very strong as it firmly engulfed her small hand. Yi Mu still remembered how when he used to write, he would place an egg on top of his hand. Whenever the egg fell, he would have to rewrite all the calligraphy again. As time passed, his handwriting has become steady and distinct in its motions. While his hand held hers, Yi Mu's would tremble, but his hand remained stable. Focus for a moment. Unexpectedly, his warm breath brushed the side of Yi Mu's ear, making her feel a little hot. Immediately, she tried to concentrate intently. She let him guide her hands as they drew a character together. The result of the descending brushstrokes was a crooked character. Yi Mu didn't know whether to laugh or cry, I already warned you, holding my hand as you write won't yield good results. The brush pen once again fell upon the paper and left marks. The previously beautiful calligraphy page was now stained with imperfection. It's no big deal. Mo Linyuan laughed softly, let's continue. Let's not Yi Mu wanted to remove her hand, will your document even be legible after this? Originally Mo Linyuan needed to draw out allow, not allow, or to be determined. If the word written was clumsy and unclear, those who read it wouldn't know what he was saying. 
They may even accuse Mo Linyuan of doing his job half-heartedly, when in truth he was incredibly diligent. It's not a problem. Mo Linyuan grasped her hand even tighter, unwilling to let her retract it. His left hand hugged her waist, forcing her bottom to sit solidly on his thighs. When you're writing calligraphy, you need to be at ease. Sometimes, you are not focusing enough. Once you concentrate more, you will be able to obtain better results. Yi Mu, half understanding what he said, dipped her head, and completely relaxed her hand. This gave Mo Linyuan complete control of her hand. And sure enough, every stroke of the character was written out neatly and orderly. Although it was not as strong or stylish as Mo Linyuan's own writing, at least it wasn't chicken scratch. Yi Mu couldn't help but exclaim, if only I could write this well even when you aren't guiding my hands. That would be great. Mo Linyuan laughingly replied, there's no need. He lovingly squeezed Yi Mu's delicate little hand, I am willing to hold on to your hand for the rest of my life. Yi Mu's face flushed red. She stared at him and stuttered, you need to stop speaking like that. Things might get misunderstood. I'm only twelve, why do you have to be such a brute? A brute? Mo Linyuan continued to write words by guiding her hand. His eyes filled with emotion as he asserted, as long as I can obtain what I want, what's the harm in being a brute? Yi Mu was no match for him. She muttered sternly, I have just now realized that the emperor's abilities are definitely not that of your average person. Mo Linyuan chuckled lightly, you're only just realizing that I'm different from other people. Yes. Yi Mu nodded enthusiastically, you're more shameful than others. A typical person truly wouldn't be able to do what yo ha ha. I was wrong. I surrender. Stop tickling me. Chapter, 243. The Sovereign's Questionable Birth 2. Yi Mu continued to twist and turn under Mo Linyuan's playful fingers, almost as if she were a piece of deep-fried dough dancing in oil. Consequently, with one strong slash, her hand that still held onto the brush pen completely ruined the document in front of them. H, it's ruined. What are you supposed to do now? After Yi Mu recovered, she panicked, I already warned you. This is all your fault, you made the first move. Mo Linyuan gazed at her, eyes filled with strong desire. Swiftly, he held her tightly and snuck in a quick nibble on her lip. Yes. It was me who made the first move. Now, hurry and grow up already. I really can't hold back anymore. Yi Mu's face turned bright red. Damn it, she thought, I was taken advantage of again. The next day, when Yi Mu woke up, the sun was already high in the sky. Last night, Mo Linyuan's words scared her to the point that she didn't dare to fall asleep and guarded herself like she was defending against a beast. She didn't fall asleep until the next day, causing her to wake up later. Looking outside, it would seem like it was around lunchtime. Ha after Yi Mu got out of bed and washed her face, she asked a servant nearby, where's his majesty? How come he is nowhere to be seen today? In the past, when Mo Linyuan attended court, he would return as soon as possible. Hearing her question, the servant froze. The servant nervously replied, Miss Yi, His Majesty isn't in a good mood today. If you have nothing to do, it is best not bother him or go looking for trouble. What happened? Yi Mu rubbed her chin, What disaster has befallen us now? That's not it. The servant shook his head. He then rushed towards Yi Mu and whispered in her ear. Around ten years ago, during the hunting event in the western mountains, the previous empress was attacked by assassins in the mountains' forests. At the time, the prime minister brought people to rescue her. In the end, the previous empress returned with her clothes torn up. Not long after, she gave birth to his majesty. As a result, there have been rumors about his origins ever since. Seeing how there was no one else around, Yi Mu asked in confusion, I already know about this. But how are these types of accusations upsetting His Majesty? The servant responded, that's because today, near the end of the court meeting, two people among the Imperial Guards suddenly tried to assassinate His Majesty. Luckily, they were captured. But, in front of all the officials, they said that they were the former followers of the Prime Minister who helped search for the previous Empress. They also claimed that they saw with their own eyes how the previous Empress was fed an aphrodisiac. Although she was able to return safely, she had to get aid to recover from the intoxication. With a grave expression, Yi Mu demanded, and then? 
and then they bit off their tongues and committed suicide. But before they died, they also said that His Majesty isn't of royal blood, and how he was the Prime Minister's son. They accused him of collaborating with the Prime Minister to annex the other aristocratic families. They also said the Wen family members conspired to conquer Jian Shan, and that their next target was the Empress Dowager. After hearing their words, His Majesty's face was very unsightly. Yi Mu sighed, then that means the majority of the officials know about this? The servant nodded his head, not only that, but this gossip has already begun spreading across small towns by storytellers. These people have exaggerated the story and propagated it far and wide. This greatly angered His Majesty, causing him to order that all these people be sentenced to death. So that's what happened, mumbled Yi Mu. It's no wonder Mo Linyuan was unhappy. The servant sighed, this type of imperial family secret gossip spreads very fast. Even if His Majesty wanted to suppress it, it would be very challenging. Yi Mu deduced that Mo Linyuan wasn't worried about these small rumors. Rather, he was concerned with how, since he recently just took out two of the big families, it would make people more anxious about the situation. What's more, for it to be revealed that he was Wen Zhe's son those who still remained from the two aristocratic families wouldn't let this opportunity slip. Undoubtedly, they would use this information against him. It would seem that the imperial court was going to face trouble again. It was uncertain how many people were going to die this time around. Above all, it seems like this was the Empress Dowager's scheming. Chapter, 244 Finding a Solution 1 So, where's His Majesty right now? Yi Mu asked the servant. At this time, I think he should be in the imperial study room. The servant replied without hesitation to Yi Mu because he knew that she was very significant to the emperor. However, the servant was also worried for her, Miss Yi couldn't possibly still be considering going to see him right now, right? After all, this situation wasn't something an ordinary person can handle, and she still had time to avoid it. Yi Mu replied, it's not a problem. He hasn't eaten yet, so I'll go and join him. After conversing, Yi Mu headed over to the imperial study room. Upon her arrival, she saw quite a few people kneeling. You all weren't able to catch the person who started this rumor. Whether or not you truly cannot suppress these rumors or that you actually don't want to suppress it, I understand very clearly. She hadn't entered yet, but she could hear Mo Linyuan's frigid voice transmit through the walls of the room. The emperor's ability to influence others was truly formidable. Being only simple officials, they knew they could not resist his oppressive air. Yet, in order to avoid it from worsening, they still attempted to quell the emperor's rage. As they exited, they saw Yi Mu by the entrance. The Grand Tutor turned to greet her, Miss Yi. Hello Grand Tutor. Yi Mu replied. The person in front of her was actually Mo Linyuan's maternal grandfather. But since Mo Linyuan was the monarch, anyone in reference to him was simply an official first, followed by others below that. At this moment, the Grand Tutor was still highly bound to his title, so he continued to whisper respectfully to her. Miss Yi, you have come to talk to the Sovereign? Yi Mu nodded, I already heard about what happened. The person who's spreading this has truly gone too far. The Grand Tutor's face flashed with a hint of concern. What's truly unsettling about this is that the opponent only wanted to slander the previous Empress reputation but there are still sinister motives behind it. Yi Mu giggled, relax Grand Tutor, His Majesty isn't your ordinary person. The bad guys won't get away with it. The Grand Tutor nodded his head, then we must trouble Miss Yi to please console His Majesty as much as possible. Yi Mu bowed, leave it to me. As Yi Mu entered the building, a few of the servants were tidying and picking up scattered papers on the ground. Mo Linyuan was crouched over, his hands supporting his forehead, with a big frown on his face. For Mo Linyuan, the biggest injustice in this situation wasn't because they wanted to harm his reputation. But rather, his biggest pain was caused by them targeting his already deceased mother. His mother lived a lonely and bitter life. Even in death, she met a horrible end. He didn't want her last memories to also be associated with a negative reputation as well. Yi Mu quietly walked over and reached out to knead his forehead with a hand. How are you doing still upset? Mo Linyuan was originally brimming with vicious aura, but as Yi Mu continued to message him, he narrowed his eyes and softly spoke. I'm not angry anymore. The opponent's goal was clearly to try and provoke me. How can I react as she wants me to? 
Emo Linyuan and Yi Mu both knew who she was referring to. Besides the Empress Dowager, who else could possibly still try to mess with Emo Linyuan so soon after he just killed off two big families? What are you planning to do about this? Yi Mu asked, if you let these rumors continue on, wouldn't it be bad for your reputation? After all, the illegitimate son of the Prime Minister was now the Emperor. Those who wanted to conspire against the M.O. clan could easily take down the family by using verbal attacks from state officials, especially if it were an official from an aristocratic family. This would be even more so if those officials had parents who died during the hunt in the mountains forests once they could grab a hold of this opportunity, they would most definitely be unwilling to let it go. If it was true that M.O. Linyuan was not of royal lineage, it would be detrimental to the emperor's seat he held. Chapter 245 Finding a solution too. Mo Linyuan dismissed everyone before he softly replied. Right now, the only solution I could think of is to make a minor sacrifice for the greater good. The original idiomatic expression is a chess reference to sacrifice a rook to save the king. It also means to think of the bigger picture greater good. So he is playing with a double entendre here. Everyone was saying how the king was Wen Zhe's son. But, if Mo Linyuan killed Wen Zhe, the rumors would naturally be discredited. However, M.O. Linyuan hesitated once again because this was most likely what the enemy wanted him to do. After all, he had recently given Wen Zhe tremendous power. If he truly wanted to make a move against Wen Zhe, it might result in Wen Zhe rebelling with his newfound influence following the fall of the two other major aristocratic families. In that case, M.O. Linyuan would not be able to suppress him easily. By then, it would be like having a crane fight against a fisherman to reap the benefits of the aftermath. Yi Mu also thought of this point. She replied, the Empress Dowager must have predicted you would act this way, and this would give her a chance to get some breathing room. Mo Linyuan frowned again, but this is the quickest solution to the problem. Otherwise, I would have to suppress the Wen family and downgrade his position. However, I'm afraid Wen Zhe won't comply. He will definitely overthink it and assume that I want to make him a figurehead and would still have to kill him in the end. Yi Mu agreed, if it were me, I would also think this way. After all, Wen Zhe was a paranoid person. If the emperor wanted to suppress him, he would definitely resist. And when that happens, the situation would be uncontrollable. If this won't do, and that won't work what exactly should I do? Mo Linyuan sighed with exasperation. This situation came so quickly and violently, especially at this time, I was truly caught off guard by it. There are too many who want to beat up a person who's already down, I truly do not know who I can trust at this moment. Yi Mu wrinkled her brows as she pondered. Eventually, her eyes lit up and she snickered evilly. Actually, that's why, when this event occurred, you could only think of solutions revolving around Wen Zhe, such as sacrificing him for the greater good and whatnot. But honestly, that is a mediocre solution. Then, do you have a better solution? Mo Linyuan turned his head to look at Yi Mu while grabbing her hand. Yi Mu laughed lightly, the reason why the rumors about the emperor being an illegitimate child spread so quickly was just because the commoners all seek news about the nobles. What if we created an even more juicy piece of gossip? That way, even the previous rumors would be considered as old news. Yi Mu's idea caused Mo Linyuan's eyes to light up, what you mean is, have the opponent get a taste of her own medicine. That's right. Yi Mu thought of her era, where celebrities would often use this method which had shown to be quite effective. Mo Linyuan squinted his eyes thoughtfully, before laughing merrily. His arms reached out to engulf Yi Mu in an embrace, he joyfully exclaimed. You truly are my biggest treasure. I know what to do now. As Yi Mu sat within his embrace, she looked at him with anticipation, oh. You've already thought of something so quickly. Mo Linyuan nodded, besides an illegitimate child, what else would be an even more scandalous story? They held each other's gaze, as they recollected a conversation from a few years back. Yi Mu asked in bewilderment, you couldn't be referring to the Empress Dowager's secret love affair? She was speechless. She would have never thought that story would make a full circle back. It was unexpectedly Mo Linyuan that was making this suggestion. Mo Linyuan smirked, the Empress Dowager has always wasted money on her private life. I wouldn't have to spend too much effort to capture her information for use. Yi Mu pondered for a moment, then this must be taken care of as quickly as possible, or else the current situation wouldn't be good for you. 
M.O. Linyuan grinned confidently, you see, with you beside me, in positive I can accomplish anything. Chapter, 246 Flower Night 1 A few days quickly passed by. The emperor's life got busier and busier. He seemed to have realized that the gossip couldn't be suppressed any longer. Besides having killed a few people in the beginning, he was now completely ignoring this matter. Zhao Yiqin was very pleased with herself as she sat in the outer palace, merrily drinking tea with a big smug smile. She then said to one of her trusted aides standing beside her. The king has already killed so many people. Now he's causing a ruckus concerning this matter. The previously fearful officials who didn't dare speak out in fear of angering him will now have no difficulty managing him. They won't let him go easily. Humph, that'll make the emperor regret having killed off all those ministers before. Empress Dowager is truly brilliant. The trusted aide, who was around fifty years old, replied, we should take advantage of the emperor's helplessness in the current crisis and strike him while the iron is still hot. What does the empress dowager think we should do next? Zhao Yiqin narrowed her eyes thoughtfully, before she smirked, with this unexpected scandal, we have planted a seed of doubt in both the ministers and the commoners. Next step, we simply need to find a woman. What do you want a female for? The simple trusted aide asked. Isn't there a heaven ceremony in half a month? There will probably be countless commoners attending the scene. During the event, what do you think will happen if a woman suddenly showed up and claimed to be the previous empress maid? What if she said that the empress had an affair with the prime minister, before the queen became pregnant? It would be quite the marvelous show. Zhao Yiqin narrowed her eyes as she spoke fiercely, it is very hard to find information against the king. I must make sure to exaggerate this as much as possible. That way, I can find a chance to seize power. Empress Dowager is truly wise. Her trusted aide said quickly, this servant will go organize this right away. Go, Zhao Yunqin suddenly remembered something and quickly added, oh yeah, the Zhong and Zhou family has been searched and confiscated already. Have you found a chance to go and look for the city boundary map? The trusted aide shook his head, I searched every document and couldn't find the city boundary map. Zhao Yunqin was a little disappointed as she waved her hand in dismissal, bah, just go. That map cannot fall in someone else's hands. Besides, it would be near impossible for anyone to collect and unite all the maps. When you leave, tell the Flower Knight to enter. It has been stuffy in the Imperial Palace due to all the deaths these past few days. I am going to enjoy myself a little. As you command. The Flower Knight was Zhao Yikin's most pampered boy toy among all the young soldiers. Not long after, he went to Zhao Yikin's side as instructed. Zhao Yiqin was fairly young, only a little older than forty years old. She wasn't M.O. Linyuan's actual paternal grandmother, which was why she was only nice to M.O. Linyuan and M.O. Sherwen in order to make moves against them. Once the Flower Knight saw Zhao Yiqin, a smile immediately appeared. He had a weak and fair complexion. At first glance, he seemed to have a somewhat monk-like neatness. However once he laughed, his appearance became more vulgar. Come over here. Zhao Yiqin hooked her finger to signal him over. With a charming smile, the flower knight swiftly walked over and gripped her hand. Now, let me attend to the Empress Dowager. Zhao Yiqin signaled with a finger, directing those in the back of the scene to remain silent. About an hour later, this section of the imperial building suddenly caught on fire. Arriving alongside the fire, Yi Mu brought a group of people that all charged inside. Furthermore, she commanded them to surround the entire complex. Empress Dowager, this isn't good. There's a, the servant couldn't finish his words before Zhao Yiqin panicked. She hadn't finished dressing up yet before Yi Mu went inside with a ton of imperial guards following behind her. Empress Dowager, it's been a while since we last saw each other. Yi Mu waved to dismiss the people around. As Yi Mu walked in, she noticed the disheveled Zhao Yiqin was trying to block her at the entrance door. How dare you! Zhao Yikin's face was bright red, her eyes were even more piercing, who permitted you to enter? I'm the Empress Dowager. Just because the Emperor favors you, doesn't mean you can disregard the laws. Chapter, 247 Flower Night 2 Yi Mu wanted to walk past her, but Zhao Yiqin was stubbornly blocking the door. Yi Mu snickered, Empress Dowager is speaking too critically. 
I only wanted to see how bad the fire is on your side of the palace. I was anxious and worried about your safety which was why I suddenly charged in. You misunderstand my good intentions. Zhao Yiqin glared even more intensely at Yi Mu. She already realized what Yi Mu wanted to do. Empress Dowager isn't going to invite me in to sit a little. Or rather, do you already have someone else inside? Yi Mu raised her head to smirk at her. Zhao Yiqin snorted. The man that was inside should have already left by now. She shifted her body aside, how impudent. I want to see what you're plotting to want to enter so badly. Yi Mu went inside to take a peek. She discovered there wasn't anyone inside, but she wasn't disappointed. Sure enough, not long after, there was an imperial guard at the doorway that shouted, Miss Yi, we've captured someone who has jumped out of the Empress Dowager's dwellings. Oh. Yi Mu headed outside. Zhao Yiqin didn't think Yi Mu would surround her facility so thoroughly. She suddenly grabbed Yi Mu's hand. What exactly do you want to do? Are you trying to slander me so that you can suppress the scandal concerning the emperor? Zhao Yikin's fingernails dug deep into Yi Mu, but her expression remained unchanged and calm. Empress Dowager, what is this? You couldn't even catch a thief like this. She shook off Zhao Yikin's hand, I really want to take a closer look at this little thief who jumped out of the Empress Dowager's room. Let's see what he could have stolen. Zhao Yiqin gritted her teeth as she saw how Yi Mu turned around without looking back. With her disordered outfit, she followed tightly on Yi Mu's heels as they headed outside. In the courtyard, besides Zhao Yikin's trusted aides and the Imperial Guards, there was a man covered only by a meager garment who was forced to kneel on the ground. He was panicking and repeatedly muttering oh no. If anyone found out that he slept with the Empress Dowager, he was definitely toast. Now, the only one who could save him was Zhao Yiqin herself. When he saw her heading over, he wanted to go to her side, but was held immobile by an imperial guard. Is this the little thief? Yi Mu pretended to cover her eyes with her hands, how come he doesn't have any pants on? None of Zhao Yiqin's people dared to speak. This is a mess. With this many imperial soldiers, if they didn't subdue the current situation, the Empress Dowager's affair would be spread throughout the country for everyone to know. The Flower Knight could feel the tension suffocating him. However, since Zhao Yiqin was very fond of him when she saw his face, he thought for sure that she would save him. Hence, he opened his mouth and yelled, Empress Dowager, please quickly tell them that I that am not a thief. Everyone's attention turned towards the Empress Dowager. Zhao Yiqin's complexion became extremely unsightly. Yet, the Flower Knight, determined to save his life, crawled a few steps forward towards her, my queen mother, quickly save me, didn't you say? At that moment Zhao Yiqin abruptly rushed forward. She took the saber from one of the closest imperial guards and, within seconds, stabbed the stomach of the Flower Knight. It was a pity his sentence was left unfinished, and he died with his eyes wide open. How could she do this? Didn't she say that she really liked me? This was truly an unforeseen event that no one could have anticipated. Chapter, 248 Zhao Yikin's jade face was stained with blood. She dropped the sword and turned her head to smile at Yi Mu. Thank you Miss Yi for your concern for my safety. I have misunderstood you. There actually was a thief. She used her own hand to wipe the blood off, before coldly sneering, but everything is fine now. Since this person is dead, I am safe. If there is nothing else, Miss Yi should go back to the Emperor's side. For a split second, Yi Mu was astonished but she quickly recovered her cool. She watched the fire burning not far from where they stood as it continued to burn, black smoke soared up into the sky. However, not a single person tried to stop the fire. Yi Mu couldn't help but lightly chuckle. Empress Dowager is so decisive. Yi Mu must concede. Since the thief is already dead, then Yi Mu will take her leave I hope Empress Dowager makes sure to rest up. Don't let what happened unsettle you. After finishing speaking, she left accompanied by the people she brought. Notably, Yi Mu wasn't feigning her calm demeanor. Obtaining information on Zhao Yikin's scandal was actually easier than expected. Since the flower night from today was of little significance, Zhao Yiqin killed him off to defend herself. Even so, she couldn't completely hide the truth. They simply have to wait and see. After Yi Mu left with the guards, Zhao Yikin's trusted aides promptly tried to control the flames. 
However, the fire was too big and nearly destroyed the entire courtyard. Zhao Yiqin glanced over at the corpse on the ground, her eyes holding evil intentions when suddenly two people came in to drag the dead body away. Where are you towing the body? Zhao Yiqin asked menacingly. The two servants who were in the process of disposing of the body knelt down. They stuttered, tack taking it to the unmarked burial mounds. Idiots! Zhao Yiqin pointed to the courtyard on the other side and said angrily, Can't you see the big fire over there? Just drag it over there and burn it. Don't leave behind any evidence. Yes, definitely, we will do as commanded. The two servants rushed away. Meanwhile, Zhao Yiqin gazed at the sky with slightly warped eyes as the large flame continued to grow. Empress Dowager, in this maid's opinion, it would seem the emperor is watching us intently. Zhao Yiqin snorted, I had assumed the emperor would kill Wen Zhe or possibly even engage in conflict with the Wen family to preserve his image. I never would have thought he would outsmart the situation and come up with the method of covering gossip by creating other rumors. He is truly vile. Then, what should we do now? Asked the senior maid with a frown. That Yi Mu is also not an easy person to handle. She relies on the emperor's limitless doting, such that she isn't afraid of doing anything. Whoever dares to obstruct her path would be beaten down regardless of the laws. How can that be considered proper? For us, she is truly a big obstacle. Her words made Zhao Yiqin's eyes light up. You're right. Zhao Yiqin said coolly. Her bloodstained face highlighted her disturbing appearance. Looks like it is time to get rid of her. How would we achieve that? The trusted aide asked, she doesn't leave the imperial palace often and she is also very secretive. Even the death of 500 skilled martial art masters from a few years back couldn't even be connected to her. Without any inside information, how can we make any move against her? Recounting the incident from the past, Zhao Yiqin despised Yi Mu even more. Her hands clenched into fists, her nails digging into her skin. In that case, let's settle the past and current grudges together in one go. Her pearly eyes turned to look at her servant as she said maliciously, as for Yi Mu, she isn't invincible. Doesn't she go to the Tianshou Temple every month? I still have the Silent Master who can act for my sake. Bringing up the Silent Master, the old maid became quiet as Zhao Yiqin whispered her plan into the servant's ear. Will this plan work? The senior maid was shocked. She gravely muttered, the Silent Master and Yi Mu have a pretty good relationship, so he couldn't possibly agree to this right. Zhao Yiqin scoffed, these past few years, if it hadn't been for me who told the silent master to look after her, how could that slut be doing so well? You simply need to go and tell him what I've said, whether he agrees or not isn't his decision to make. The old maid nodded, bowed, and quickly retreated. Zhao Yiqin watched the figure disappear into the distance. The black smoke and flames continued to rage behind her, and she couldn't help but laugh grimly. Oh Yi Mu, dearest Yi Mu, it was you who first courted death. You can't blame me for doing this. Chapter, 249 After Yi Mu arrived at the Imperial Palace, she went straight to Mo Linyuan and reported what happened. You see what I mean? She is truly a ruthless woman, who won't yield easily, especially when we're trying to capture information to use against her. Once she finished, Yi Mu shrugged her arms a little helplessly. Having just left court, Mo Linyuan was wearing a refined dragon robe. He had a dignified presence while sitting in an imperial chair. He then beckoned her to come over, you have already done a very good job. Once Yi Mu arrived beside him, he praised her. He originally had a relatively comfortable smile, but soon after, his eyebrows knitted like he had a headache. Today during court, due to the continuous argument concerning the gossip issues, we've quarreled to the point of unexpectedly bringing up the topic of me being single and not married yet. They truly just want to humiliate me. His eyes held a frigid glint which disappeared in a flash. Right then, someone came in to report something, Your Majesty, Prime Minister Wen seeks an audience with you. Mo Linyuan and Yi Mu looked at each other. Mo Linyuan replied, Let him in. Soon after, Wen Zhe walked in wearing his official robes. He looked awful, like he was plagued by a heavy consciousness and couldn't get enough sleep. My sovereign. He prostrated himself, before he promptly stated his demand, please let this old official resign and return to his hometown. Mo Linyuan and Yi Mu were both stunned. 
Since they were surrounded by trusted aides, Mo Linyuan didn't hesitate to ask about the taboo topic, why would the Prime Minister ask for such a thing? Wen Zhe, in front of everyone, calmly declared, there's no need to hide from your majesty, this official truly admired the previous esteemed empress. Right now, someone is using this official to attack her reputation as well as badly influencing your majesty. That's why due to this situation, this official cannot attend the imperial court meetings anymore. Even though the Wen family was the most influential aristocratic family standing, if he had to face people gossiping and accusing him of using an illegitimate child to seize the country, he wouldn't be able to withstand that kind of continuous verbal attack. He believed that the best method right now was for him to live in seclusion for a brief moment, to create a facade of having fallen out of favor. Moreover, if he didn't do this, and waited until the emperor couldn't handle the pressure anymore when the king had to make his move, it would already be too late. Wen Zhe just thought that he should take the initiative to show his devotion and loyalty. Mo Linyuan remained silent. Yi Mu, who stood beside him, spoke merrily. Prime Minister Wen is truly loyal, it is as clear as the sun and moon. Surely those who started the rumors only did it out of envy of the great relationship between the Prime Minister and His Majesty. That's why these slandering comments appeared. Truthfully, if there had to be someone missing in the imperial court, we wouldn't want to have you of all people missing. But when Zhe glanced over at Mo Linyuan with a complex expression. Since Mo Linyuan's recent slaughtering of the two big families, Wen Zhe has been afraid of him. It has also made the other top advising officials fearful of him. Wen Zhe was truly worried that, if he didn't take the initiative to hand over his authority, Mo Linyuan would directly decapitate him. If Mo Linyuan really made his move that's why in order to preserve his life, why not hand over his power to the king? Mo Linyuan finally replied, you are overthinking. Mo Linyuan said begrudgingly, I already have a solution for this issue. You don't have to worry about it. Wei Zhe still didn't quite comprehend what he heard, so Yi Mu took him aside and shared her plan with him. When Zhe's eyes brightened, Miss Yi is truly clever. Then, is there any way this official can help? Mo Linyuan and Yi Mu glanced at each other before exclaiming, of course. Chapter, 250. What's the real truth? 1. What can I do? Wen Zhe really wanted to help. If he couldn't contribute anything to the emperor in these dire moments, it would be detrimental for everyone one of them. Yi Mu leaned closer to him, whispering the plan in his ear. Find someone who looks similar to the silent master. Wen Zhe had a puzzled expression. Yi Mu nodded, I noticed that the flower knight who was killed by the Empress Dowager today had a face very similar to the Silent Master. I think that there could be a connection between the two. Wen Zhe agreed, I understand. There aren't many that look like the Silent Master, but this official will do his best to find someone who matches his likeness. Yi Mu bowed her head. Afterwards, they exchanged a few more words before Wen Zhe eventually left. Mo Linyuan couldn't help but ask. These past few years, you've been spending time with the Silent Master and have become quite acquainted with him. What are your thoughts on the Silent Monk? Yi Mu didn't hesitate to reply, I feel that he is a great guy. Yi Mu's words made Mo Linyuan a little upset. However, after pondering for a bit the other guy was just a simple monk, so what was the big deal? He pulled Yi Mu towards him and pinched her chin to meet her gaze. His phoenix-like eyes assessed her with a droopy, slumber-like appearance. Besides being a great guy what else? Yi Mu contemplated, before she remarked, Honestly I know that, these past few years, you have been suspicious of the silent master. However, he has helped me suppress my evil energy. Plus, he seems genuine and doesn't find me bothersome but I sense that the silent monk and the empress dowager have a relationship that we can't even fathom. He doesn't seem like someone who would yield under the influence of power, let alone, someone who indulges in worldly mortal affairs to gain advantages. You trust him to that extent? Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes. His refined jaw shifted as he clenched his teeth with a somewhat sullen expression. Yi Mu reached out to grab onto his sleeve, him not saying I trust him. I am just trusting my own intuition. Besides, I already have my own arrangements of how he'll handle this. Mo Linyuan didn't want to continue discussing this. To change the subject, his hands reached aside to grab a book. Within it held two small maps. Can you take a look at this? The city boundary map. 
Yi Mu's eyes bulged out when she saw them. Elated, she questioned, were these from the Zhou and Zhong family residence? Mo Linyuan nodded, the Empress Dowager also has one piece. Before I got a hold of these two sections, the Empress Dowager sent someone to look for these two, most definitely because she did not want to have them fall into our hands. Yi Mu, feeling a little smug, and proudly exclaimed, but they still fell in our possession. Having spoken, she happily skipped towards the wall on the other end to press a secret button. Instantly, a hidden passage appeared before her and revealed another piece of the city boundary map. Uniting this with the other two, she discovered that there was still one big piece missing at one of the most important parts of the geographical design. Ah, uh, I wonder when we will finally collect the whole map. After her initial enthusiasm passed, Yi Mu now felt a little melancholic. Since the beginning, she knew that this map would be very difficult to obtain now that so many years have already passed, there is still hope. Mo Linyuan, having witnessed her excitement, couldn't help but chuckle before he asked, do you really want the treasures that badly? Since he had raided the two big influential families, the state treasury was now full of wealth. Seeing her behavior, he laughingly stated, anything in my state treasury is all yours. Yet, you still want more treasures. You truly are a little money grubber. Yi Mu laughed nervously. She carefully hid the map and placed it back inside the hidden passway before she replied subconsciously, actually, I am not interested in the money at all. Having said this, she almost accidentally told the real truth. But once she remembered Mo Linyuan had feelings for her, she once again subconsciously resisted spilling the beans. Oh. Then what do you want the map for then? Chapter, 251. What's the real truth? 2. Mo Linyuan seemed to have finally realized something was up. However, his smile remained unchanged as he sat in front of the table. With one hand resting on his jaw, he tilted his head as he questioned her. Yimu felt she should tell him but also felt that she shouldn't tell him in the end, she mumbled. Just know that, the moment you find the treasure, the truth will be revealed. Although she felt that Mo Linyuan was a genuinely good person in her heart, she was always only concerned about this extremely important progress in the historical story. As a result, she could only internally apologize for her hesitation. Having realized this, she felt a little uncomfortable. She glanced over at Mo Linyuan with guilt visible as their eyes met. Feeling Yi Mu's guilt, his heart twisted. When did Mo Linyuan become so perceptive? His smile widened as he beckoned her over with his hand. Come here. Yi Mu obediently shuffled over. Once she entered Mo Linyuan's embrace, he finally let out a content sigh. His breath brushed her neck. Little Muir, do you know why I have been fighting so desperately these past few years? In recent years, Mo Linyuan has truly been working incredibly hard. Yi Mu calculated the time period. Based on history, he should still be concealing his strength and keeping a low profile at this time. But right now, he was taking risks and showing off his abilities openly. She deduced that it probably had something to do with her appearance which caused this progression in history. Yi Mu pointed at herself, is it because of me? Yes. Mo Linyuan's exquisite face softened, as he blissfully regarded her, I did it for you. I'm glad this little girl still has some conscience to know that I'm doing this for her. Hearing him say that, she couldn't help but stared blankly at him. Mo Linyuan, with a warm smile and earnest eyes, murmured, because I want to be able to protect you take care of you I want you to be carefree without worries for the rest of your life. Can you understand where my feelings are coming from? As Yi Mu listened intently, she became uneasy as she glanced up at him. She bit her lip, not knowing what to say. But it would appear Mo Linyuan didn't intend to let her speak. Unknowingly, I conceived the idea of spoiling you to continuously pamper you for a lifetime. A lifetime is truly a long time, but even when I die and need to be buried with a partner, I want to be buried together with you only you. The original, is the concept of a husband and wife being buried together after death. Meaning, even to death he doesn't want to part with her. Hearing his words, Yi Mu felt even more culpable. On one hand, she had the dedicated and loving Imo Linyuan on the other hand, she had her dad and family to return to. Her heart was utterly tangled that she couldn't think or speak at the moment. Mo Linyuan would be hurt if he knew, but she also felt she should tell him the real truth because she couldn't let him continue falling any deeper in love with her. A while later, 
Yimu finally made up her mind. She felt that, for the sake of obtaining the city boundary map, she needed to tell Mo Linyuan because he had a right to know. Just as she was about to summon her courage to speak, abruptly, someone rushed in to report pertinent information. The servant shouted across the door. Your Majesty, not good. The Grand Tutor has come across an ambush, this is a matter of life and death. Hearing this, Yi Mu immediately jumped out of M. O. Lin Yuan's arms. What? Something happened to the Grand Tutor. He was M. O. Lin Yuan's maternal grandfather, how could something happen to him? Who dared to make a move against him? M. O. Lin Yuan frowned in displeasure. Just a little more and he would have coaxed little Muir to tell him the real truth. She was just about to say it. This servant entered way too soon. But this person did bring pertinent news M.O. Linyuan couldn't delay any longer and could only go take care of this in person. Little Muir, you must stay in the Imperial Palace. You've already done enough these past few days. You don't need to leave the palace for this issue. I suspect, Empress Dowager is currently targeting you. Yi Mu nodded. She had already trespassed in Empress Dowager's territory with guards, which was a big offense. Zhao Yiqin is also not someone who would take the offense lightly. Without a doubt, she hated Yi Mu's guts. This would most likely be a scheme planned for Yi Mu. Chapter 252 Would you continue to help me? 1. You have to be extra careful. Warned Yi Mu. Okay. Mo Lin Yuan got up and as he was about to head out, he remembered something. He turned to face her, you were just about to tell me something wait for me to return and we will continue where we left off. Yi Mu nodded, her heart feeling a little heavy. Once Mo Lin Yuan left, Yi Mu grabbed her head in frustration as she sat down in a chair. There was a dragon head on the emperor's throne, which Yi Mu sat on top of. The servants that were standing around acted like they didn't see her. This made Yi Mu even more uncomfortable. Mo Lin Yuan truly valued her if he knew that she was leaving, wouldn't that devastate him? Reflecting on this, Yi Mu shook her head. There's no way. Mo Lin Yuan was merely 16 years old, yet he was already incredibly wise and tenacious. He was more mature than any of the adults she knew of in the modern era. How can such a person exist someone who was a natural-born genius who would meticulously plan his gains and losses and yet still do irrational things for his feelings? Once she left, M.O. Lin Yuan may start hating her or he may remember her for the rest of his life but his life will go on. He has his journey to succeed in uniting the lands, just as she has her own mission to accomplish. With this in mind, Yi Mu lowered her head as the pit of her stomach twisted. She felt her previously quiet internal evil energy suddenly stir up restlessly in agitation. She didn't think this would be so difficult to bear. Yi Mu thought that she would be resolute. Once she obtained the city boundary map she would then return but she was truly too naive. Yi Mu laughed bitterly. She felt that the room had become too stifling, and decided to go for a stroll. Once Yi Mu left the imperial palace, a bunch of people rushed over to her. Some of them went over the top with welcoming her, Miss Yi, the chrysanthemum in the courtyard has just started blooming. Would you like to go and see? Yi Mu was quite popular in the palace. Hearing the other person share this, she felt it was a lucky coincidence, as she was feeling stuffy indoors. Dismissing those around her, as she didn't want to be followed, she cheerfully proceeded towards the courtyard alone. There were very few authority figures in this palace due to the fact that most of them were either dead or became monks. M.O. Lin Yuan still hadn't drafted anyone new to fill those roles. Thus, the palace was mostly empty. Naturally, this also made people in the palace few and far between. Yi Mu walked past the refined and grand palace doors, feeling a little desolate. Within the palace, there were mostly imperial guards. They symbolized peace and security. In reality, that was not the case, as they only provided a superficial sense of safety. It was at that moment, a shadow suddenly appeared and flashed in front of Yi Mu. Yi Mu was by herself, so when she saw the figure, she didn't even think before she approached it. Who are you? She demanded. The figure led Yi Mu to an empty yard, before halting. Yi Mu scrutinized the figure. Within seconds, he took out a dagger, aiming it at Yi Mu. Yi Mu turned apprehensive. The opponent didn't seem weak, but she also wasn't someone to be underestimated. 
even if she couldn't use her internal force, many were still no match for her. Moreover, as they were fighting, she felt that she had the upper hand. The opponent also seemed to have realized that Yi Mu was stronger than him. He may have initiated the attack, but in the end he started to step back and retreat. Yi Mu thought it was suspicious for him to act this way, but she still reached out to grab onto him and prevent his escape. Just at that moment, the ordinary man abruptly spit a mouth full of blood at her. Yi Mu then witnessed him bite down on a poisonous pill to kill himself, so she let go of his arm. As she was releasing his arm, the man suddenly turned around and used a dagger to slice his neck right in front of Yi Mu. Chapter 253 Would you continue to help me? 2. His execution was extremely fierce, causing blood to splash and soak Yi Mu's whole body. Ah! A servant passing through not far away screamed. Yi Mu touched her face, only to find her hand drenched in vital fluids. Her nose filled up with the pungent, fishy smell of blood. It would seem that the now fallen individual had accomplished his mission, which was to die in the hands of Yi Mu. Yi Mu quickly used a clean handkerchief to wipe her face in order to try and suppress her evil energy. She hadn't seen so much blood in so many years. Even now, her diet mostly consisted of vegetables. To suddenly become bloody from head to toe, Yi Mu began to feel agitated as she anxiously wiped herself. However it appeared that the blood had penetrated her pores and entered her internally, which caused the ominous creature that she already suppressed a long time ago to reawaken. Seeing her handkerchief becoming more and more dirty, Yi Mu felt helpless, before she turned and strided towards a pond not far away. As a band of imperial guards rushed over, Yi Mu instructed them, get rid of him. As she hurried away, she ran to the side of the koi fish pond and washed the blood from her face. However, it did not fix her restlessness. Thinking desperately, she went to change clothes before she headed to the Buddhist temple. Currently, she should not have gone out, but there were many guards placed along the path to the Tian Shou temple, so she thought it would be fine. When the silent monk saw her, he was taken aback. Why did you come? Yi Mu felt slightly feverish, as she said promptly, don't ask too many questions. Long story short, I just ran into a problem. Someone died in front of me, but his blood wasn't normal. My body got in contact with it, and now the once dormant negative energy is burning up again. After explaining, she showed him the clothes she just changed out of. The silent master sniffed at it, and his expression suddenly changed. What's wrong? Yi Mu saw that something was amiss. It's it's nothing. Silent monk was somewhat uneasy as he spoke, come inside, let me first help you channel your internal force. The dark martial arts you used to practice was meant to be triggered by blood to fuel its strength. But it's not a problem, I will help you inhibit it. Yi Mu didn't doubt him at all. At once she followed him inside. But right then, an unexpected young Buddhist monk walked inside and whispered a short phrase into Silent Master's ear. Afterwards, Yi Mu noticed the Silent Master's already pale complexion became even paler than before. He glanced at Yi Mu in bewilderment, not saying anything. He simply dismissed the novice Buddhist monk. Afterwards, he became anxious for an unknown personal reason as he continued to escort Yi Mu inside. They both sat cross-legged in front of each other. Before starting, the seated Yi Mu unexpectedly asked him. Silent Master, how long has it been since you've helped me suppress the evil energy? The silent monk froze, not saying anything. Yi Mu smiled at him, based on my calculation, it's already been a few years. I wouldn't have thought I would know you for this long. I should be able to call you a friend by now right? Hearing this, Silent Master firmly nodded his head. Yi Mu asked, my own life and well-being can I entrust it to you? Silent Master gazed at her, as she pointed at herself, I know in here, there is a ferocious beast kept under control. Moreover it has been suppressed for many years. If something were to happen and it broke free, I undoubtedly would not be a match against it by then. When that time comes, if it isn't the death of others, it will be my own death would you still continue to help me then? This time, Silent Master didn't hesitate long before his face reflected a pure, honorable, steady expression. I will continue to help you, for as long as I live, you will not lose control. Chapter 254 It's a trap one. After the Silent Master's proclamation, his eyes cleared. He was determined to help Yimu obstruct her evil energies. 
For many years, Yi Mu has been practicing dark martial arts. Although she continued to suppress it, she has now reached her limit. Even if she didn't let it burst out like before, once it does explode, it would be extremely dangerous. Even after her internal forces flowed clearly, the silent master noticed Yi Mu was still unstable and needed to finalize her cultivation. He stealthily walked outside. His mood was heavy due to the bloodied clothes Yi Mu showed him. The dark red blood that stained the cloth had a flowery fragrance permeating from it. It was a scent derived from a plant known as the burning flower fragrance. The scent was known to make people become rash and irritable. As for why it was running through the blood of the assassin who killed himself in front of Yi Mu, the answer was obvious. The silent monk's eyes reflected traces of gloominess. The Buddha beads he held within his hand, weighed a thousand times heavier than usual. If he hadn't tried to rouse Yi Mu's internal force earlier, her energy would have reacted violently. He guided her to awaken the forces more naturally, like a father guiding a child. Although she was fairly stable at the moment, her temperament would become more and more violent over time. Once she loses all control, it would become a catastrophic life or death situation. In the past, he didn't know about Yi Mu's father. But now, having heard Yi Mu's story, he blamed himself even more. How could her father give this devil martial arts form to her to protect herself, when it has such a bloodthirsty nature? The man then thought, at least, she is unlikely to ever get bullied. In the beginning, the silent master had destroyed all of it. Her father's goodwill was now completely ruined by him. Meanwhile Yi Mu was unaware of this, and still continued to treat him as a friend. She herself was afraid of her own evil tendencies, and depended on him to suppress her abilities and to bring relief. She continued to believe he was someone helpful. Someone helpful. The silent master's heart stilled as he repeated the two words. He recollected to the time when he was at the foot of the mountains and witnessed the multitude of corpses littering the ground. Right then, a novice monk went to greet him, master his next sentence caused the silent monk's face to change completely. Miss Zhao has come to visit. Ever since Yi Mu began visiting the Tian Shou Temple, Zhao Yiqin, who used to visit often, hesitated to come by and only visited once a year. The silent master originally didn't want to see Zhao Yiqin, as Yi Mu was currently at the Tian Shou Temple. He was fearful that they would run into each other. But remembering Yi Mu's pale face, he decided to go and meet Zhao Yiqin, to demand what exactly the woman was planning. Within the dimmed Buddhist monastery, Zhao Yiqin was wearing a silk garment. Her hair was plain without ornaments. At first glance, she looked just like an ordinary woman. But the moment she turned around, her face held an imposing power and vigor that other women didn't have. You came. Zhao Yiqin was delighted to see the monk. The usual sharpness in her eyebrows softened with her smile. In contrast, the silent master's expression was rigid. What are you doing here? Were you the one who made Yimu this way right now? Zhao Yikin's smile thinned into a sneer, you finally get to see me, but you only talk about that little girl. Do you have any idea what she has done to me? She almost spread rumors about me raising a circle of boy toys to the world. If it wasn't for my timely response, I would have been spurned by everyone. Having a circle of lovers is one thing, but having everyone in the world know about it was another. Yi Mu truly took drastic measures and fiercely pulled the carpet under Zhao Yiqin. Chapter 255. It's a trap too. The silent monk listened at the doorway, not saying anything. Zhao Yiqin hid her smile. Her expression became stern, I am having a difficult time right now. The little emperor got rid of the Zhou and Zhong family. I don't understand why Wen Zhe, that old traitor, decided to cooperate with the emperor. Their next target is going to be me. Seeing the silent monk's indifference, Zhao Yiqin stepped forward aggressively, did you not hear me? I said, I'm about to be killed by them. So that's your reasoning for using the burning flower fragrance to evoke murderous intent in Yimu? Have you ever thought about how many people in the palace your decision would kill? What's there to be afraid of? Zhao Yiqin cackled coldly, I'm no longer living in the palace. Nothing is going to happen to me. If she truly does go insane, the one that's going to die is that little tyrant. Besides, didn't you say Yi Mu was kind-hearted? If she was truly kind, and she could no longer restrain herself, she should do us all a favor and just drop dead. You're truly unreasonable. The silent monk's face flushed lightly, 
you can hurt others, but I won't allow you to harm her. Why is that? Zhao Yiqin showed jealousy, you never cared about others before. When I wanted you to do something, you would do it. But now, you're arguing with me over a dead girl. Did she feed you some weird manipulative soup? That's enough. The silent monk suddenly shouted. He had always spoken softly and warmly before. With his abrupt outburst, his expression unexpectedly became even more fierce. Please leave here immediately. I don't care what you do, I won't expose you. That will be the last thing I will do for you out of love. The silent master's cold and detached words made Zhao Yiqin furious. Looks like, because of her, you don't need me anymore. But that doesn't matter, she's going to die very soon. What do you mean as the silent monk's words trailed off, upon realization, he tried to run outside. However, he was stopped by two martial arts masters at the doorway. Zhao Yiqin then walked up behind him. Ever since the beginning, I already instructed someone to put the burning flower fragrance in the incense in her room to intensify her state. What do you think she would choose, to explode and lose control or to kill herself? Zhao Yiqin faintly smirked, her eyes as sharp as a scorpion, it doesn't matter what she chooses. If she decides to kill herself, that's one death versus one hundred deaths. If she chooses to live, the people important to the king will be killed outside the palace. You tell me, would the sovereign still be able to cover this situation? He most likely wouldn't be able to protect Yimu anymore, right? The silent master's face was ghost-like, no, don't do this. Why not? Zhao Yiqin casted a meaningful glance towards the martial arts masters. The two of them approached the silent master from each side and detained him. Why don't you two quickly take him back to his room? It would be bad if that little devil goes insane. Zhao Yiqin thought this out very thoroughly. If Yimu died, Mo Linyuan would suffer greatly. If Yimu didn't die, then all the Buddhist monks on this mountain top would be massacred by her. At that point, even if Mo Linyuan wanted to protect her, he would undoubtedly be denounced by everyone. Especially now that everyone knew of Mo Linyuan's questionable past, if he made this reckless decision in these dire times humph. Let's see if he could still fight for her then. With these thoughts, she smiled coolly. She then turned to the pale monk. Let's go. We should head back to the room. I won't let you be harmed. Once we reveal ourselves, you don't have to be a monk anymore. Didn't you say you wanted to change your identity? I promise you, this time, you can do whatever you desire. Chapter 256 Karma 1 Hearing this, the color completely drained from the silent master's face. He began to struggle with all his might. Meanwhile, a sharp cry came from the surrounding mountains. Hearing this, Zhao Yiqin naturally became elated, perfect. Looks like Yi Mu, that doomed girl, is on a killing spree. But Yi Mu wasn't killing anyone. Although she was drenched in blood, the blood was her own. She ran into a young lady who was burning incense for her family. The moment the lady saw Yi Mu's frightening appearance, the woman shrieked her spirit leaving her body. Yi Mu's appearance at this time was truly terrifying. When she realized something was wrong, it was already too late. She felt feverish and unlike herself. She sensed that the evil energy within her body could no longer be suppressed. Before her murderous intent could surge, she tapped heavily on some of her vital points, causing herself to vomit blood. The sharp pain caused her to retain her rationality a little longer. She wanted to find the silent monk. However, due to her current appearance, wherever she walked, people who saw her would panic and flee fearfully. Yi Mu's originally pure face suddenly had black blood vessels appearing, her eyes turning bloodshot, as she was drenched in her own blood. She looked like a malicious evil spirit that crawled out of hell. Quickly, come take a look. Something has happened to Miss Yi. The imperial guards stationed around the mountain herd and rushed towards where Yi Mu was. Yi Mu was the sovereign's most significant beloved. The guards couldn't let her be in danger. A scream could be heard. Yi Mu stood and started stepping on the floor tile. Her feet, leaking internal forces, caused deep cracks and footprints to litter everywhere on the stone slabs with every step she took. Wh what sort of creature are you? The first ones to arrive were the martial artist monks, who proceeded to surround Yi Mu. 
seeing her internal force leaking out of her essence, every single one of them had petrified expressions. Some of the guests hid themselves, while even more already fled as soon as they saw the bloody creature. When Yi Mu saw someone in her line of sight, she would approach, trying to request aid. To her dismay, once she went near, they would all involuntarily back away. See Silent Yi Mu reached out to them, wanting to tell them to call the Silent Monk. Where did he go? Why hasn't he appeared yet? Quick! We must stop her. She wants to hurt our master. The monks who heard got over their initial fear and summoned their courage to tightly encircle Yimu. Combining forces, they all brandished their sticks to strike. Just as Yimu raised her head, she saw every single stick aimed towards her combined together, locking down around her neck. I'll let me go. In the dark room, the silent master seemed to have calmed down. He turned towards Xiao Yichin and spoke, Right now, only I am able to control her. You have to let me go. As Zhao Yichin listened to the cries outside, she smiled coldly. You hear the misery outside? She's most likely already murdered many. Didn't we hear the Imperial Guards heading over there? If you went, and you couldn't control her, wouldn't you just be needlessly killed by her? Besides Zhao Yichin met his eyes, I already sent news of Yi Mu's madness to M.O. Linyuan. He's on his way now. If Yi Mu goes crazy and kills him, that would be the happiest occurrence. The silent master closed his eyes, his voice turning extremely frigid. Let me go. I can't watch Tian Shou Temple become destroyed. If you don't agree to it. He raised his hand, if you don't agree to it, they'll kill myself. Even if your people are stronger, they aren't fast enough to stop me from committing suicide. Chapter 257 Karma 2 You, his words caused Zhao Yikin's expression to twist menacingly, you would rather choose death in order to save her? Yes I would. Master Silent looked at her earnestly, I already promised her, even if I die, I will definitely still find a way to control her demons. I won't go back on my word. Zhao Yikin's body shook angrily, don't you don't you have any affections left for me? You would rather die than help me. Hearing this, the Silent Master let out a breath of exasperation. I've already helped you before. He looked at his hands as he laughed bitterly, it began precisely as an ill-considered action. In order to help you and have Mo Linyuan get murdered by Yi Mu, I awakened and advanced her demonization progress but consequently. The result is a crime against Buddha's teachings, not only causing harm to others but also my own consciousness. Zhao Yichin couldn't understand at first, but when she thought of something, her eyes changed. Then that night at Tian Zhou Temple those 500 martial art masters' deaths were. That's right, it was her. He had an aggrieved smile, I intended to utilize her to kill her loved ones, to eliminate Emo Linyuan. It could have paved a pathway for your success yet, who would have imagined, her childish determination was exceptionally resolute. She only killed off the 500 martial arts masters you worked hard to assemble it's no wonder you are so angry. You, Zhao Yichin cried out in anger as she raised her hand accusingly, so it was you. You did that. She never really understood how her well-formed safety entourage was completely exterminated. So it was because of the Silent Master. You want to hit me? The Silent Monk abruptly approached her one step. He wore white Buddhist attires. His eyes were clear and determined as he taunted her, All that I have done, I did for your sake. My dear mother, would you blame me for it? Hearing dear mother, Zhao Yikin's anger was accentuated, but she couldn't allow herself to vent. The slap she held froze in place, never descending. She glared at him resentfully, why were you acting rashly on your own like that? She always assumed that the silent master was a passive person. When she requested anything, he wouldn't go against her. When he was a child, he even cooked vegetarian dishes for her to eat. He was all grown up now. She never thought that he was also thinking about her, but due to a misstep, he accidentally caused harm to her instead. He genuinely wanted to help her, how could she possibly muster the will to strike him? The silent monk smiled grimly, when Imo Linyuan showed up, he was a dazzling light that shined. He is a capable individual that was meant for the role of the emperor. Since his return, any hindrance he faced around him had already been cleaned up with one sweep. How many people are you expecting me to kill for you for your sake? My whole life is not something easy to redeem. 
Thus, I no longer want to exchange my identity for a new status anymore. Hearing this, Zhao Yikin's heart became sour, that's in the past now. Today, I will not let this chance slip. Then, you will only see me die here today. The silent monk's tone was surprisingly firm, I already made a mistake once before, I will not make the same mistake a second time. You are not destined to achieve your goal. If you give up now, you may still be able to live. Shut up. Zhao Yikin's face twisted, if it wasn't for Mo Linyuan, would have already been empress by now. He should just go to hell. As you continue to pursue your dream of domination, this son will be the first to die. The man smiled as he made this unexpected exclamation. His beauty was accentuated with his smile, resembling a beautiful blooming lotus flower. Maybe once I'm dead, I can repent for some of your sins, am I right? Chapter, 258 Initial Signs of Insanity 1 Yi Mu looked up and saw the sticks descending down on her. She wanted to dodge but it was as if her legs were rooted to the ground. Shortly after, the sticks retreated, before eventually trying to ruthlessly strike her again. Yet something bizarre happened. The sticks broke into two pieces before they could even touch Yi Mu. She glanced over at the people who attempted to hit her. With a glare, the opponents immediately retreated in fear, their hands clutching the splintered sticks. No one dared to make eye contact. Yi Mu rigidly tried to stifle her desire to choke the other person's neck. Meanwhile, the rest of them weren't aware of her internal battle. Come on everyone. Don't be afraid of this demon girl. She is very slow. We can attack her together and subdue her. One monk took the lead while the rest followed. Although they thought it was risky to do so, they still followed him and approached Yi Mu. Don't come near me. Yi Mu gritted through her teeth. Her expression was horrendous, but her voice was very quiet. The monks didn't hear her warning, and continued to move closer, tightly gripping their weapons. On one end was Yi Mu, who was about to erupt at any moment. On the other end, was a son who was willing to die. Zhao Yiqin was so angry when she heard what the silent monk said. Truly infuriating. But this was her son, she couldn't actually kill him. You truly want to go out there? Hearing her question, the monk maintained his firm expression, him going, please let me go. Seeing him like this, Zhao Yikin's eyes suddenly turned red. Fine, if you want to leave, you can go. Sad bitterness and fury colored her face, I am truly pitiful, to be thrown away so you can go and help a stranger. I took great lengths to come up with this method to dispose of Yi Mu. As she started visiting you at Tian Shou Temple, do you have any idea how much internal force you've wasted on her? The emperor guarded her so intensely. I've slaughtered hundreds of people to try to get this opportunity. Yet you, my dear son, you are trying to save my enemy from death. You aren't trying to help me, you are killing me. The silent master started walking towards the doorway. As Zhao Yiqin shared her grievance, eventually she bursted into tears in front of those around her, once you leave, if you aren't able to save her, you will be killed. If you save her, once Mo Linyuan comes and sees the state she is in, do you think he will let me go unscathed? Either way you or I will die. Do you even see me as your mother? You didn't act this way when you were a kid. When he was a child, he was quiet and obedient. He didn't know of her identity at that time, but he was always very happy every time he saw her. But ever since then, he changed. He became distant and indifferent. Before when he was willing to mistreat Yimu, his heart still held his mother dearly. However, he was unable to forgive her. Now, as Zhao Yiqin cried tearfully, the silent master was torn. On one hand was his biological mother. On the other hand was his friend. What should he do? No matter what you say, I already made the mistake once, I cannot make the same mistake again. The silent master confirmed his conviction and continued out the doors. Silent master. No Junior, you cannot go. Zhao Yiqin hugged him from behind, your father wouldn't let you treat me this way. Your dear father would never make me cry like this. Junior, your father's death, you couldn't have forgotten what you promised him before he died right? Having brought up his father, the silent monk's pupils sharply tightened. Just as Zhao Yiqin said, his father would have never wanted her to shed a single teardrop he also promised his father that he would take good care of her. Dear father. But Yi Mu. 
He shut his eyes tightly, but he could no longer take another step forward. His persistence and conviction collapsed in a split second. He could no longer recognize himself anymore. Yi Mu I have truly let you down in this lifetime. Please forgive me. Chapter 259 Initial Signs of Insanity 2 Yi Mu couldn't find the silent master, especially while she was surrounded by so many people. Her internal insanity has reached its extreme point. Her eyes were now scarlet red. She saw how those around her were frightened and disgusted. No one was there to help her. Suddenly, thick fishing nets came down on her. Yi Mu tripped and fell on the ground. She could hear the people's urgent voices. Quick, capture her. Hurry and drag her off the edge of the cliff. Exclaimed one of the martial artist monks. Dragged under the fishing net, Yi Mu continuously tried to suppress her murderous instincts but as her body got scratched on the limestone, surrounded by cheers of encouragement and rejoice, she suddenly opened her eyes wide. In a flash, only a snarl could be heard. The fishing net was instantly torn into pieces as Yi Mu's eyes were completely ablaze. With a single hand, she used her internal force to pull someone into the grasp of her palm. She didn't move from where she stood, but the person's body was sucked dry as it nourished Yi Mu's internal energy. Her face held uncontrollable excitement as her whole body trembled in elation. This horrifying scene made everyone scream and try to escape, but it was futile. Her energy was so great that Yi Mu's long hair hovered despite there being no wind around. She let go of the corpse in her hand and reached out towards a man running away from her. In the next second, another death was achieved. The monks ran for a few steps before they thought of the safety of the many Buddhist worshippers they had to protect. Thereupon, the senior Buddhist monk shouted, We cannot flee from here. Get in formation, we must subdue her. The rest of the monks obeyed despite their fear and began to surround Yimu. Yimu's force grew little by little. Right then, her Buddhist murderous intent had only just slightly awoken, but her Buddhist force continued to rise and grow. From head to toe, she gave off an explosive and powerful aura. Her tiny facial expression didn't change in the slightest bit. With black veins spreading to the corner of her eyes, she glimpsed at the people around her, it was as if she was looking at a group of clowns. Get into the border formation. As the head monk finished his command, the other fifteen monks united their stick weapons and charged towards Yimu. They used their inner strength and formed the perimeters of their border formation as they worked together to surround her. As the frightful scene played out, every one of their sticks targeted Yi Mu's vital points, some even hit her on the head. Yi Mu had yet to move, but their weapons all snapped into pieces. In the end Yi Mu's head was dislocated, but she simply cracked and straightened it again. She suddenly had an ominous smile. Not giving them a chance to escape, there was a sudden gust of wind that swirled and surrounded them on the flat ground. Not good, run away. They were just about to turn and escape, but it was already too late. The strange gust of wind became a force that controlled their footsteps. Yi Mu only stretched out one hand to hold all of them in place. Their internal forces were then rapidly absorbed and death was imminent on them. The next targets would most likely be the Imperial Guards who wouldn't dare step forward. Stop! It was at this exact imminent peril moment that Mo Linyuan finally appeared. Before the assassination attempt of the Grand Tutor, he realized that it was suspicious. Evidently, it was indeed the opponent's scheme to lure him away. Fortunately, he arrived just in time, and Yimu still has not killed too many people yet. Chapter 260 Restrained One Yimu's hand stopped the moment she heard Emo Linyuan's voice. Although she had more than a dozen people trapped to the ground and drained of their internal forces, it was evident they were all still alive. Yimu's figure flashed. She was now approaching Mo Linyuan. With inhuman-like speed, the guards, Wen Feng and Zi Su, swiftly stood in front of their sovereign. Careful your majesty. That's enough, everyone step aside. Step by step, Yi Mu walked towards Mo Linyuan until she was only fifty meters away. Wen Feng and Zi Su stubbornly refused to move. The two's killing intent agitated Yi Mu. Her expression became distinctly more irritated. Seeing her body covered in blood and malicious intent, pained Mo Linyuan. It hurt him to see her like this. I already told you two to get out of my way. Mo Linyuan asserted decisively, 
this is an order. Yielding to Mo Linyuan's words, they reluctantly retreated but they continued to vigilantly glare at Yi Mu. Turn around. Their eyes widened in incredulity, before they showed their backs unwillingly. Diverting their focus from her, Yi Mu's expression relaxed significantly. She now stood only three meters away from Mo Linyuan but abruptly, she didn't dare to advance further. Her heart held a fierce beast. She wanted to tear everything and anything that moved, including the person in front of her even if he was extremely important to her. Mo Linyuan's handsome face was tense. He frowned as he said to Yi Mu. Come to my side. Yi Mu remained motionless. He walked towards her, but as soon as he took a step forward, Yi Mu took one step back. He responded by taking a bigger step forward and embracing her with his arms. In the next second, one of his hands was gripped by Yi Mu. Mo Linyuan made a muffled noise. It would seem that she had broken his bones with her tight hold. Don't be afraid, I'm here now. He said calmly, while gently caressing Yi Mu's shoulder with his other hand. In reaction, it appeared Yi Mu's beastly instinct broke out and her shoulder tensed greatly. When Feng and Zi Su were deathly anxious. At a glance, it was evident Miss Yi had shown the early signs of insanity. Moreover, she has already seen blood, how could she continue to suppress her internal demons? What about the silent monk? Didn't he say he could help Miss Yi? Where did he go? Mo Linyuan could feel Yi Mu's relentless struggle against herself. If she exploded, the people who were waiting for him in the mountain would all die. That was why he must have faith in her and give her strength. Little Muir, I trust you won't harm me, isn't that right? His low voice could only be heard by Yi Mu. He was not sure if he felt wrong, but Mo Linyuan noticed that the strength in Yi Mu's tight grasp on his hand relaxed slightly. Mo Linyuan let out a long sigh of relief. Currently, there was no one in the temple, the monks were held down on the ground, and all the imperial guards had withdrawn. There were no stimulations around to provoke her. Little Muir, I know you still have your rationality. Don't worry, I'm here now. Let me take care of the rest. As he said this, he seamlessly took this dangerously explosive person into his embrace. Right then, if Yi Mu hadn't still had her meager hold on her sanity, she would have already stabbed her hand into Mo Linyuan's stomach, her other hand piercing through his chest. Meanwhile, Mo Linyuan knew Yi Mu still had a subconscious mind, as she held his life and well-being in her hands. Nevertheless, his body still remained relaxed, as his tone became every more gentle. Let us head home, how does that sound? As for this place, we will never return here again. His hand continued to stroke her. After a long time, the trembling Yi Mu slowly relaxed even further. I, I can't find the silent monk. Yi Mu's muted voice sounded aggrieved. Even though her horrific expression right then didn't show any signs of grievance, Mo Lin Yen was still distressed by her words. Then don't look for him anymore. Even if you can't find him, you still have me. Chapter 261. Restrained 2. Mo Linyuan's words allowed Yi Mu to finally let her guard down completely. She was truly exhausted. She had blocked her own vital points and tried to restrain herself, but above all, her strong willpower was what played a decisive role in her restraint. In the end, she didn't let herself go on a massacre. Right then, she lost all her strength and let darkness consume her. Seeing that Yi Mu was immobile, Mo Linyuan carefully lifted her head to discover that she had just fainted. He couldn't help but let out the biggest sigh of relief. Within his bosom was a precious baby who resembled fragile porcelain. She required his utmost care. A baby, who was to be cherished and tended to prudently. Holding her securely, Mo Linyuan could no longer hold back his rage. He furiously asked, how could this have happened? Where's that silent master? Find him. No one could give him an answer. When Fong knelt down and replied, this subordinate will definitely find him. Go now. Without looking back, Mo Linyuan softly hugged Yi Mu as he headed down the mountain. He truly couldn't trust the silent monk. He must find someone to replace him. Right then, Zhao Yiqin had gone through great difficulty to coax the silent monk to concede. Zhao Yiqin was confident in her prediction. Sure enough, within the silent master's heart, he still held his mother highly. But unexpectedly during that moment, her trusted aide rushed in. Not good. 
Empress Dowager, that Yi Mu has been taken away by the Emperor. What? Zhao Yikin's expression changed, Yi Mu didn't go on a killing spree. She didn't kill anyone. She killed a few, but she only murdered two monks. She had quite a bit of blood on her, but she restrained herself just up to the moment the Emperor came. It was unclear what exactly the king did, but Yi Mu has calmed down. They have already left. In addition, there are imperial guards searching for the silent master all over the mountain. How is this possible? Zhao Yiqin said in disbelief. She had drugged the girl with such a high dosage of fragrance, how could this Yi Mu how come she didn't explode? Even if she didn't kill the emperor, how come she didn't kill any commoners? If she had killed just enough individuals, Zhao Yiqin would have achieved her goal. At this time, the silent master was sitting down, he suddenly chuckled faintly. You see? His expression held grief and delight, this is Buddha's retribution. The star which is the emperor is protected by destiny. He will not get into trouble, much less the people he values. Bah! How is that Imo Linyuan worthy of being king? He and Wen Zhe are both wicked delinquents. He is not qualified to rule. Zhao Yiqin urgently marched around like an anxious ant. She muttered again and again, not good. All my hard work cannot be ruined like this. She didn't kill anyone. Then let me do it. When the time comes, it will look like she was the murderer. Besides, quite a few people witnessed Yi Mu's insanity today. This could be a good loophole to manipulate. Regardless, she just can't let Imo Linyuan get out of this unscathed. If she came out empty-handed, it would mean the death of her. How can you still be this persistent? The silent monk smiled bitterly, you are not his opponent. Twice already, you have used Yi Mu but we still failed in the end. Do you know what this means? He paused and then exclaimed, this means, Yi Mu is the guardian of the emperor's star. Zhao Yikin's complexion turned completely dark, so what if you're right? She clenched her fists, do you have any idea how much I've sacrificed to get to where I am now? It's impossible for me to just admit defeat. Even in death I will not give up. Chapter, 262 Suppressed by Force 1 The moment Emo Linyuan returned to the palace, he sealed off the gates and ordered the whole city to go into an emergency lockdown. He then had all the doctors rush to the emperor's palace to check on Yi Mu's vitals. Already, Yi Mu was a lot better. Previously, the silent monk had helped clear her obstructions, and so by the time she was suppressed, she was quickly able to regain her rationality. How is she doing? Mo Linyuan's words were sharp and direct. The doctors didn't dare hide the truth. Reporting to your majesty, Miss Yes' reaction this time although she didn't completely lose control we won't be able to suppress her as we did in the past. Before she loses control again, she should be sent out of the imperial city as soon as possible to avoid severe casualties. Silence. Mo Linyuan's eyes flashed with anger, he pointed at another person, you there. Tell me how she's doing. Once Mo Linyuan became angry, everyone around him fell to their knees. The doctor who he pointed to turned ashen white. T this humble servant this humble servant has to agree with my fellow doctor, your highness. Crack. A crisp noise shook the room as Mo Linyuan crushed the armrest of the chair he sat in. He glared at the thirty people kneeling below, sneering, sent her away. Why would I have called all of you here if I wanted to send her away? Already, everyone was trembling, prostrating themselves before the boy, overwhelmed by his intense rage suffocating the room. But, Mo Linyuan's next phrase caused their fearful expressions to morph even further. I won't be sending her away. If you guys cannot find a solution, then next time she loses control, we can all die together. Your Majesty, you can't. Dr. Liu raised his head, this official must remind you, you are the Honorable King of the Imperial Throne. How could you risk yourself like this? Despite knowing how dangerous Yimu was, he still wanted to take care of the ferocious beast isn't that just bringing about his own destruction? Mo Linyuan regarded him frigidly. His tall dragon crown reflected in the cold light. His pair of icy phoenix eyes glared at the doctor. If one is able to live, one is also able to die. Since you do not understand my way of thinking, there is no need to use your ridiculous ideologies in order to refute me. He stood up, today, no one is allowed to leave until you come up with a solution. 
Moreover, those who try to propose that we send her away will be executed. Mo Linyuan's powerful words resonated loudly, causing everyone to shiver fearfully. As he began to exit, his dragon robe shifted. He still held a murderous aura as he clearly wanted to take revenge on someone. Summon Wen Zhe to come and see me. Once Mo Linyuan said this, he left for the royal study room. Quickly, Wen Zhe arrived. My king, for having summoned me in such a haste it couldn't be because of what happened in Tian Shou Temple, right? In the end, he was still the prime minister. He had many eyes and ears. Even though the news still hadn't completely spread, he had already heard reports of Yi Mu's losing control at Tian Shou Temple. Immediately, Mo Linyuan's mood calmed down quite a bit. He simply asked, the person you were looking for before, expedite the process of finding him. Wen Zhe held a dignified expression, shouldn't we settle the situation at Tian Shou Temple first? It was stated that many Buddhist worshippers witnessed Yi Mu's killing spree if you don't take care of it now, I'm afraid. Before I take care of that, I must kill one particular person first. Who? The silent monk. Mo Linyuan stood on his feet. He didn't mention Zhao Yiqin because she will also undoubtedly die. However, as for the silent master, Little Muir trusted him so much yet he betrayed her trust. When Zhe looked into Mo Linyuan's eyes he knew with certainty there was no room for discussion on the matter. This minister will use all his connections to find him. I will definitely report to your majesty as soon as possible. Hurry up and go. As you command. Once Wen Zhe was far away, Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes thoughtfully he then ordered someone to go and suppress the situation that occurred at Tian Shou Temple. In any case, he couldn't let Yi Mu's bad deeds be spread outside. Chapter, 263 Suppressed by Force 2 Just like that, five days passed. Yi Mu finally woke up. At this point, the black veins that previously webbed all over her body had faded, although she was still taller than before. Once she awoke, she discovered she was completely surrounded by imperial physicians, all of which had deeply concerned expressions. She hesitantly commented, realizing what had happened. So that's how it is Yi Mu stated looks like Mo Linyuan will no longer send her to Tian Shou Temple. That's to say, the next time she explodes, without the silent monk, wouldn't the whole palace be in extreme danger? Realizing this, she felt that she could no longer stay at the emperor's palace anymore. She might as well leave the palace. Mo Linyuan rushed over as soon as he heard Yi Mu awakening. Before Yi Mu could say anything, he used his finger to seal her lips. I know what you are going to say. Having not seen him for a few days, Mo Linyuan looked a lot thinner. His eyes also seemed colder and stricter than before. I won't agree to your request. You are not going anywhere. Yi Mu pouted her lips, then, what are you going to do? Mo Linyuan replied, I already contacted the Yu country. There is a famous master there who is already on his way here though he may not be as good as the silent master. Regardless, you cannot leave I will not let anything happen to you. I also will not let you do any irreparable damage. Yi Mu's eyes darkened, and how's Tian Shou Temple doing? Humph. When Mo Linyuan heard her bring this up, his complexion instantly became even more unsightly. Zhao Yiqin fled with the silent monk. As of today, the temple has been abandoned. But it's not a big deal. They have harmed you, so I will make sure to avenge you and pay them back twofold. Yi Mu felt aggrieved, I didn't think the silent monk would lie to me. After all, she had always believed in him evidently, she was well aware of his relationship with the Empress Dowager, yet she was still willing to put her life in his hands. Mo Linyuan clasped her hands, trying to comfort her. Wait until I find the silent master, then I will let you interrogate him personally. Then how do you plan on dealing with them? Yi Mu couldn't help but ask. Mo Linyuan is the type of person who usually didn't personally get involved with matters but when he did get involved, it would catch those off guard by surprise. She, nevertheless, still wanted to keep the silent master alive. Mo Linyuan pursed his lips, that, you don't have to worry about. He forced Yi Mu to lie down. You need to rest up. Once you wake up again, we will talk more thoroughly about it. Yi Mu nodded. The moment she closed her eyes, she fell back asleep. She had some serious internal injuries and needed to rest and recover. 
Mo Linyuan observed her sleeping face, distress clouding his eyes. On the other hand, Zhao Yiqin was currently in the capital's imperial household. She didn't dare to return to the imperial palace for the time being, not knowing what the emperor would do to get rid of her, especially with Yi Mu there. Knowing that tens of thousands of people who ran into her during her madness didn't survive, the Empress Dowager does not have anyone at her side that is able to obstruct her. Right then, she was informed that the silent master was refusing to eat. She personally brought servants with her to enter his chamber. What's this? You're going on a hunger strike? Zhao Yiqin asked in annoyance. She had been troubled recently. She was already having a difficult time. Now, even her son would not spare her from more trouble. She truly had bad luck these past few days. The silent master was sitting on the couch. His eyes were closed. The Buddha beads in his hands flowed while his lips were moving softly reciting Buddhist scriptures. He ignored her, as if Zhao Yiqin wasn't there. Yuner. I'm talking to you right now. Are you even listening to me? The silent monk still did not respond to Zhao Yiqin, making her even more furious. Chapter 264 Openly plotting one. She yanked the Buddha beads from his hand. The only sound that could be heard was the scattering beads falling on the ground. The silent master opened his eyes to look at her. I don't eat meat or fish. Even if you don't want to eat, you must eat. Zhao Yikin's pair of stone-cold eyes practically shot flames. She commanded the servants to put the reheated food on the table and screamed at him. Did you remember what you said when you were a kid? You said you didn't want to be a monk. Right now, I am giving you the opportunity to stop being a monk. Now eat. The silent master heard what she said, but he stared stubbornly at her, his eyes brimming with anger and defiance. Finally he sneered. But then, who was it that said, if I didn't become a monk, I would easily blow her cover? Who was it that said, with my identity, I could only stay alive if I lived in the Buddhist monastery? Why after I have already developed the habit why, after I have already become a monk, that you want to neglect my Buddhist upbringing? Zhao Yiqin never expected the silent master to give such an unexpected retort. Furthermore, to snap back in such a way that she looked like a scoundrel. She turned to the servants beside her and shouted, All of you leave. Yes ma'am. Her devoted servants retreated one by one. Zhao Yiqin let out a long sigh as her expression withered. Junior, you can't blame me for what I did she said helplessly, your face looks exactly like when Ji, your father, from the temple. No one would dare say anything about it there. But if you were raised on the outside, those beside me could easily recognize the similarity you have to me. As a result, I had no choice but to hide you in the shrine. When Ji told others that he was the silent monk's master but the truth was, when Ji was the silent master's father. The silent master closed his eyes, pausing. Please leave I promised my master before his death that, in this life, I will not get involved with the secular world, regardless of the circumstances. Zhao Yiqin never expected that even before when Ji died, for her sake, he would still have forced the silent monk to make these types of oaths. Her expression became rigid once again. He what else did he say? Back then, as when Ji was dying, Zhao Yiqin did not go to see him. So she did not know and for all these years, she never asked. He chuckled coldly, what does it matter what he said? You are the high and mighty Empress Dowager he was the virtuous and prestigious Buddhist monk you two were fated to never be involved with one another. Junior. Don't call me by that name. The silent master closed his eyes, his voice frigid, in this world, only the child who wept in silence existence was born men when June doesn't exist. The moment Silent Master vowed to sever his relationship with her, Zhao Yiqin felt a stabbing pain in her heart. Her feelings for the monk, Wen Ji, was not as heartless as the Silent Master may think. I'm in leaving you to reflect on your own. Just as Zhao Yiqin was about to leave in disdain, she stated, in a moment I'm going to tell someone to deliver a few vegetable dishes over. Stop being stubborn and eat something. The monk remained silent, and Zhao Yiqin did not yield either. The moment she exited the door, her spirit regained its previous majestic presence. Yet, her eyelids drooped with dull shadows underneath, the toll of her mental stress apparent. She will not be overthrown. She cannot lose. She had sacrificed too much to get to this point. If she lost, 
she would be seen as a laughing stock. Right then, one of her subordinates arrived and greeted her. Zhao Yiqin raised her eyebrow in surprise before she left with him. Before Mo Linyuan came along, she had monopolized the imperial court affairs for many years. Of course, she would have her own supporters. The person who just came to find her was one of her most useful subordinates. What could have brought official Zhang to come visit? The minister of war, Zhang Wei, chuckled, I heard the empress dowager was in a bad mood. This official came to accompany her and improve her mood. Chapter 265 Openly Plotting to Zhao Yiqin snorted. Wearing a gown with nine phoenix on it, she had a dominating presence. If you know that I am in a bad mood, then stop messing around. If you don't have anything important to say, then I am going to leave. Empress Dowager really likes to cut to the chase. Then this official will not leave you in suspense any longer. Zhang Wei continued, many have heard of the news of how Yi Mu has harmed people at Tian Shou Temple. This official has thought of a plan and wanted to share it with the Empress Dowager. Tell me. The chubby man had a glint in his eye as he spoke smugly, because Yi Mu didn't cause enough deaths, it wouldn't set off a big enough storm. Since that is so, we could try to find someone to impersonate Yi Mu, such that it looks like she murdered numerous commoners. Then let it be well known that the emperor is raising a monster. Zhao Yikin's eyebrows raised lightly. Zhang Wei truly deserved to be called her trusted aide, to have come up with this idea. She nodded her head, this show is definitely worth seeing. I am just uncertain on what stage this should take place. What about the main street of Dong Qi? Zhao Yichin approved, that's perfect. Today's weather isn't bad. I wouldn't mind taking a walk with you. Zhang Wei nodded his head repeatedly before he went out the door with Zhao Yichin. Before arriving at their destination, the sound of chaos could be heard in the main street of Dong Qi. A small girl in white clothes and disheveled hair was openingly killing people in the crowd. Zhao Yichin couldn't help but smirk. Now, as long as someone pretended to recognize the girl as Yi Mu they could push all the blame onto Yi Mu. However right then, as she watched the girl point a knife towards a man the man turned his head and his appearance made Zhao Yikin's pupils shrink. Stop her. As soon as she gave the order, the martial arts master standing behind her immediately intercepted. The imposter girl was not strong at all and was easily defeated with a single forceful palm of Zhao Yikin's subordinate. It startled Zhang Wei as his eyes widened in disbelief. Madam Zhao. What is the meaning of this? Was it really hard for him to find a girl who was good at martial arts? Zhao Yiqin grumbled. She was originally here to witness this show, yet, she has spoiled their plan. Zhao Yiqin also didn't think that little girl would be so weak. Even if they wanted to shift the blame on Yimu how could they possibly shift the blame on a dead corpse, of a girl that is still alive? She was furious to the point of speechlessness. She simply said she thought she personally knew the man being attacked before. Jean Weiss' face showed his immense anger. He spent a lot of time organizing this. Yet it was completely ruined because Zhao Yiqin claimed she thought she knew the man. What does she even mean by knowing him? Of course, Jean Wei already knew of Zhao Yikin's unique taste in men with neat and clean appearances. He laughed hauntingly, really. Then this official wouldn't want to disturb Madame Zhao any longer. With his words, he turned and left abruptly. To one surprise, he was no longer willing to help Zhao Yiqin out. Zhao Yiqin had a headache. She did not expect to accidentally offend another court official. It would seem that she would have to find another day to quell his anger. Since Zhang Wei was angry at this moment, she was afraid he would not listen to her. The man that was saved promptly bowed to the martial arts master and greeted Zhao Yiqin. Thank you so much madam, for helping me. His neutral expression his respectful manner the way in which he bowed and greeted her was also unexpectedly 1010 very similar to Wen Ji. Zhao Yiqin was taken aback. She then summoned someone to take this man back with her. She had to know if this person's appearance was truly a lucky coincidence, or if it was some scheme plotted by the emperor. Chapter 266 Scared One As the days passed, the news of Yi Mu's killing spree didn't spread. Despite Zhao Yikin's several attempts to make trouble, nothing resulted from it. On the contrary, they were all suppressed without much effort. What's more, Zhang Wei was quiet. 
even when she asked the servants to help out, no one was willing to. It was to the extent that the news of Yi Mu's killing spree never even made it back to Mo Linyuan's circle of information. This made Zhao Yiqin gloomy for several days, but she was not willing to give up. Just you wait, the moment Yi Mu loses control again, she will not come out unscathed. That day, Zhao Yiqin stopped by the winery. The owner was the man Zhao Yiqin rescued last time. His name was Yuda. Yuda lived here for more than ten years now. Upon assessment, there wasn't anything suspicious about his identity. Zhao Yiqin immediately released the person without much thought. Notably, Yu De's wife passed away early on. He didn't have a son to pass on his family name to. Zhao Yiqin has left a good impression on him after all, he didn't know her age and thought she was only 30 years old. Since she had rescued him before, every time Zhao Yiqin came by, he would bring out the best wine to serve her. Today, he did the same. Zhao Yiqin assessed the face in front of her, which looked extremely similar to the Buddhist monk Wen Ji. After a few glasses of wine, all her doubts about him gradually dissipated. Sir Yushi suddenly reached out to capture Yu De's hand which was pouring her wine. Her eyes held a sultry look. You don't always need to serve me. Come sit down. Let's drink together. Once Yu De saw how there was no one else in the winery, he sat down. His shop wasn't the biggest, but his wine was expensive. Although his wine was of good quality, not a lot of people came by. Sir Yu, your wine is so divine. Have you ever thought of selling wine in the palace? A look of fear and trepidation appeared on Yudes' handsome face, no, never. Just making enough to get by is good enough for me. Seeing how timid and honest he was, Zhao Yiqin laughed bitterly. The more she looked at him, the more she felt he looked like Wen Ji. Back when Wen Ji was still alive, he would always put her first, and tolerated her in all respects. Once he passed away, there was no one in this world who would treat her as well as when Ji had. Especially with her current frustration, she would reminisce when J.I.S. pampering treatment even more. If only if only at that time. She chuckled bitterly, best not to think about it. Accepting her reality, she instantly became more rational and clear-headed. She was aware that she could not control her movements at the moment. Under the influence of alcohol and the man's guided initiative, she followed him into a room. Evidently, Zhao Yiqin drank only a little bit, so she instantly started to resist. However, because she was not in the right mind, she ended up completely replacing Yuda as Wen Ji and started to weep as she clung onto him. Chapter 267 Scared too. On the other side, Zhao Yiqin truly didn't recognize the danger surrounding her. It was not until she saw someone appear from the other side of the screen door. Esteemed grandmother, did you have a good time? When Mo Linyuan appeared, Zhao Yiqin was absolutely naked. She truly never thought that, since the beginning, her misdemeanor was being watched by others. You. You're working with them. Zhao Yiqin glared at Yuda. But he was already dressed as he hid behind Mo Linyuan. Afterwards quite a few people entered after Mo Linyuan. Zhao Yiqin was frightened to the point she screamed for someone to rescue her. However, after she shouted a few times to no avail her expression changed. Mo Linyuan approached her with a smirk. At once, as if he didn't find the woman before him attractive, he'd scared his tongue in disappointment. The emperor's grandmother is truly something. Here I was thinking you currently couldn't eat or sleep from fear of the current situation. Yet, you were actually in the mood to seek the companion of a man. Zhao Yiqin didn't have a single article of clothing to conceal her body, while she was restrained by two men. It was truly humiliating. M. O. Lin Yuan. You think you can slander me like this? Nothing even happened between me and that man. Nothing happened between you two at all. M. O. Lin Yuan waved his hand to signal someone to bring him a small incense. M. O. Lin Yuan took it, before approaching Zhao Yiqin with it. Soon, what should or shouldn't happen will happen naturally. The moment Zhao Yiqin smelt the incense, she instantly felt something was amiss. Her heart trembled as she sensed all she had worked for could be ruined here, right now. People came and went outside if she was to do something irrational the consequences. Why you won't prevail? Even at this moment, Zhao Yiqin refused to give in, so what if others discovered that I was together with this person? They can also tell immediately that I was poisoned. 
What's more, you will be known as dishonest and unfilial for taking unfair advantage of your elders. I am still your grandfather's wife. Aren't you afraid of suffering the wrath of heaven's retribution for this? M.O. Linuan stepped forward. The green smoke floating around made his handsome face slightly malicious. Wasn't it you who allowed people to spread rumors that I am not of royal blood? Then regardless of how I decide to treat you, it wouldn't be considered as mistreating my elders, isn't that right? Zhao Yiqin panicked and started to struggle endlessly. Are you seriously not concerned about the royal family's prestige? You're not afraid of becoming a laughing stock. M.O. Linyuan's expression remained calm, are you implying I will become a laughing stock because of you? I think you are misunderstanding something. You will make the imperial family lose prestige not because of what you will do with Yuda but rather, what you will do with the silent monk. You. Zhao Yikin's eyes became big and round with disbelief, she was utterly speechless. What's wrong? Mo Linyuan's eyes glinted wickedly, you don't like what I have arranged for you. The Honorable Empress Dowager with the well-known Buddhist monk this way, even the previous rumor you spread about me would be suppressed under this bigger scandal, no? You dare. Mo Linyuan, you will not get away with this. Zhao Yiqin was emotionally provoked. She struggled with all her might. The way she looked at Mo Linyuan, it was as if he was her worst enemy who was her father's killer. Literally someone's enemy who killed his her father. Can be assumed as the worstest of the worst of enemies. Chapter, 268 The dust has settled one. You don't seem the slightest bit happy. Are you still flustered, or are you scared? M.O. Linyuan narrowed his eyes thoughtfully, it looks like the silent master isn't part of your private circle of boy toys then, who could he be? For you to care so much about him, he must be someone of great significance, am I right? Right then, Zhao Yiqin showed true signs of fear as she realized would Mo Linyuan actually try to hurt her by making her do something with the silent master. She would rather take her own life than truly doing something unforgivable under the influence of an aphrodisiac. At that time, when Foam brought in the silent master. Once she saw the silent master, Zhao Yiqin promptly tried to cover herself up. She didn't want her own son to see her this way. Her restlessness made Mo Linyuan even more suspicious. An unexpected light bulb lit up right then. Mo Linyuan observed the two of them for a while, before he suddenly started to snicker lightly. I've heard early on that Master Wen Ji had adopted a child that looked a lot like him and even specially trained him as a disciple. Mo Linyuan saw Zhao Yikin's body shake and confirmed his suspicions. He couldn't help but sneer. So this child called the silent monk, wasn't his adopted son but rather his biological son? Silence. That's not true. You bastard, you will die a miserable death. Right then, Zhao Yiqin realized she was crying unexpected tears. She wanted to reach out and tear apart Imo Linyuan's face, but found that her body was held immobile. It would seem like you truly won't give in and admit it. Mo Linyuan placed the incense previously carried by his hand on the table in front of her. Then let me see what you will do if the silent master and you don't have that type of relationship, that shouldn't be a problem. After all, his face and appearance is just the type you like. No. No Zhao Yiqin wanted to get far away from the burning incense. Nothing can happen between her and the silent master, no matter what. Right at that moment, the silent monk finally spoke up, stop this already. He walked up to Zhao Yiqin. She cowered, ashamed to death by her appearance. In the next second, a cloth of the Buddhist monk's outer vest draped over her, carrying the scent of sandalwood. The silent master then turned around to make eye contact with Mo Linyuan. I confess, I am Wen Jia's biological son. Your Majesty, you don't need to humiliate her anymore. Mo Linyuan regarded him with a dark expression. The dozen people in the room also regarded the silent monk coldly in silence, as if they hadn't heard him. As for Yi Mu, the silent monk chuckled lightly, Yi Mu's current chaotic state was also my doing. It was I, who deliberately awakened the evil tendencies within her body. Juner. Zhao Yiqin urgently tried to think of a way to stop him. However the silent monk simply felt immense relief after finally confessing. All of this was my doing. That day, during Yi Mu's massacre, when she killed the 500 skilled martial artists I originally wanted her to kill you. Thump. 
The muffled sound was M.O. Linyuan's punch violently striking the silent monk, knocking him down to the ground. His face swelled up instantly. A sliver of blood trailed down the corner of his mouth. He continued to gaze at M.O. Linyuan, whose eyes were brimming with fierce anger. To everyone's surprise, the monk still held a smile. Last time as well, as I was in hiding I deliberately made Yi Mu lose control at Tian Shou Temple to try to get her to kill again. All of this was my plan. You bastard. M.O. Linyuan forced the monk up from the ground. She naively trusted you. Do you have any idea how much guilt she's been suffering in these past few years over this matter? She even snapped her own meridian channels. Do you know how painful that is? M.O. Linyuan, let him go. Zhao Yichin shouted angrily, your opponent is me. He only made those moves against Yi Mu for my sake. Why don't you direct your anger at me? You two thought you would get away with this. M.O. Linyuan glared at the two of them frigidly. He suddenly smiled maliciously. He casted the monk aside. He sneered, I suddenly feel that the original plan wasn't a bad idea at all. If something really happened between the two of you, I wonder what the dead when J.I.S. expression would look like. Amitba, may Buddha be merciful the silent master struggled to stand up. There's no need for you to expend so much effort my own sins I am willing to repay with my death. After speaking, he abruptly extended his palm ruthlessly towards his own head with the intent to commit suicide. Chapter, 269 The dust has settled too. No. Zhao Yichin shrieked. But immediately, Mo Linyuan, who was closest to him, grabbed his palm, stopping him from progressing further. Did I permit you to die? The silent monk wanted to resist, but realized that Mo Linyuan had a deathly tight grip on his wrist. He never thought that the emperor held such profound internal strength. Seeing how the silent master was saved by the emperor, Zhao Yichin eventually broke down and burst into tears. I surrender. I admit defeat please, show him mercy he truly hasn't done anything wrong sniffles, woo woo, I am willing to concede. She trembled and groveled as she continuously begged on her knees. After hearing Zhao Yikin's anguished wails desperately begging for mercy, even Mo Linyuan was moved. I'm willing to hand over my title as the Empress Dowager. Henceforth, I'm willing to withdraw from the imperial court, dedicate myself to Buddha or even commit suicide. All I ask is to be granted one sole request. For a long time, M.O. Linyuan looked down on her condescendingly, before he replied. Oh. Tell me. The two men behind Zhao Yichin finally let go of her arms. She could finally cover her body with the Buddhist outer vest drape and wipe away some of her tears. If your majesty wants to dispose of me, make use of it to get rid of the filthy officials in court by charging them with criminal accusations. You must not let others know about the silent master's existence. He is truly innocent. Please let him retain his innocence. This is my last request. I beg of you. M.O. Linyuan pursed his lips. Right then, he suddenly recalled what Yi Mu had said to him a few years ago. At that time he had jokingly asked her, what would be the cause of Zhao Yikin's downfall? Yi Mu had replied, her downfall will be because she committed adultery with another person that Mo Linyuan would capture him that Zhao Yichin would willingly surrender in order to save that person. Was it a coincidence that the current situation was nearly identical to what she had said back then? I beg you. Zhao Yikin's sudden loud kowtow pulled Mo Linyuan out of his train of thoughts. This was the first time she lowered her noble head. She no longer dreamed of becoming the empress that she spent all her years of great effort trying to achieve. By bowing her head, she had completely conceded. In the end, M.O. Linyuan agreed to Zhao Yikin's request. On the way back to the palace, Missouri Linyuan said to Wen Feng, keep an eye on the silent monk. Do not let him commit suicide. Nevertheless, before the great master traveling from the Yu country arrived to help Yimu, M.O. Linyuan had already devised a backup plan to keep the silent monk he would not let Yimu get into the slightest bit of danger. Meanwhile, Yimu had been uneasy the entire morning. Upon seeing M.O. Linyuan return with the deathly pale Empress Dowager and silent monk, she realized her premonition had finally come true. This time for sure, has Zhao Yichin truly been defeated? She watched them as they were being detained. Before departing, the silent monk glanced over at Yimu with a meaningful expression that held a hint of guilt. 
Yi Mu's heart twisted. She then went over to Mo Linyuan who then explained the truth he discovered. What you're saying is that the silent master turned out to be Zhao Yaikin's son. I truly didn't expect that at all Yi Mu said, seemingly somewhat surprised and speechless. At that moment, Mo Linyuan abruptly said, Do you still remember what you had told me a few years ago? Yi Mu stared at him. Mo Linyuan had an extremely profound expression, Zhao Yaikin's ending actually occurred exactly as you said. Chapter 270 Ironclad Chains 1 Yi Mu's eyes widen, what about it? She originally already knew about Zhao Yaikin's ending. There may be some slight differences from the original historical novel, but the difference wasn't significant. Seeing how Yi Mu's surprised expression contrasted with her effortless, what about it? Made Mo Linyuan wrinkle his eyebrows tightly. He suddenly reached out with one hand to lift Yi Mu's chin up to intently scrutinize her. So then you can predict the future. Yi Mu wanted to tell him everything but for some reason, seeing his grave expression right then, she felt some things she shouldn't say that she cannot say. Mo Linyuan saw how quiet Yi Mu had become. With furrowed brows, he asked her again, Who exactly are you? He remembered, since the beginning, Yi Mu had no reason to help him. She seemed to hold firmly to her own beliefs, regardless of what he did. She always pursued justice with no second thoughts and gave support to others wholeheartedly. Why is that? For what reason was she doing that for? Back then Mo Linyuan had never thought of this question before. But now, the answer to this question already began to taunt his consciousness. He felt somewhat doubtful. Yi Mu regarded Mo Linyuan and said gravely, I have already said before, I am someone sent by the gods to help you. Although this may not be exactly true, it is close enough to the truth. However, she didn't say the second half of the sentence. Which was, once she obtained the city boundary map, she would return to her home. That was to say, there was a time limit to her aid. Mo Linyuan didn't believe in destiny. But this was Yi Mu's second time saying these words, which swayed his own beliefs. Help me. Then tell me something how long will you be helping me? In other words, someday you could disappear just like how you appeared before me. Just the thought of this possibility Mo Linyuan's eyes held discontent as the arms around Yi Mu tightened. Yi Mu saw how he had a horrible expression. I she was just about to reveal the truth, but she only said one word before her heart abruptly trembled. Witnessing Yi Mu's reaction as she covered her chest, Mo Linyuan started to panic, what's wrong? Muir. Muir. Yi Mu's expression became unsightly. Her murderous spirit started to rise. The moment she opened her eyes again, her pupils turned a horrendous red. Call the silent master and bring him here. Said Yi Mu. She violently pushed Mo Linyuan aside. She noted the time frame and predicted her outbreak is not far away. But the murderous spirit came so quickly and violently Yi Mu felt that this time, she may not be able to maintain her rationality. Mo Linyuan protested, no way. That silent monk works for Zhao Yiqin. Who knows what he will do to you if we asked him for help. He wanted to say more but, the moment he saw Yi Mu's expression, all his words were clogged in his throat. Because Yi Mu was crying. She was suffering. She felt that she could lose her mind at any moment. Although Mo Linyuan didn't trust the silent master she was desperate to the point of tears. She didn't say a single word, but Mo Linyuan suddenly felt a twist in his heart. He clenched his eyes closed, then rushed to command the servants. Quickly, bring the silent master here to see me. The silent monk, having been summoned abruptly, knew what could have happened. Mo Linyuan seized him the moment he entered the secret chamber of the palace. I'm warning you, if you behave obediently, I will let you and your mother live. If you dare try anything, you can watch your mother die a lingering painful death. Do not test me on this. The silent monk's pupil shrank. If it hadn't been an emergency, the emperor wouldn't be so panic-stricken and threaten him like this. The monk remained calm as he replied, this time, I will save her. You better. However, only under the condition that no one else is allowed to enter. Otherwise, I won't save her. Chapter 271 Ironclad Chains 2 The silent master's words made Mo Linyuan's murderous spirit grow even more. Yet, when he glanced down and saw the bloodstain on his dragon robe, his eyes dimmed slightly. 
It was Yi Mu's blood. In order to not hurt him she. Fine. But you must swear you will keep her safe and sound. Right then, Mo Linyuan's voice trembled faintly. The silent monk was taken aback that Mo Linyuan held such deep feelings for Yi Mu. I, the silent master, swear upon the heavens above. You have my word. Hearing his oath, Mo Linyuan locked eyes with him, before letting out a long breath of relief. I will believe in you one last time. Ultimately, Mo Linyuan finally released the monk from his grip. The silent monk walked into the room. The moment he closed the door with his hand, he was instantly overwhelmed by the thick fishy smell of blood. Yi Mu. Right then Yi Mu looked like a malicious ghost that people talked about in folklore. Her hands were shackled. The heavy ironclad chains wrapped around her feet, with the other end attached to the dragon pillars that supported the palace. These chains were actually prepped ahead of time by Yi Mu herself. Because she was afraid that she would lose control, she prepared this to lock herself up. This time indeed she had lost all rationality. The silent master could see clearly that a crack has appeared on the ironclad chains. Since he had entered the cell here, Yi Mu had not struggled one bit. Yet with just a little bit more resistance, she would most likely break free of the chains. That was why when she saw the silent monk come into the cell, she remained motionless. In the darkroom, he regarded her like a dead corpse. He closed his eyes due to his inability to keep looking at her. The funny thing was, the previous two times, they were waiting to see her lose all rationality, such that she would go on a killing spree yet in the end, when she finally turned into a monster with no rationality, the silent monk realized that he couldn't bear to see her like this. Besides Yimu, who else in this world would be the first one to notice when he was unhappy? Besides Yimu, who else in the Tianzhou temple could make him laugh so loudly? All these years, he truthfully only hoped that she would keep living her days, sharing her endless jokes and endless happiness with him. In recent years, as she visited him monthly, he kept those stolen moments to himself. He approached one step crash. Within seconds he heard the noise of the chain straightening. Yi Mu tried to grasp him with her hands, but she couldn't reach him. The silent master scrutinized Yi Mu with her insanity filled eyes, his heart twisted. The chained hands once again opened as Yi Mu struggled to try and grasp a hold of the silent monk's neck. In the end, it was just outside her reach. She snarled viciously. The whole chamber rumbled with her sharp voice. The silent master approached her once again. In the end, he closed his eyes and started to recite Buddha scriptures to her. What he recited wasn't anything profound, it was a simple paragraph anyone would read in the temple. Evidently, he read it with a hoarse voice that held deep regret and distress. O, oh, Honorary Buddha! Who traveled a long time to deliver great wisdom and meet the five aggregates. Passing each and every day in vain, bitterness, suffering hardship. The moment Yi Mu heard his voice, she became even more irritable. Her eyes truly already lost all traces of reason. The iron chain rattled. If she broke free, the silent master would undoubtedly face death. But the silent monk remained fearless. He continued to read the scriptures with his eyes closed, concentrating intently. Even if he didn't have his Buddha beads in his hands right then even if he wore a prisoner's outfit then he didn't lose one bit of his purity and holiness. Chapter 272 Purification Arts 1 To accept knowledge and return to ashes after By all of Buddha's teaching Reject birth, reject immorality, reject disgrace, reject all earthly desires. He didn't recite very quickly, but every word was still impactful. Each and every one resounded and reverberated in the room profoundly. There wasn't any light in the chamber. Yet right then, there seemed to be a brilliance shining out of it. Slowly, Yi Mu seemed to have calmed down a little. Even though she still had a sinister face, her previously outstretched hands have dropped down and withdrawn. At that time, the silent master took another step closer. Now he stood within Yi Mu's reach. Yi only needed to shift one finger and he would have faced inevitable death. There was clearly a terrible beast in front of him. Moreover a horrifying beast that cannot be restrained once she gets out of control. But the silent monk gazed at her with exceptional tenderness. That's because he could see, within Yi Mu's fierce eyes, a sober calmness hidden beneath it. As Yi Mu's breath became more and more tranquil, he continued to chant with the warmest of voice. 
to reject all worldly connections. No eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body. No colors, sound, smell, touch. Not even accidentally. Of course right as he recited these lines, Yi Mu suddenly embraced him. Before the silent master could react, she ruthlessly bit him on his shoulder. This one bite she bit down fiercely. The monk stifled his groan and remained motionless. It would seem that since Yimu wasn't tall enough, her bite couldn't reach its target which was his neck. If it had been the neck, the silent monk would have died. Yimu's mouth made a distressed noise as her pair of hands continued to surround the monk tightly. It was obvious that a piece of flesh was bitten off. Yet nevertheless the silent master lifted his hand to caress her fondly. His lips that paused for a moment now continued to recite scriptures. The heart need not worry. There is no reason to worry. There's no need to exist in the frightful existence of confusion and craziness. As we dream to all finally achieve nirvana. Because Yimu tightened her hold on him, the monk once again tried to hold back his groan. In the next second, he pressed his hand on top of Yimu's head and a type of pure internal energy started to pour into Yimu's body. She almost immediately released the monk. After a short time period, her face that was covered in blood looked up with a blank expression to stare at the silent master. Apart from her pair of extremely horrifying red pupils, her facial expression was completely relaxed and at peace. Simultaneously, the silent master was providing internal force while he recited scriptures. But this time, Yimu did not bite him. Moreover, his scriptures sounded lively with an uplifting expression. This time the internal force he gave Yimu felt different from the other times in the past. His face suddenly showed unswerving determination as he provided inexhaustive internal force into Yi Mu. His complexion started to turn white. For what felt like a long time, or maybe just a few seconds, a little girl's voice interrupted the silent monk's meditation. That's enough unknowingly, Yi Mu already regained her consciousness, that's enough, you don't need to give me any more internal force. I'm clear-headed now. However, the silent master did not stop. Stop already. Yi Mu was concerned. She wanted to push him away, but her hands were immobile and locked in chains. As for the silent monk, he held on to her tightly. Since she couldn't use her internal energy, she was no match for his strength. Don't move. His voice held repressed pain as it resounded on top of her head. Yi Mu became anxious. What are you doing? Stop this already. The silent master didn't respond. He simply held on to her even tighter. I must make up for the wrongdoings I've done in the past. This is what I owe you. Let me repay you with my life. Chapter, 273 Purification Arts 2 You Yi Mu only said one word before the monk reached out with his hand to seal her eight critical acupuncture points. Instantly she became immobile. The silent master then went behind her. His hand guided her to sit cross-legged. He then proceeded to sit down and pass internal force from behind into her back. He had trained in the arts of purification, which now combined with Yi Mu's devil arts. When these two extremes intertwined, between his pure arts and Yi Mu's devil arts, it was just barely enough to balance each other out. Therefore, he had to pay for this exchange with his own vitality. Meanwhile, Yi Mu was unable to see behind her, but the silent monk's handsome face grew older. Even his eyebrows started to turn gray. He never cared about his appearance, but it was clear that he was unsightly. He didn't want her to see him like this. Yi Mu was truly anxious. She wanted to stop him but was unable to. Especially when she discovered that he was using the purification arts on her. She panicked to the point of screaming. Silent Master, do you no longer want to live? She had hundreds of years of internal forces. Could she actually be completely purified by the monk? He most likely will run out of power by then. Evidently she still cannot move. The voice of the silent monk then came up behind her. You should heed your majesty's words, you only became like this today because of what I did to you with my own hands. No, you didn't do it. Yi Mu quickly replied, this martial arts form I have was already rooted in evil. Even before you did anything, I may have also changed into this state regardless. Hearing Yi Mu say how she didn't blame him made him chuckle. Even though his face has started sagging, his smile was still brilliantly beautiful right then. 
Maybe not but I am happy to die for you. Silent Master. Yi Mu, did you know that you are my only friend that I have recognized in this life? I felt bad for what I did to you, it ate me up inside. Every day, I condemned myself in my own heart. Yi Mu also wanted to turn around and stop him, but it was already too late. The devil's martial arts has awoken within her and has started to absorb the silent monk's internal force. Just like how she killed the other people before, it drew out his core. Now, the monk was slowly being killed by her murderous aura little by little. Yi Mu turned ashen pale because once the devil's magic started, she couldn't stop herself anymore. Silent master, why why are you doing this? Yi Mu closed her eyes intently, I have never blamed you. You truly don't have to do this at all. She had hoped that he would live rather than die like this. She never once wished death upon him. Even when Mo Linyuan said that the silent master wronged her, she nevertheless still felt the same within her heart. Because in her heart, the monk was someone who helped her when she was going through difficult times. He was the one who would read her scriptures when she couldn't sleep. Even when she snuck out of the mountains to pick fights with other people, he was always there by her side then too. Regardless of what he had done, she would never wish death upon him. Tears kept falling. Behind her, the monk was unexpectedly tranquil. Little Muir, you should know my life story by now right? In truth, I hated this life I lived when I was a child, I didn't understand why I had to become a monk. He had a muted smile as he said, but my father loved my mother dearly. He told me I could only become a monk because otherwise it would be disastrous for my mother if I ever joined the secular world. As he said this, his expression became extremely bitter. His eyes also recalled the appearance of his beloved father's equally dreadful and miserable face. Chapter, 274 Are we still friends? 1. As for my mother the monk laughed, she was the empress at the time. She was in power and ruled tens of thousands of people. Even though she dismissed all handsome males for my father, she also wouldn't become a true family with my father and me. Hearing this, Yi Mu couldn't help but feel bad for the silent monk's father. Simultaneously, while the silent master's internal force was being transferred to her, she also could feel the sadness and suffering within him. Unfortunately, I didn't understand the situation as a child I didn't know why my father was still a monk even though he already had a child. I couldn't comprehend why he was so infatuated with her he liked my mother to the point that he would willingly abandon Buddha's teaching and use the temple as a fast and convenient place to help my mother find out important news and information. He put in all his effort into help. After he came up with this idea, his whole mentality was very different. He was no longer gloomy as he thought of all possible futures. However, as expected, my mother refused him. She couldn't even consider the idea of it. She even thought that my father was crazy. When the monk said this, his voice already sounded a lot older. He chuckled bitterly, his smile held a sneer in it. How my mother saw it, she would lose her supreme power and my father would lose his highly esteemed status as a senior monk. She felt it was silly of them to flee their status. She didn't even consider the idea she simply refused. At that time, I was hiding in another room and overheard them quarreling. When I looked through a window, I saw how my mother rejected my father in an instant. My father was in a daze and I saw how the light in his eyes dissipated. I could even feel his heart's brilliance fade in that moment. You could easily guess what happened next, after my mother rejected him, he lost all hope and his health started to decline significantly. Yet, he still loved my mother dearly. So even if she refused, he didn't make a big deal of the matter whatsoever. She thought he needed time to regain his senses, so she didn't visit him for a very long time period. Unexpectedly one day, as my father looked forward to seeing my mother, he overheard a visitor say that mother started to indulge in her circle of boy toys again. He laughed abruptly before vomiting blood incessantly the next second. The blood spilled even landed on me. I felt right then, I wouldn't be able to listen to my father anymore and couldn't love my own mother the same. The silent master's voice gradually weakened. As his vitality poured into Yimu, she could do nothing but passively accept it. In the end my father passed away. By his will, I inherited Tianshou Temple. As ridiculous as it was I blamed her for his death in my heart. Nevertheless, when I heard the news that Mo Linyuan had returned, my first reaction was concern for my mother. 
when you were delivered into my hands, I had ill intent flashing through my mind as I read you scriptures. Which ultimately caused your evil tendencies to awaken further. In truth, if I had not done so, you would have resembled your father's situation, you would simply have out of control emotions and incapable to control temperament, but would still remain sane and nothing irreparable. Now is my chance to correct this mistake. My internal force is the most honest and pure in its core. Adding on my life vitality, it ought to completely change the composition of the devil arts within you. From now on you will possess 100 years of pure internal force. In the future, regardless of whatever type of martial arts you want to learn you will be able to learn it all. Furthermore, you will become the world's strongest individual. Does that please you? Regardless whether it pleased her or not, in this moment, the silent master was truly happy for her. Chapter, 275 Are we still friends? 2. Yi Mu bursted into tears. She could feel the original tangled mess of internal force within her already starting to reconstruct itself. As the monk continued to pass on all of his internal strength, it became apparent he became more and more feeble. She tried to stifle her sobs as she replied. Truthfully, you didn't have to do this for me. I really don't want you to die. The silent master nodded as he held a soft smile. In the darkness, the pupil of his eyes was still as clear as if it was bathed and cleaned. I know you don't want me to die you may practice martial arts, but you've never taken the initiative to kill someone. You truthfully do not want to kill anyone at all. If you had to murder anyone, it was because you had no other option. Yet once you have killed someone, you would deeply regret it afterwards. His old voice held peace and tranquility. Then let me be the last and final person to die by your devil's art. Yi Mu bursted into tears again. The silent monk felt he was running out of time. He looked like a deteriorating hundred years old man. Very soon, he will ultimately give his last bit of vitality to Yi Mu, terminating his life. Could you share with me, why is it that you are obviously suffering yet you want to remove the devil arts from yourself? Yi Mu cried as she replied. Okay, he'll tell you. In the end, she rapidly told him about Yi Li. How she served him since she was small, until Yi Li passed away and passed on his skills before he died in front of her. She choked with emotions, I could feel that my father passed on his martial arts to protect me. He said that he never had anything good that happened in his life with the exception of me. I was the only good thing in his life. That was why he gave me his evil arts. I cannot let go of this skill, even if it is sinister in nature. So that's why before I heard you share a little bit about it but I never knew that was the reason. Your father sounds like a good guy his gift is also very considerate. Previously, it was me who destroyed everything he gave you but now, I will make his gift even better than before giving it back to you. The monk's head suddenly landed on Yi Mu's back with an inaudible thud. Do you know what my actual name is? Yi Mu shook her head, I do not know. My name is Min Wenjun merely because when I was born, my father covered my mouth and muffled my cries due to the fact that my mother gave birth to me in secret even then my father had a premonition about my future of never-ending silence therefore he gave me my religious name to be the silent master. Right then, besides weeping, Yi Mu didn't know what else to say. He laughed abruptly, his voice was unpleasantly coarse, you've said so many times before I am very good looking I must look very unsightly right now when you cremate me, could you make sure not to look at me? There's also my lantern and my cloth please incinerate them with me that day was one of my happiest memories for me the one day I was not a monk you've said before the one good thing you father did was save you then for me in this life I have only done this one bad thing the thing which harmed you then are we still friends. Chapter, 276 Early Graying Hair 1 His voice had gone completely silent near the end. His entire upper body collapsed onto Yi Mu's figure. Although she already regained her ability to move, at that moment she remained frozen. Still friends we will always still be friends. Tragically, however, the silent monk was already deaf to her words. But Yi Mu was certain that his heart already knew the answer to his question. Once Yi Mu exited the chamber, she carried him in her arms. The man was now a withered, dried up corpse with his shriveled hand dangling in the air it was an unsettling appearance. The others wanted to take a peek at his face, but it had already been covered with a cloth by Yi Mu. Evidently, everyone knew who he was based on the prisoner outfit he wore. Mo Linyuan saw how rational Yi Mu was and was deeply relieved. However, 
glancing at the monk's body cradled in her arms along with her swollen eyes, clearly puffy from crying he could have already guessed what happened. Consequently, M.O. Linyuan didn't say anything in the end. He didn't stop her letting Yi Mu personally start a fire letting Yi Mu place the silent master next to the lantern and blue cloth on top in the end, Yi Mu didn't remove the cloth from his face. She didn't glance at his face even once. Although the monk thought he was ugly now, Yi Mu would never forget when she first saw him, his pure appearance, his sharp brows, and his clear pupils that held a certain glamour that left all who witnessed him stunned by his beauty. The fire grew high, reaching towards the sky. Within the court palace, she incinerated the body in front of everyone. People of ancient times preferred to bury the dead. On the contrary, Yi Mu felt that cremation would permit the soul and spirit to travel more rapidly to the afterlife. After the silent monk's death, Mo Linyuan accompanied Yi Mu to find Zhao Yiqin. At that time, Zhao Yiqin was in a bad mood. She had been imprisoned by the emperor under the charge of causing an uprising in court. And when the silent master was taken away she became even more anxious. That's why when she saw Yi Mu, her first words were, Where's the silent master? What did you do to him? Yi Mu was the only one that entered. Her eyes were swollen red but she had calmed down significantly. He's dead. With her one phrase, Zhao Yiqin collapsed instantly. Her first instinct was to pull her hair out, but instead, she grabbed angrily onto a supportive railing as she glared at Yi Mu. It was you wasn't it? You killed him. You hate him for hurting you, so you killed him. That's correct. Yi Mu was watching her from outside the doors of the prison, he died for that reason. His death had nothing to do with you. Zhao Yiqin instantly understood the underpinnings of Yi Mu's words. Her eyes brimmed with incessant remorseful tears, while her voice cracked as she stumbled over her words. It was me I've killed him Juner Juner. She knew the unrest in his heart. For all these years, she never took the initiative to reassure him. She knew that he didn't want to be a monk since he was a child. Yet to preserve her own status, she never explicitly said anything to allow him otherwise. She was unwilling to let him leave her side and become a commoner, so she tied him to the Tianxiao temple. It was her she killed him. Yi Mu could see how she was slowly losing her mind. Pursing her lips, she said bluntly. The silent master shouldn't have died, but he did. I would say he probably wanted to use his death in exchange for your life. This was just something Yi Mu thought up on the spot. The silent monk was a smart guy, how could he have not known that Yi Mu never actually blamed him? But he still died what's more, he died in such a way where on one end, he did the best for Yi Mu, and on the other end, he also hoped she understood his desire to let Zhao Yiqin live. This was all due to the sole fact that the silent monk knew that, in this situation, the only one who could save Zhao Yiqin was Yi Mu. Chapter, 277 Early Graying Hair 2 Yi Mu often felt how history played out was truly fascinating. When she used to read about it, she didn't quite comprehend everything such as, why is it that Zhao Yiqin was never executed in the end? But now, she knew the reason why. I will beg His Majesty for mercy to send you to the Ancestral Temple. This was the last thing your son has done for you. So please behave yourself from now on. Yi Mu could hear Zhao Yiqin weep even more mournfully, and she let out a light sigh. In truth, Zhao Yiqin lived a fairly happy life. Not only did she get to enjoy the power of her title, but she also had two men who loved her so much they'd die for her wouldn't that still be considered somewhat lucky. Zhao Yiqin seemed to have realized this too. But with how lucky she was then, it made her suffering that much worse now. She vaguely remembered all those years ago, when Wen Ji would grab her hand and say to her longingly. Let's leave this place and go into hiding. What do you think of going to Guayin Mountain? You don't have to kill anyone anymore, and I don't have to lie anymore let's live the rest of our lives in peace. Besides, you wouldn't want our child to have to be a monk for the rest of his life, right? Zhao Yiqin cannot deny that, at that time, she considered it for a heartbeat, because she saw the brilliant shine of Wen Jis eyes. In that moment, she even fantasized with him the vibrant future he painted. However, she ruthlessly refused, because she was the Empress Dowager because of the countless people she had already killed to achieve the position. Even her own husband had been killed by her with poison with what she had done, how could she possibly go back to being an ordinary commoner? 
Her heart ached when she witnessed how the light in one J.I.S. eyes vanished instantly but her face was even more resolute. She had thought if she gave even an inch to others, they would become greedy for more. Now thinking back, she realized how truly selfish she was back then. She not only wanted to keep one J.I.S. unconditional love but also maintain the power and privileges of her position, as she obtained all the honors and glory of the world. It was just as she did to her one and only son she knew the desire within his heart, yet she kept him chained by her side. She never even considered the idea of helping him realize his dream nor giving him his freedom. Yet both of them died for her without a second thought. Zhao Yiqin now realized she had lost the most precious thing the heavens had gifted her, in order to feed her obsession and greed for more power. Now, it was regrettably too late. Just like in the book, Zhao Yiqin was sent to the temple. Yi Mu watched her depart from afar. She noticed that although Zhao Yiqin was only in the jail cell for only ten days, her hair was completely white. She looked neither sad nor happy. She simply looked like a person who lost her soul. Yi Mu wondered what was Zhao Yikin's biggest regret. Could it be not fleeing with the monk Wenji? Not agreeing to the silent master's wishes? Not agreeing to live a normal life in seclusion? Or is it something else? Once Zhao Yiqin was gone, the M.O. country's power fell completely in the hands of M.O. Linyuan. The court returned to normal and the rumors were cleared. Since his return in the past few years, he had finally succeeded in acquiring the power to rule tens and thousands of people. One day, as M.O. Linyuan was attending court, Yi Mu brought all of the city boundary maps together. She realized that the last piece missing was also the most crucial piece of the map. She tapped her digit as she mumbled to herself. Where exactly is the last piece of the city boundary map? As this mystery remained, two years time passed. Chapter, 278 Growing up 1 Fourteen-year-old Yi Mu was wearing a plain white dress. She moved swiftly in the palace while holding her good luck charm. The devil's martial arts within her was completely purified. Now she practiced the pure Buddhist martial arts form. What's more, she had hundreds of years of internal force, making her undefeatable. With the exception of. Miss, please slow down. The servant chased after her, but Yi Mu ran even faster after hearing them. I'm not going. M.O. Linyuan's martial art is already so powerful. Why should I teach him anymore? I absolutely won't go. The maid's eyes glanced over as she giggled, His Majesty is looking for you because the other martial artists are no match for him. You are the world's strongest fighter. If he doesn't spar with you, who else would he spar with? It was too late for Yi Mu to hide from M.O. Linyuan. It was not easy for him to get out of his court duties. He did it just so he could spend time with Yi Mu, with an awareness of the unknown of their dark future. The maid stopped in her step, His Majesty already stated, if you refuse to teach him martial arts during the day, then he will personally visit you at night to pick your brain on the pure Buddhist martial arts form. Yi Mu was taken aback and she turned around angrily, apart from this trick, does he have any other tricks up his sleeve? The maid laughed lightly. The trick wasn't new, but it was effective. She went over to Yi Mu, took her hand and dragged her towards the military grounds. Come on, let's go. You've been training in seclusion these past two years. Now that you have finally stabilized your powers, it's about time you go greet and see His Majesty. Yi Mu wanted to cry. She would rather continue to train in seclusion. Having arrived at the training grounds, Yi Mu immediately saw a fight happening on the big stage. Mo Linyuan had just directly knocked a man off the battleground. Soon after, another person was thrown off the stage. In order to train his endurance, he engaged in endless rallies of fighting. The maid who escorted Yi Mu was not allowed to enter. With the exception of Yi Mu, the emperor did not permit any female to enter the training grounds because Mo Linyuan was typically shirtless while he trained. Right then, his long hair was tied back in a ponytail. He had a bright and handsome expression, his skin shining snowy white. He was covered in quite a bit of muscle. Sweat streamed down his body into his trousers. He seemed to emit a honey-like radiance. Seeing him like this made Yi Mu swallow as her eyes couldn't help but focus on his narrow waist. When he noticed Yi Mu, M.O. Linyuan lightly smiled. These past two years of smooth sailing made him a little more cheerful. His expression held a self-assured and domineering air that was truly overwhelming to others. 
You all are dismissed. M.O. Linyuan waved his hand to send all the martial artists off the stage. Once they saw that Yi Mu had arrived, they all shared a meaningful smirk. M.O. Linyuan stood on the stage. He seemed to emit a brilliance, as he opened his arms to extend a hand towards her. Little Muir, come up here. Come spar with me. Yi Mu wouldn't make eye contact as she remained frozen. The surrounding martial artists were all rowdily cheering. You got this, Miss Yi. Let us witness Miss Yi's bravery. They all wanted to see the world's number one fighter in action. Yi Mu didn't dare to look at Mo Linyuan's dazzling face. She replied with a jeer, I have more internal force than you. You are not my opponent. There's no need for us to spar. Mo Linyuan raised his eyebrows lightly. He towered above her and he gazed down at Yi Mu. He chuckled, that's fine, we can spar with hand-to-hand -hand combat rather than internal forces. Yi Mu now understood what it meant to smash a stone on one's foot. But even my hand-to-hand -hand combat is formidable. Doesn't matter. We should make a bet. Mo Linyuan loudly exclaimed, if I win, you must agree to any request of mine. If I lose, I will do the same, how does that sound? Yi Mu was a little dubious as she looked up to ask, what is your request? Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes. Right then, a glint appeared within his eyes. Marry me. Chapter, 279. Growing up too. Once he said those words, Yi Mu hadn't even said anything, but those around her were already wailing and causing a ruckus. Agree to his proposal. Marry him. Don't hesitate anymore. Just marry him. Fine, let's bet on that. Yi Mu felt a headache develop. Regardless of what she said, people in the back continuously pushed her up onto the stage. Right then, Mo Linyuan threw a dagger and a sack of white powder. This powder will leave a white mark on the body wherever it touches. Whoever strikes a lethal spot first will be declared the winner. Yi Mu squeezed the dagger. Although she hasn't fought for many years now, she still had her previous experiences with fighting. Now that she was forced into this situation, she will not back down. Mo Linyuan laughed softly, here I come. After the warning, his body approached in a monster-like manner. Even though he wasn't using any internal force, Mo Linyuan's speed far exceeded that of a normal person. Yi Mu realized then she would have to put in all of her concentration in this fight. Bang! With a crash, Yi Mu blocked Mo Linyuan's high-speed attack. The dagger in her hand suddenly snapped into two. Luckily, the dagger in M.O. Linyuan's hand also broke. However, it didn't matter as the broken dagger could still leave conspicuous white marks on the opponent. The two of them were extremely agile as they exchanged blows. The people below felt it was truly a sight to behold. Someone then murmured in apprehension. Miss Yi is truly unromantic and insensitive. If it was me, I would have pretended to lose to His Majesty. That way, I would be able to marry him. A guy nearby also snorted, perhaps Miss Yi doesn't like his majesty. Nonsense. Another person humphed, Miss Yi is the model of romance. She has never left his majesty's side even once. How could she possibly not like him? It must be because she is still young. On the battleground, all of M.O. Linyuan's attacks were blocked. He was becoming a bit discouraged. Even though she wasn't using any internal forces, Yi Mu's reaction ability was still faster than him. With this kind of advantage, it would be fairly difficult for him to win. Little Muir, do you not want to marry me that much? He approached Yi Mu's ear for a split second to whisper this sentence. His subtle hurt expression was visible. Yi Mu's ears were red. Yet, before she could reply, she realized Mo Linyuan must have been deliberately trying to distract her. Indeed it was as she predicted, M.O. Linyuan was trying to distract her. Seeing how Yi Mu had been fooled, he lowered his voice again to murmur. But, I look forward to this day. For many years I have been longing for the day when you are completely mine. You brute. Yi Mu's face burned red. She was still a shy young girl. Since this type of beast didn't deserve any mercy, Yi Mu suddenly took a swift offensive mode towards M.O. Linyuan. Her advances forced him to the edge of the stage. She then noticed the sides of the stage had rows of weaponry placed around. Yi Mu originally wanted to change orientation. 
Unfortunately, M.O. Linyuan took advantage of this and engulfed her in a tight hold, not letting her go. When she finally broke free of M.O. Linyuan's hold, she tried to retaliate. As a result, to avoid her attack, M.O. Linyuan retreated one step. Consequently, his back headed towards the weaponry below. What's more, he didn't seem to have any awareness of this. Yi Mu became worried. She advanced forward to seize his waist and bring him back onto the stage. At this moment, they were stuck closely to each other. Once the two of them landed safely on solid ground, M.O. Linyuan smugly declared. Little Muir you've lost. Chapter, 280. Handsome Charms 1. Yi Mu lowered her head and saw a white print on her chest. You cheated. Yi Mu finally understood what happened, you fell on purpose. M.O. Linyuan subtly raised his eyebrow, all's fair in love and war. Seeing how Yi Mu turned her head as if she wanted to flee, M.O. Linyuan reached out and pulled her back. Yi Mu remained still, conscious of her overpowering internal strength. She didn't want to hurt him by accident. The tip of her nose rested on his shoulder while her palms laid on his stomach she could feel his internal strength as well as his muscular exterior. Oh dear lord, his chest is still bare. M.O. Linyuan's movement made the spectating martial artist's wolfish passions flare. Is His Majesty going to eat her publicly? Besides, he's already 18 years old, he can't possibly hold back any longer. Little Muir, are you not willing to concede to your loss? Yi Mu struggled to break free, but she gave up due to his very tight hold. She helplessly said, I just don't remember making that sort of agreement with you. M.O. Linyuan held a pained expression, it would seem you aren't willing to keep your promised request. As he said this, within seconds the crowd below protested. He threw the resisting Yi Mu on top of his shoulder. What are you doing? Let me go. The surrounding people shouted provocative exclamations as Yi Mu shifted on M.O. Linyuan's arm. Her tiny face flushed beet red as she beat M.O. Linyuan's back with her fist. What am I doing? M.O. Linyuan seemed to be in a good mood, since you refused to concede, I would naturally have to use force to capture my beloved future wife. With these words, he took Yi Mu away and left the crowds behind and their restless excitement. Do you guys think His Majesty will succeed in doing that today? Definitely. I.D. bet one or two silvers on it. Then he'll bet two whole silvers it will be done earlier. In short, His Majesty's married life is still a big concern of the whole country. Once M.O. Linyuan brought Yi Mu back, he threw her directly onto the bed. Little Muir, your instability is no longer a danger to me when will you marry me? Yi Mu frowned, can I can we not get married? Why not? M.O. Linyuan was already covering himself with a garment that hung stylishly. As he crossed his arm over his chest, it accentuated his sexual appeal. He was an absolute heart-stopper. Oof, how could you pull that handsome guy vibe so well? Yi Mu was terrified to discover that Emo Linyuan was becoming more and more dashing. He may only be 18 years old, but he had a tall figure, handsome features, and an unrivaled family background. If Yi Mu didn't already have other goals in mind, she would be unable to resist this kind of temptation. Let me guess Emo Linyuan held a deceptive smile as he got on the bed and began crawling towards her, little by little. You won't accept my proposal because you aren't a person from this world. Yi Mu was stunned. M.O. Linyuan had come to this conclusion over time. These past few years, he carefully reflected on every possible explanation. Ultimately, this preposterous explanation was also one of the most likely of all conclusions. He cradled the side of Yi Mu's face with his hand. The 14-year-old Yi Mu was vulnerable right then. Her innate appearance resembled that of a young and tender little rabbit. Her eyes were strong, yet she had such an innocent face that made others want to bully her. Little Muir, you can't possibly be thinking of leaving me one day right? Yi Mu instantly started to panic. Why does she feel like M.O. Linyuan somehow discovered the truth? As M.O. Linyuan approached her, he leaned in close, whispering into her ear, I am willing to give you time to tell me your whole history and origin this time, I want to know everything, clearly and honestly. Yi Mu shrank back from his breath. At such a close distance, she could smell the distinct scent of M.O. Linyuan's cologne. The scent was very subtle, but it left an indescribable excitement in her. She didn't expect to have avoided him for so long. Should she just let him know the truth? Chapter, 281. 
handsome charms too. Her bunny-like face furrowed in thought. Her big round eyes were shining, making her look extremely innocent. So there won't be any punishment for my response right? Yi Mu asked cautiously. Mo Linyuan chuckled, before pinching her little nose. Haven't you realized that there isn't anyone capable of punishing you? That's true, who is even strong enough to defeat her? Besides, she had been preparing herself mentally for this. She might as well confess. Thus, Yi Mu was finally no longer afraid about the matter and started to share her story. She only omitted the last part about needing to obtain the city boundary map and simply glazed vaguely over it. She did it subconsciously, most likely because of the pained feeling that came with the thought. She stared intently at Mo Linyuan. Her whole life, from the age of 6 to 14, was filled with this person if she were able to leave, would she do so? The room became very quiet. On the giant dragon bed, Mo Linyuan knelt beside Yi Mu with an indescribable expression. What you're saying is you truly aren't a person from this world. The sole purpose for your appearance was to solely help me. Yi Mu nodded enthusiastically, there are people waiting for me in my world. So that's why that's why I can't marry you. When she said that, her eyes showed hints of redness. This made her look even more like a rabbit, as her grievances showed through. But what you're also saying is if there was no one waiting for you back in your world, you would stay here you would stay with me. As Mo Linyuan said this, his eyes captured hers. Yi Mu had always hidden her true feelings, but at this moment, she couldn't lie to herself anymore. If no one was waiting for me back home I, I wouldn't be able to leave you. Unexpectedly, immediately after she finished speaking, her little mouth was kissed firmly and deeply by Mo Linyuan he pushed Yi Mu down and pressed her onto the bed. For a while now, Mo Linyuan has been restraining himself for her sake. Firstly, because she was still growing up. And secondly, because he wanted to give her time to adapt yet this extremely aggressive kiss has left Yi Mu stunned. She had an unsettling feeling that she may get eaten up by this guy. Yet it seems she is trembling in anticipation. For a long time, Mo Linyuan continued devouring her little lips. Although she didn't directly state it, he got to hear her indirect confession to him, which left him very satisfied. But, he was not done with interrogating her. He lightened his kisses to peak, taking in the image of Yi Mu, who looked breathlessly dazed. He couldn't help but smirk. You said you could return to your world, but you aren't going to be flying away in the sky like a fairy, right? You would probably need some sort of item to achieve your mission am I right? Unconsciously, Yi Mu almost accidentally revealed the topic of the city boundary map. However, she bit her lower lip to withhold her words and simply stared at him with wide eyes. How despicable. He's trying to use his handsome charms. Mo Linyuan glanced to see she had broken out of her dazed spell. He chuckled faintly before going back again to devour her bright, swollen red lips. Mm, this tiny girl not only resembles a little bunny she also tastes absolutely sweet and divine. Now tell me, what is the item that you need? Mo Linyuan demanded once again. Yi Mu covered her mouth and refused to answer. In response, Mo Linyuan retained her hands to kiss her until she confessed the truth. Ultimately, Yi Mu quickly developed unshed tears. She covered her mouth again as she adamantly shook her head, and oh. No way. Even if you continue you kiss me like this, I will not tell you. Truthfully even if you don't tell me, I can probably guess what it is Mo Linyuan said with a sinister laugh. Yi Mu gaped at him in astonishment. She was witnessing how powerful his attitude has become. He regarded her with a determined look to obtain what he wanted. I can reassure you, little Muir you cannot escape me. You can't return to your world. Chapter, 282 Arranged marriage with a princess one. Yi Mu froze, she can't return to her world. Could it be that Mo Linyuan has already discovered the significance of the city boundary map? There's no way. She kept it hidden very well. All these years, she hadn't said a thing about it. Right then, someone from the palace halls came in and declared, Your Majesty, the Zhao country's messenger seeks your presence. Mo Linyuan raised his eyebrows slightly. He then smiled at Yi Mu as he asked. Little Muir, we are sweaty all over. Now come, let's go bathe together. Yi Mu said with incredulity, actually, I didn't sweat very much at all. 
Besides, shouldn't you go greet the messenger from the Zhao country? You should go see him. Mo Linyuan paused and narrowed his eyes at her with displeasure, if you really want bathe with me, then I will stay on this bed with you to continue what we were doing. He then smiled maliciously. That way, if something did happen, then we will definitely need to bathe afterward. Yi Mu immediately got up and stood next to Mo Linyuan. She pleaded, there's still someone waiting for you. You really want go and greet him first. Mo Linyuan snorted softly, he's already waiting to see me. What's wrong with making him wait a bit longer? He had a good point. Yi Mu didn't know how to respond. So, she lowered her eyes and simply followed Mo Linyuan as she mulled over the matter. Little Muir do you still desire the city boundary map? Mo Linyuan asked abruptly. Yi Mu nodded, but then shook her head quickly. She felt she reacted too eagerly and needed to feign calmness, and so replied. Don't you also want it? It's the imperial treasure that permits you to dominate the world if you possess it. Mo Linyuan escorted her through the long corridors. His white outfit fluttered with only a waist belt to keep the loose clothes in place. I want you more than any unattainable city boundary map. He had a hint of a smile as he stated the touching confession of love. Yi Mu raised her head to stare at him. He was surrounded by a courtyard that had hundreds of white flowers, all blooming magnificently and exquisitely. They complimented his white outfit and beautiful exterior. He continued to focus his attention on her, making her delicate heart beat uncontrollably. Ba dump, ba dump. He couldn't mean what she thinks he means right. She tried to change the subject and pretended to calmly reply, but you only need to find one last piece of the map. Don't tell me, as the ruling sovereign, you have not even one bit of desire to obtain it? Mo Linyuan's eyebrows immediately narrowed in frustration. Are you doing this on purpose? Doing what? Mo Linyuan abruptly stopped walking and leaned in close to Yi Mu's face. The imperial servants following behind them immediately stopped ten meters away. Within the refined palace hallways, Yi Mu gaped at the unexpected man whose face almost touched hers. She felt that he seemed to have some strong intense emotion emitting from him. If he approached a bit more, he may lose all control. He smirked as he squeezed her face. Are you deliberately trying to make me say it multiple times? I said I want you. I want you more than anything else. I only want you. Yi Mu suppressed her internal restlessness. She wanted to retort. Mo Linyuan then straightened himself and asked with a polite smile. Didn't you say there is something special about the city boundary map? Should I take a guess why that is? Chapter 283 Arranged Marriage with a Princess 2 Yi Mu suddenly felt guilty and quickly pulled Mo Linyuan towards the bathing room. Okay okay, fine. Enough chit chat. Let's quickly take a bath. I feel very sticky and uncomfortable. Mo Linyuan chuckled softly as he let himself be pulled by her. Truthfully, it wasn't hard for him to guess. Yi Mu had never been interested in anything except for the city boundary map. She was always fascinated by the document. Originally, the thought of Yi Mu leaving made him very, very angry. However, he realized that Little Muir was not indifferent to him. This alone was what helped him to suppress his negative thoughts. He could still wait a little longer. He was the emperor, and the world belongs to him. Although he does like taking risks, he was willing to be more patient with his most beloved woman. Even though the course of events has been somewhat unpredictable, as long as he obtains what he wants, that was enough for him. Once Yimu arrived at the washroom, she regretted it right away. This was the emperor's palace, it was meant for only the emperor alone. Naturally, there was also only one wash basin. This was indeed a trap. Since she was so distracted by the other matter while walking here, she was unaware of the situation she just walked into. Right then, all of the servants finished preparing the bath and had already retreated. At the elegant doorway, Mo Linyuan glanced over to see Yi Mu deep in her thoughts as she stood there unmoving. He couldn't help but gently place both his hands on her shoulder. He then lowered his head and leaned in to whisper. Little Muir, your face is red. Are you thinking of something you shouldn't be thinking about? Surprised, Yi Mu stuttered, D didn't you want to take a bath? Why don't you take a bath first and I'll wash after? Seeing how Yi Mu tensed up, Mo Linyuan tried to stifle his laugh. 
He suddenly asked, Little Muir, do you know how old I am this year? 18. Wasn't the answer obvious? Why was he asking her this? M.O. Linyuan scoffed, a normal 18-year-old guy would already have two kids. While this monarch here tragically does not have even one. With his provocation, Yimu began struggling to break free, before finally fleeing. Before she left, she went back inside to scream at him angrily, Are you taking the bath or not? If you're not going to, then leave so that I can wash first. Her tone expressed significant irritation, but her innocent-looking face was completely red. His little mirror fleeing so suddenly was truly adorable. Ill bathe first. He entered and closed the doors behind. With one finger, he removed the belt around his waist. In a flash the white clothes rolled off, exposing his powerful body and leaving him only in his trousers. If he was on the battleground, his current appearance would send others into a passionate frenzy. Currently, the dense mist of the steaming bath in the surrounding area made Yi Mu truly want to run away in fear. She was still considered a girl in modern times. Seeing how M. O. Lin Yuan was about to take off his pants, Yi Mu quickly turned around. She tried to meditate over and over again to calm herself. In the end, she heard a loud splash, indicating he had entered the water. Little Muir, do you know what the Zhao country came to discuss with me? Yi Mu thought back to what she read in the history books. Although things were different now, there could only be one reason why the Zhao country came by. They want you to marry their princess. Mo Lin Yuan was accustomed to her predictions now, so he simply laughed, yes, they want to have their princess marry me. They sincerely don't care if their princess doesn't become queen and is only accepted as an imperial concubine. Yi Mu felt slightly uneasy in her heart. She had warned herself that she was going to return home and could not become attached to anyone in this world especially Mo Lin Yuan. Witnessing Yi Mu at a loss of words made Mo Lin Yuan very happy. He was aware that Yi Mu grew up in a harsh and cruel environment, which was why she was so closed off. She was very blunt, had a military mindset, and was also very logical which was also why she had always concealed her emotions. Little Muir, you tell me. What would you like me to do? Chapter 284 She was done for one. Yi Mu thought to herself, he has to agree. Isn't marriage something all emperors must achieve? Yet weirdly, when it came to her lips, she couldn't say it aloud. This wasn't good. She can't be selfish about this. She has already decided to go back to her world, how could she not want Mo Lin Yuan to get married? With determination, she said in a pitifully small voice. You should agree to it. Although her voice was quiet, Mo Lin Yuan was still able to hear her. Immediately, his expression turned frigid. The smirk he had on gradually disappeared. Little Muir, come here. Yi Mu walked over, her eyes closed as she endured internal despair. She heard the sound of water splashing. She imagined Mo Lin Yuan leaving the bath no, she must stop thinking at once. He is not hers to claim. While she was having an internal battle, Mo Lin Yuan's icy voice came pierced through her thoughts. What did you just say? This monarch couldn't hear you clearly. She looked up in astonishment. This was the first time Yi Mu heard him address himself as this monarch with her. Yet, she was even more caught off guard when Mo Lin Yuan stood up from the water and got up in her personal space. Before she could retreat, she was pulled into the water by Mo Lin Yuan. Splash! The loud sound of colliding water was heard as Yi Mu was embraced by Mo Lin Yuan. Yet before she could respond, he gritted through his teeth. Repeat again, what exactly did you want this monarch to do? Yi Mu was soaked as the completely naked Mo Lin Yuan hugged her. Her heart almost jumped out of her throat. Ai ai. You want me to marry another woman? Mo Lin Yuan's arms tightened around her. His phoenix eyes glared, say it again. If you tell me to, I will immediately marry her. Yi Mu opened her mouth, but this time her face turned red she was unable to say those words again. What's wrong with me? Why am I so reluctant to give Mo Lin Yuan to someone else? Mo Lin Yuan was satisfied to witness her hesitation. Little Muir, sometimes you truly have to be honest with yourself. You only have me in your heart. He poked Yi Mu's chest and Yi Mu's face immediately morphed in discomfort, be gentle. That hurts. Her chest was tender due to recent growth development. 
And Mo Linyuan was also taken aback as he discovered that his little steamed buns had grown up. Originally, Yi Mu was very flat-chested. But in these past two years, she developed solid foundations and was now starting to take shape. With delight, he poked at her again, but this time he did so gently. Why you, Yi Mu was speechless. How could she be toyed with by this hooligan right now? Does he think she would just take it? When Mo Linyuan went to touch her once again, Yi Mu's hand swiftly gripped his hands, forcing them to the side of the wash basin as she suppressed his movement. Don't even think of trying to grope me again. I will fight back. What's more, Mo Linyuan was no match for her. Being inferior to Yi Mu's martial arts is something that significantly wears Mo Linyuan down. He gritted his teeth as he struggled to move, but Yi Mu held him down even harder. Even in the water, her strength was formidable. Mo Linyuan finally gave up and chuckled, You don't need to be like this. However, way you would like to take me, you don't need to hold me down like this. I am yours for the taking. Yi Mu felt that these past two years, Mo Linyuan had become more and more unbridled. Was it due to the fact that he had been suppressing his desires for too long? She clenched through her teeth, regardless if you ever try to touch me again, you will first need my consent. Mo Linyuan laughed, why? The world belongs to me. You belong to me as well. Your body, if I want to touch it, I will do so every day. Chapter, 285 She was done for two. You are shameless. Mo Linyuan smirked, is that so? His foot suddenly kicked in which caught Yi Mu by surprise. Within the next second, Mo Linyuan unexpectedly reached out and pressed her against the side of the pool. Mo Linyuan laughed wickedly, I need your consent. That's fine. Then, I want to kiss you right now, do you agree? Before Yi Mu could say no, Mo Linyuan covered her lips with his hand. Among the steam, his face looked exquisite. Right then, he was as handsome as a fairy. Water droplets trailed down his collarbone. Everything about him was full of temptations. I will give you two options. His brilliant smile was truly deceptive to those who saw it. First option, I can kiss you. Second option, I can do whatever I want with you. Yi Mu awoke from her trance. She didn't want to choose either options. She glared at him with irritation, and Mo Linyuan continued merrily, it'll count to three. If you refuse to answer, or you don't pick either option that is the same as agreeing to both. Now, one. Yi Mu removed his hand off her mouth, you are despicable. Mo Linyuan said calmly, you already know him the type of person who keeps my words. You're shameless. 2. Yi Mu wanted to flee, but just as Mo Linyuan stated, he always kept his promises. Since he had already stated it he would really do whatever he originally intended to do to her. 3. I'll pick one. Yi Mu decided to just take a loss on this one. Once she could leave his grasp, then she should be able to get away. Then pick one. Mo Linyuan. I choose the first one. It's not like we haven't kissed before anyways Yi Mu tried to console herself. Mo Linyuan knew early on that she would pick that option. Grinning, he pointed to his lips and motioned, then come here. You want me to initiate the kiss? Yi Mu's round eyes narrowed. This man was really pushing her limits. Mo Linyuan smirked, I could kiss you but I cannot promise it would be a simple kiss. Yi Mu couldn't win against him. Her eyes fell upon Mo Linyuan's lips they were thin and pale but very lovely. Perhaps she could give in to her desires and do what she longed to do. She pondered over this those past times Mo Linyuan had already forced the kisses onto her if she were to kiss this time, it shouldn't be a big deal, right? Yi Mu also knew that she was deceiving herself. She knew, truthfully, she wanted to kiss him. Meanwhile, as she slowly moved in closer, Mo Linyuan froze completely. He was still a growing adolescent. Although it was Yi Mu taking the initiative and he may have a playful smile on his face, his heart was still racing. Finally, when Yi Mu was just inches away from him their surroundings turned still and quiet, as if the world was waiting for her to take the final step and kiss him. A voice suddenly came from the outside. Your Majesty, the Zhao country minister requested for your presence. He said it was urgent. 
Once Yimu heard the announcement, she thought of the princess from the Zhao country then she remembered her current situation if she couldn't be together with Mo Linyuan forever, why would she kiss him? Realizing this, she immediately wanted to retreat but how could Mo Linyuan permit her to? He lunged forward and bit Yi Mu's lips. The temperature of the water suddenly turned hot. Her heart beat uncontrollably. As Yi Mu glanced in front of her at Mo Linyuan, only four words entered her mind she was done for. Chapter 286 Why are you refusing? 1. When Mo Linyuan finally got up and left, Yi Mu remained muddled in the water. She rubbed her round baby cheeks vigorously, her heart beating frantically. What should she do? Her heart is beating so uncontrollably. Did she already forget all of her previous training to resist his charms? Why was she so frazzled by one kiss? However, the moment she thought of the Zhao country sending someone else for him to kiss instead and knowing his curious personality Yi Mu quickly awoke from her daze and headed to the palace halls. She then hid behind the interiors of the emperor's entrance to eavesdrop on their conversation. Her presence inside the imperial palace was unimpeded due to the fact that everyone knew Yi Mu was the emperor's most beloved heartmeat. In fact, she was his heartmeat that he had left uneaten who would dare stop her. Tn, directly translates to a piece of heartmeat, but could also mean beloved darling. It was to the point where people made conjectures that his majesty, in recent years, would employ cruel and bloody methods to eliminate all of Qin Chao in order to protect her. These rumors continue to circulate even now. Yi Mu peeked from behind the door, holding her breath in order to further conceal her presence. Silently, she gazed into the room. On the tall platform, Mo Linyuan's slender yet imposing figure could be seen by all throughout the room. His golden dragon robe trailed behind him, further emphasizing his dominance. At this moment, he was very neatly presented. Regardless of the angle, his handsome face still awed all of those who saw him. With a smile, he began speaking. I am aware that marriage is indeed a great way to unite two countries. Unfortunately, I do not have any other brothers who can undertake such a huge responsibility. Here in the M.O. country, I am living the solitary path. I can't possibly live up to the other ruler's expectations. Hearing M.O. Linyuan's words, the Zhao County's minister maintained his expression. This news was no surprise to him. The middle-aged man Zhao Country's minister was among the audience. He listened intently, and then laughingly replied, Your Majesty, you have plenty of opportunities. Have you forgotten that your harem is empty? As he said this, he bowed before presenting a thick scroll, this foreign minister knows that the M.O. country is truly prosperous. But, before your majesty makes any decision, it would be best you read the princess list of dowry gifts. M.O. Linyuan subtly raised his eyebrow. Soon after, the scroll was delivered into M.O. Linyuan's hand. When Yi Mu heard Mo Linyuan's refusal, she was happy. But this time, seeing how prepared the other party was she couldn't help but feel anxious. What could be in the scroll that was worth considering about? While Mo Linyuan read the scroll, Yi Mu observed the group visiting from the Zhao country. Although they all lowered their heads, one of them was secretly peeking up he was fairly petite, and had red lips and white teeth. Right then, Yi Mu realized that it was really the princess, who was Mo Linyuan's prospective future kissing partner. She actually came to visit as well. Yi Mu followed the princess line of sight and realized she was staring at Mo Linyuan. He was currently supporting his face with one hand while holding the scroll in the other. He emanated an air of elegance and nobility. In the presence of Mo Linyuan, the nearby attendants, all of whom would typically be considered handsome, were completely overpowered by his profound and distinguished bearing. Humph. He's like a flower attracting all the bees and butterflies. Yi Mu's fingers tightly gripped the edge of the doorway as she mumbled to herself. He said he didn't want a princess, yet he is so gorgeous and polite, just who exactly is he trying to seduce? Humph. After a long time, Mo Linyuan finally let out a chuckle. Interesting, the city boundary map. The Zhao country actually possesses it. Chapter 287 Why are you refusing? 2. Hearing those three words, Yi Mu's eyes immediately widened. The Zhao country's messenger spoke with a smile, yes, it is indeed the city boundary map. Before arriving, our monarch heard you were interested in collecting the maps. As a result, 
he invested a great deal of resources and time into finding it. Unexpectedly he actually found it. If you are willing to marry our princess, this city boundary map will be offered up freely by the Zhao country. At that moment, Yi Mu's heart was in her throat as she glanced at Emo Linyuan. She was uncertain and torn on whether she wanted him to agree or refuse right then. Emo Linyuan pointed a finger at the scroll, which signaled them to return it to the other people. He stated ambiguously, it would seem that the Zhao country is truly sincere. The minister held a proud look, what are your majesty's thoughts on this? Our princess is truly talented and beautiful. She is known as one of the most virtuous women from our Zhao country. We do not ask much of your majesty, only that that you treat her with love. This would be a great union between our two countries. As he exclaimed this, he had really thought that the other person wouldn't be able to refuse. He felt that with Emo Linyuan's ambitious nature combined with his desire to collect the pieces of the map, he definitely would not let go of this opportunity. In addition to the city boundary map, they would also be able to unify the two countries. This could be called a win-win situation. Just as he thought this, he heard Emo Linyuan's magnetic voice say cautiously. I can see the sincerity of your esteemed country I am truly moved but. The Zhao country's minister's smile grew. He was just about to respond and Imo Linyuan suddenly waved his hand. However, please forgive this monarch as I must refuse your request. There are many ways to unify two countries. Moreover, as long as the city boundary map is genuine, I am willing to exchange it with something else. When Yimu heard Emo Linyuan's response, she was uncertain of how she felt right then. Subconsciously, she glanced over at the princess who was dressed as a man. She noticed the girl's eyes turning red. It was as if she might cry at any moment. This caused the minister's expression to drop. He didn't expect that Emo Linyuan would refuse such a favorable agreement. Was he unhappy with the dowry? Or were the rumors true that he would not marry any other woman? As he pondered on this, his face morphed into dissatisfaction. Yet, he still asked respectfully. Your Majesty, could you please tell this minister the reason for your refusal? Only the foreign minister dared to ask the emperor this question. If it had been someone from Emo country who had asked or tried to force the sovereign to marry, he would have faced a grim ending. Sure enough, Emo Linyuan narrowed his eyes. He held clear signs of discomfort. Just as he was about to retort with a cruel response out of the corner of his eye, he caught sight of a slight movement in the left side of the hallway. Someone was eavesdropping, he realized. There was only one person who was permitted to stay nearby when the monarch had discussions it went without saying who was eavesdropping. Realizing this, he faintly snickered and exclaimed. If your esteemed country truly wanted to know, then this monarch ought to be honest. Apart from the city boundary map, this monarch only deeply loves and cares for one woman. Slight restlessness and noise spread throughout the royal court. Within this era, where men were regarded as superior to women, Emo Linyuan's actions of only pampering Yi Mu weren't considered a big deal. However, for Emo Linyuan to claim in front of everyone that he only loved and cherished one woman, was a concept others could not fathom. After all, what was there that the emperor couldn't possess? For a single woman to be his most prized possession, that was downright inconceivable. Emo Linyuan's announcement had also made Yimu dumbstruck. Emo Linyuan was supposed to be known for all eternity as a one-of-a-kind emperor. But what if he now becomes known as an emperor who was easily engrossed by female charms how would this ruler be able to achieve greater feats then? At the same time, what was going on with the slight happiness she was feeling? She must suppress it. The Zhao country's minister remained silent for what felt like an eternity, as he tried to suppress his emotions. He glimpsed over at the Zhao country's princess before muttering respectfully, Your Majesty even if you value one person you don't necessarily have to reject everyone else, am I right? Chapter, 288 Finally Charming Her One Among the people, there are ordinary merchants who only have a few silvers and yet they can marry more than one wife. Your Majesty, who is of noble descent as the emperor should be able to marry more than one woman like any ordinary man. It couldn't be that your majesty only wants to marry one woman, right? These were simple words that were left unspoken in the hearts of all the M.O. country ministers. For so many years, they have tried to propose concubines every year and yet they have been unsuccessful every time. The whole M.O. country belongs to M.O. Linyuans. 
During royal court meetings he would listen and obey requests in relations to cultural deputies giving propositions. Yet when it came to marriage they have all suffered bitter hardship and continuous rejection. His majesty may have fallen in love with Yimu, but why did he have to delay marrying another woman? The Zhao country's princess looked intently at Imo Linyuan, praying that he would change his mind. Since marrying one is okay, why not marry two? Worst case she wouldn't get in the way of the other woman, wouldn't that suffice? Mo Linyuan laughed softly. His slender finger tapped on his forehead. He held a helpless expression as he regarded those beneath him. This monarch is a single man with a single heart, who can only accept one person. I have no room to accept another woman. His words were truly astonishing. Only one woman how can this be possible? Furthermore, how can there only be a single woman in the heart of the monarch? Yi Mu's heart was pounding. Could it be that it was her ideologies that changed him, which was why Mo Linyuan had embraced this concept of taking only one woman for the rest of his life? As for the Zhao country's princess, she was stunned at how insignificant she was compared to Yi Mu. She was used to being doted on by someone ever since she was young. Yet, she had never heard of a man who could possibly only hold one woman in his heart. This Mo country's monarch was he not afraid of becoming a laughing stock? But it was undeniable that she was jealous of this girl she never met. What witchcraft did she use to capture his heart? The Zhao country's minister held a confused expression, not understanding why Mo Linyuan was self-deprecating himself like so. After a period of time, not know how to respond, Mo Linyuan responded with good nature. When I had nothing, it was her who stayed beside me. Even when I was facing a crisis, she supported me through it. Finally, now that I possess power, the one who should remain by my side is none other than her. Regardless of life or death situations, she has never left. How could this monarch possibly hurt her simply because of power? But the Zhao country's minister uttered, but couldn't complete his sentence. Mo Linyuan continued with his speech. You want to say, but she is a simple woman. If I simply give her supreme power and pamper her, she should be content. Mo Linyuan snickered, like others, I had thought so too but she is an exception. So what if I favor her above others? If I were to take another woman, she would be hurt, and I do not want to hurt her. His declaration has left everyone speechless. If a simple civilian had said this, he would be laughed at but it was the emperor of the country. He was strong, outstanding, handsome, and friendly. In addition, he was one of the most exceptional men in the world. Before, they still held bitterness towards Mo Linyuan, but after seeing the firmness in his eyes, the bitterness towards his ideologies gradually dissipated. Someone who dared to confront his own feelings, who was not shaken by his environment, and who dared to embrace new ideologies was truly powerful and admirable. At least for the Zhao country's princess, when she heard Mo Linyuan's words, her heartbeat fluttered for a long time. She had always been suppressed as a woman herself. The thought of him possibly indulging in her that way made her internally smile. So jealous. I am a royal princess and yet, I am so jealous of this other person. Chapter, 289. Finally charming her too. Yi Mu panicked and fled. The air in the palace hallways was suffocating. She just wanted to wash away her chaotic brain and calm down. The city boundary map it was the city boundary map. Obtaining the hidden treasures of the empires would make them the strongest country. If he had wanted it, he would have been able to create an empire, unite the central plains, and become the ruling sovereign for all eternity. Yet he didn't care about any of that at all. Even for him, it would have been a tremendous advantage, not only did someone plan to give him a woman, gifts, and treasures but he didn't accept any of it because of her. Sure enough, who would expect a man who refused temptations to become even more charming? Why did she have the sudden urge to rush in and kiss him? Seeing how Yi Mu had left, Mo Linyuan was a bit disappointed. He still had a lot he wanted to say but on the bright side, if the little gal wanted to escape, it could only mean that what he had already said had a strong impact on her. Mo Linyuan was accustomed to planning and never missed an opportunity when he saw one. Once Yi Mu had left, he didn't want to speak anymore. He just simply said he would let the other person reflect on exchanging the city boundary map for something else. The Zhao country's minister retreated quietly. Meanwhile all of the Mo country's chancellors were also thinking back to what he had said. 
Are all of their wives and concubines truly sad that they had married many spouses? But, so what if they were sad? Isn't it considered one of the greatest powers of men to have women fighting over them? They truly couldn't comprehend how His Majesty could come up with such an exotic idea. Yi Mu was lying on the bed, covering her head with a pillow. Why would he say that in front of so many people who wouldn't understand? And what's so great about it, it's more embarrassing. He couldn't have discovered my presence then right? Yi Mu rejected that possibility, there's no way. My internal power is too great, how could my presence be discovered? Ugh, this is so frustrating. Her face held a permanent blush on it. Being confessed to in front of everyone had really stimulated her tiny innocent heart. The moment Mo Lin Yuan returned, he saw Yi Mu's buried position. He smiled smugly. He dismissed the other servants before murmuring warmly, What happened to our little Muir? Could it be that our kiss in the washing room has made you really uncomfortable? Yi Mu jumped out of the blanket and angrily retorted, How did you not make any sound at all when you walked in? Mo Lin Yuan raised his eyebrows slightly, I was walking very loudly but am afraid someone's loud heartbeat made it so that she cannot hear anything else probably. Now, her face and neck turned red. Mo Lin Yuan thought that most likely even her skin under her clothes were also red. Mo Lin Yuan had really hit the target with his deductions. Right then, Yi Mu didn't know how to confront him and simply sat motionlessly on the bed. W what happened to Wire Princess then? She stuttered. Although she knew Mo Lin Yuan couldn't have changed his mind during the time frame of her absence, she wanted to hear him say it directly to her. Mo Lin Yuan walked over and cupped her face, my princess. But wouldn't my princess be you? How shameless. He is still trying to charm me. Yi Mu moved away from his hand, don't avoid the subject. Mo Lin Yuan's phoenix eyes blinked before he replied laughingly, of course I had to refuse the agreement. I already have my own little jar of vinegar with me. Although she is unaware of it yet, I cannot hurt her in that way. Tn, vinegar is another way of calling someone jealous. Who was he calling a jar of vinegar? Yi Mu was truly irritated. Chapter, 290 The Encounter 1 She swore, even if he was to marry another princess, she would never stop them. Yi Mu was unwilling to admit it but while Mo Lin Yuan was coaxing and comforting her, it made her a little bit happy. How frustrating. I must ignore him. Yi Mu turned around, but muttered, since you didn't agree to marriage what are you going to do now? She still remembered that they possessed the city boundary map. Mo Lin Yuan leaned over and hugged her from behind. With a little pressure, the two of them fell on the bed and stacked like spoons. He said with an exhausted voice. If it was the authentic city boundary map, I will make sure to obtain it. Yi Mu could feel how motionless and tense he was. He whispered underneath his breath. If I was able to obtain the map for you, how are you going to thank me for it? Yi Mu immediately broke out of her daze, you would be able to acquire the long-awaited treasures with the map. It would already be a great reward for you. Are you truly asking me for even more compensation? Of course Mo Lin Yuan sullenly muttered in her ear, if you don't give me yourself, I don't want it. Besides, I don't really care about the treasures and things of those sorts. Yi Mu was finally able to calm her heart down. But feeling the warm breath in her ear she turned around and pushed on Mo Lin Yuan's chest. Let's speak properly, there's no need for you to be so close to me. She had big, round eyes then, which made her look even cuter and more aggrieved. It really made others want to take a bite of her. He stifled a laugh. Mo Lin Yuan was laying on his side while holding her hand. Are you nervous when I am too close to you? W who's nervous? Mo Lin Yuan quickly hugged her waist and pulled her into his arms, chuckling. If you aren't nervous, then try to relax a little bit. I like hugging you. It's very comfortable. Why Yu Yi Mu was left tongue-tied. Mo Lin Yuan took advantage of that and changed the subject. What were we just discussing again? Right, the city boundary map. I don't really want any of the treasures. Little Muir, truthfully we don't really have any dire need for the treasures. Yi Mu immediately stood on alert. She gazed at Mo Lin Yuan's chest as she spoke cautiously. Not true. If we didn't obtain the treasures, how are you going to rule over the central plains in the future? How are you going to become the emperor for all eternity? 
Mo Linyuan raised his eyebrows inquisitively, I never said I wanted to be the emperor for all eternity. He looked down at Yi Mu, are you saying that you can foresee that I would become the emperor for all eternity or that you hope that I can become the emperor for all eternity? His godlike face suddenly appeared extremely close. Yi Mu could feel herself become breathless by his handsome presence. W.L. That's of course. Of course what? M.O. Linyuan was lying on his side, supporting his jaw with one hand, and his eyes were inspecting her. Yi Mu's heart pounded. She closed her eyes and yelled, Of course I hope that you can become the emperor for all eternity. Oh so it was something you hoped for M.O. Linyuan raised Yi Mu's chin with his other hand. There was a deep, mesmerizing light shining brilliantly deep within his eyes. If it was something you hope for then I will certainly achieve it. I am so obedient, little Muir, wouldn't you reward me with a kiss? His voice faded at the end. Without waiting for her answer, his thin lips were already pressed against Yi Mu's lips. It was very light and warm. He was extremely gentle as their breath meld together. At that moment, Yi Mu felt that she simply wanted to be engulfed by Mo Lin Yuan's tenderness. No she flinched by abruptly, as she broke away from the warm, gentle trap. Despite obviously being someone who had great internal strength, she was waving her paws like a helpless rabbit. You can't do this you can't I am not someone from this world I must go back. Chapter, 291 The Encounter 2 It may seem like she was telling him, but it was more like she was reminding herself that. How she cannot fall into this or else she wouldn't be able to climb back out. Hearing Yi Mu say she wanted to leave, Mo Linyuan showed signs of extreme displeasure but within seconds he hit it with a smile. He simply continued to lie on his side while he said in a seductive voice. What can't I do? He asked softly, I can't kiss you or I can't use terms of endearments with you. But it is quite unfortunate that I have already seen your body and have kissed your lips many times before. Wouldn't it be too late to say that we cannot do that now? Yi Mu was dumbstruck and simply glared at him. That's true, she had never refused his advances before. Which meant she had accepted his presence in her heart. She had been enjoying the tenderness and love he gave her. She had already fallen. Ah. No, she won't accept this fact. As Yi Mu was running away fearfully, the group from the Zhao country had already settled themselves into the imperial palace. The palace was mostly empty with not a lot of people around. After settling down, the Zhao minister said with a headache. The M.O. country's emperor truly doesn't want any money. He simply wants one woman or could it be he thinks we have ulterior motives? At that moment, only the Zhao princess was in the room with him. She was Zhao Minyu, a princess known for her intelligence and talents in martial arts. Yet, Zhao Mingyu had a perplexed expression then. I feel, he probably simply only wants to marry one woman Zhao Mingyu frowned in displeasure, I don't think he is lying. How can there be such a person? The Zhao minister exclaimed furiously. He then sat at the table and poured himself a glass of water to drink. If he continues to refuse to marry you, what are we going to do? Zhao Minyu remembered her current situation and gradually turned pale. She contemplated Mo Linyuan's godlike appearance, his gentleness, and his deeply ingrained nobility finally, she gritted through her teeth. In that case, let's refuse his proposition of exchanging the city boundary map. Just give me a few days. I don't believe that there truly isn't a man in this world in which his heart cannot be swayed. The minister replied, yes, let us refuse him. But princess must act quickly. There isn't much time left for us. Zhao Minyu nodded. She got up and walked out the door. I don't think the guards are very stringent around here. I will check the perimeters to see if I can find anything. The minister nodded, please be careful princess. While Zhao Minyu headed out, Yi Mu on the other hand was also just arriving at the place where the Zhao minister dwelled. Because the city boundary map was very important, Mo Linyuan didn't let them stay in the hospitality section. But rather, he let them directly stay within the palace to show sincerity. She kept wandering outside, not knowing what exactly made her head in this direction. Could it be her desire to steal the map? But they wouldn't have any of the dowry treasures with them. Just as Yi Mu was about to turn around, she suddenly encountered someone ahead who demanded, Who's there? Yi Mu raised her head and saw that it was the Zhao princess dressed in men's clothing. Zhao Mingyu was always someone who remained alert. However, 
This child held such a soft expression. Yi Mu looked deceptively innocent and cute then. Even if she was already 14 years old, she looked more like she was 12 years old at most. That was also the reason why Mo Linyuan was patient waiting for her to grow up. Chapter 292 What's the plan? 1. Zhao Mingyu scrutinized her, are you a palace maid? Despite asking, she doubted this. Although Yi Mu wore a simple dress, her eyes shined with the light of a princess. She must have a higher status. Zhao Mingyu didn't hear about Mo Linyuan having a little sister who was this girl. It didn't occur to Princess Zhao that Yi Mu could be Mo Linyuan's woman because she looked so young. What's more, she heard that his woman was very powerful and she didn't sense even a hint of internal force from this girl. Yi Mu mumbled, I I am the adopted daughter of the Empress Dowager. There were many loopholes in her forged identity but it didn't raise the suspicion of Zhao Mingyu because other countries wouldn't know about trivial matters such as the Queen Dowager adopting a daughter. Zhao Mingyu became more relaxed as her eyes flashed with a calculative glint. Adopted daughter? Then, what are you doing here? She thought to herself, this adopted daughter seemed to be living a decent life. Not only did she receive the title of a princess, but she was also fairly young. She felt this girl was favored, but simply asked a question to be sure of her inference. Yi Mu retreated one step, I heard that someone came to visit the palace. So, I wanted to secretly come by and see who it is. Yi Mu's statement made Zhao Mingyu more certain that Yi Mu was highly favored because she was able to freely walk wherever she wanted in the palace. In the Zhao country, Zhao Mingyu didn't have this privilege. Indeed, even if the Mo country's royal family bloodline was dying, there were still advantages to being a member of the family, as the rules were more slack for the remaining members. Zhao Mingyu mused over this before squatting down to look at Yi Mu, in someone from the Zhao country. Would you like me to play with you? Yi Mu remembered how she was sent by the Zhao country to marry Mo Linyuan. It upset her, but she also wanted to know more about this person. And so, they both walked to the Imperial Garden Lakeside. Evidently, any maid they walked past would greet them before retreating respectfully. No one dared to question the stranger Yi Mu brought with her. Zhao Mingyu glanced over at Yi Mu it would seem she was favored way more than she had thought. As the two of them became more familiar with each other. After sharing about some of Zhao country's unique customs, Zhao Mingyu suddenly asked. Your Highness, I have a question I was hoping you can secretly tell me. Yi Mu frowned, ask away. Zhao Mingyu knew nothing about how crafty Yi Mu was, so she asked directly. I heard that His Majesty cares deeply and loves only one person for many years do you happen to know what kind of outstanding beauty Miss Yi Mu has? Yi Mu glanced over at Zhao Mingyu's bright and good-natured face compared to her own lovable and tiny meaty face she felt dejected, she isn't very pretty. Zhao Mingyu was confused not very pretty. Then how did she receive so many years of favoritism? She bluntly asked her inner thoughts, what's so special about her then? She frowned and frantically stated, I want to be able to share more information about His Majesty with our Princess Zhao. After all, it is the man she may possibly spend the rest of her life with. Your Highness is also a woman, you should also be able to sympathize. As Yi Mu hears this, she muttered under her breath, she's fairly mediocre. She said this because she realized, although she had helped Mo Lin Yuan all these years, a big part of it was him and his own hard work. Realizing this, she felt that she was truly useless. What exactly does Mo Lin Yuan like about her? He couldn't be thinking about repaying her kindness with gratitude and favor, right? He couldn't be mistaking this feeling of gratitude as romantic love, right? Yi Mu's words deeply confused Zhao Mingyu. How could this mediocre woman stand out to his majesty? She hesitantly replied, I thought Miss Yi Mu was truly a special woman why else would his majesty love her so much? Yi Mu shouted angrily, maybe he's blind. Zhao Mingyu was left speechless. It would seem, perhaps this Yi Mu truly wasn't anything special or rather could this little adopted daughter have had a bad history with Yi Mu? It may be possible to take advantage of this. Chapter 293 What's the plan? 2. When Yi Mu noticed she was very quiet, she also felt that what she said had crossed the line a little. She asked, What about you? Why does the Zhao country want to marry their princess away? Moreover, Yi Mu heard that this princess was highly favored in the Zhao country. 
what could be the reason for marrying her off so far away from home? Did she really like Mo Linyuan that much? Zhao Mingyu paused for a moment before she quickly said, at that time, the emperor was looking to choose someone who would win the heart of the general public. Moreover, the other princesses didn't want to marry far away from home. As a result, our princess, being the eldest, took on the responsibility and duty of undertaking this marriage. Besides, the Mo country's emperor is known as the greatest man among men. I feel that our princess would be happy to marry him. Yi Mu couldn't help but ask, do you truly think that Mo Linyuan is a good man? Zhao Mingyu frowned, your highness, how could you use his majesty's name so disrespectfully like that? Yi Mu snorted, I have always called him by his name. Zhao Mingyu regarded Yi Mu intensely, it would seem that your highness has a really good relationship with his majesty. Yi Mu said sullenly, you haven't answered my question yet. Yu Yu only met Mo Linyuan once. How would you know if he's a good guy? Zhao Mingyu recalled when she first saw Mo Linyuan's outstanding manners and appearance as he spoke her face felt a little hot as she replied. He has such an outstanding character. Who would possibly think that he is not a good man? A good man? What's so good about him? Yi Mu was truly irritated. She couldn't believe that Mo Linyuan had unknowingly seduced and captured the heart of the Zhao country's princess. Yi Mu suddenly exclaimed resentfully, just know that when you do get the chance to approach him, he isn't as good as you think. Zhao Mingyu's eyes flashed. She laughingly replied, I am an ordinary furrig minister. I'm afraid I wouldn't get the opportunity to get close to his majesty. Yi Mu replied, it's not that hard. Here, just follow me. With that said, she marched ahead with confidence. Zhao Mingyu hesitated momentarily before she followed her. It would seem this adopted princess was truly favored. Since she was disguised as a state official. Presumably, she is simply following the order of the favored adopted princess. As such, she wouldn't be punished, so she continued trailing behind the girl. In truth, she really wanted to see Mo Linyuan. Even if it was just one encounter, she was very certain that she could change his mind. What's more, Yi Mu herself was directly escorting her. Firstly, she felt that Zhao Mingyu was very suspicious. Secondly, she felt this princess had a very naive perception of Mo Linyuan. That's to say, Zhao Mingyu was not someone easy to deal with. Once she gets the opportunity to meet Mo Linyuan, if he truly could resist her charms, then Yi Mu wouldn't be so torn anymore. Yi Mu finally made up her mind. And so, suppressing her unease, she took Zhao Mingyu directly into the inner palace. At this time, Mo Linyuan should be in the royal study room as he still had a lot of daily tasks to finish. Once Yi Mu escorted her to the destination, she said to the princess, I can let you meet with Mo Linyuan, but whether you can hold an audience with him is all on you. Zhao Mingyu was astonished to see how easy it was to meet him. Did any of the guards walking to and fro not see them come in? Isn't the status of this simple adopted princess a little bit too formidable? Zhao Mingyu nodded, this official is forever grateful to your highness. I now have this one opportunity to discuss what I really need to with his majesty. Chapter, 294 The reason why she must get married one. Yi Mu nodded her head. She guided Zhao Mingyu inside and commanded the servants. All of you are dismissed. Zhao Mingyu, who stood behind her, witnessed this and realized, they should have only listened to the emperor's orders and yet, they all retreated respectfully without arguing. Right then, Zhao Mingyu started to have doubts about Yi Mu's identity. How could a mere favored adopted princess have this much power? But when she saw Yi Mu's small innocent face, her doubts dissipated. Perhaps, since very few members of the imperial family remained, the rules were made more lenient. Besides, they probably don't have as many rules as the Zhao country. As everyone else left, Yi Mu escorted Zhao Mingyu into the imperial study room. On the way there, Zhao Mingyu looked at the heavy doorway in amazement. Although there weren't that many people around, the palace alone was magnificent. The outer corridor had carvings and paintings all around, while the inside was just as beautiful. Zhao Mingyu admired the intricate pearls that weaved into the dragon pillars in the corners. It made her think back to her Zhao country, those large pearls would have been stolen by the consorts. Yet, in the Mo country, the pearls embedded in the dragon columns were used to illuminate the night, making it possible to see. 
while she followed alongside Yimou, she got lost in her own thoughts. Truthfully, before Mo Linyuan returned to the Mo country, the country was withering under the influence of the aristocratic families and the Empress Dowager. But ever since Mo Linyuan slowly gained power, the Mo country unexpectedly began to prosper. Especially these past few years, after Mo Linyuan gained complete control of the imperial court, the Mo country's economy developed at a rapid rate. Rare goods that were unheard of before such as ceramic glaze, paper, etc. became hot commodities in other countries. Even if they didn't have these products, Mo Linyuan still had the ability to annex other countries. She was deep in thought when Yimou stopped in her steps and stated. He's inside. I have already dismissed everyone. If you want to enter, you can go right ahead. Zhao Mingyu hesitated, you are not coming with me. Yi Mu's lips twitched, I don't feel like seeing him right now. You can rest assured, as long as you don't anger him, he won't do anything to you. Whatever, whether you enter or not is your choice. After saying this, Yi Mu turned and left. At that moment, Yi Mu was testing her to see what she would do. If Zhao Mingyu had left with her, she felt Zhao Mingyu was only an average princess. However, if she dared to go inside, that would mean she is not afraid to die and someone who doesn't fear death wasn't someone that would easily fall in love at first sight. Sure enough, Zhao Mingyu only hesitated for a second. Seeing how Yi Mu appeared to leave without a care in the world, she never expected this opportunity to come so easily and wanted to take advantage of it. Zhao Mingyu grinded her teeth as she stretched out her hand to enter. She thought that if she really does run into any danger, she would simply expose her identity. Currently, she is aware Mo Linyuan wanted to obtain the city boundary map. Therefore, he wouldn't be able to harm her. She pushed open the grand entrance and walked in. It was very quiet inside Yimu stated that everyone had been dismissed, but did everyone truly leave? Is this a prank? Was the emperor not actually inside? Otherwise, how could these people dare to leave? Were they not afraid of being absent when the emperor tried to summon them? Wrapped in confusion, she opened the last door and entered. Upon entering, her feet landed on a very thick, golden silk rug. This sensation made her reluctant to lift her feet. It reminded her of the wonderful sensation of walking on the soft dirts in a garden in her past. Is that a minister from the Zhao country? A voice resounded unexpectedly from deep within. Zhao Mingyu looked up intently and saw it was Imo Linyuan. He was standing in front of the imperial records and reading through some documents. Chapter 295 The Reason Why She Must Get Married Too Right then, he appeared to have changed into a white outfit and was scrutinizing her intently. And yet, he didn't kick her out immediately. She didn't think she would really see the emperor inside. Zhao Mingyu's heart increased its tempo. Quickly, she approached and greeted him. Greetings to your majesty. Yes, the adopted daughter of the Empress Dowager has escorted me here. It is because I had something important to discuss with you. Mo Linyuan recalled how the guards from before reported to him that Yi Mu had gone to see Zhao Mingyu. He chuckled lightly. This little girl was a lot more rash than he had thought. Could she make it any more obvious what she was trying to do? Regardless, it didn't bother him because it proved that he held a place in her heart. Realizing this, Mo Linyuan simply smiled and asked good-naturedly. And what business do you have with me? Seeing how well-mannered Mo Linyuan was, Zhao Mingyu pursed her lips before she unexpectedly took her headpiece off and let her ink-like hair spiral down. In a split second, she exposed herself to Mo Linyuan and exclaimed. Please forgive me your majesty, but I am not a minister. I am the princess that was supposed to be engaged to you Zhao Mingyu. Mo Linyuan raised his eyebrows slightly. He didn't have any intention of exposing her, but now this development made it even more interesting. And what exactly does this princess want to say to this sovereign? With this question, Zhao Mingyu abruptly knelt down in a blink. Yi Mu, who was peeping from the rooftop, was caught by surprise by this sudden action. She was uncertain, what exactly did this princess want? Will Mo Linyuan accept her proposal? Zhao Minyu exclaimed, Your Majesty, I won't beat around the bush. Her eyes held hints of redness, I am the eldest daughter of the Zhao imperial family. I have always been called the favored princess. My mother, the imperial concubine, only had me as a daughter. 
As a result, the burden of all her hopes and dreams are solely mine to carry. Therefore, in Zhao country I was raised to be very strong-willed and aggressive. That way no one will bully me. Her words matched with what Mo Linyuan found in his investigations. It was reported that this princess received quite a bit of favoritism as well as having a strong-willed personality. He signaled with his finger, go on. Zhao Mingyu saw how calm and collected Mo Linyuan looked. She was thrown off by this, but continued speaking. Moreover, the only ones that were suitable for this distant arranged marriage was me and the current daughter of the Empress. She is also my little sister. Originally, it was supposed to be my sister who was to be married, but the Empress refused. As a result, she used my mother to convince me to take on this marriage instead. In addition, she said that as long as I promised to marry in her daughter's place, my mother would be able to live a fulfilling life for her remaining time with someone there to take care of her. However, if I refused, she said that even if she couldn't mess with me, she would make my mother, a simple concubine in the harem, suffer something even worse than death itself. Her eyes were swollen as she spoke anxiously. That's why I came. Before arriving, my father, the emperor, told me that this marriage must be accomplished. Because the MO country was developing so quickly, my father wanted to form a good relationship with your country. That is why I came with the intention of never going back. She raised her eyes and locked them with Mo Linyuans, I know that your majesty only has Miss Yi Mu in your heart. But I will not ask for much. I just simply ask that your majesty accepts to receive me. You can even keep me at a distance. As long as the marriage between the two countries is accomplished as long as I can stay here that is all I ask. I hope your majesty can agree to this request. Chapter, 296 A Blunder 1 She repeatedly kowtowed. This frank and straightforward individual was truly not like any other woman. Yi Mu was feeling uneasy. This Zhao Mingyu had it all, status, attractiveness, a big dowry, even the city boundary map what's more, she seemed to know her place and was not greedy. Seeing this, Yi Mu felt somewhat vexed as she reclined on the rooftop. She was truly unhappy about this. Mo Linyuan was also quiet as he tapped his finger on the dragon handle. Meanwhile, Zhao Mingyu felt her heart being squeezed by his insistent tapping. She had said these words after careful considerations. All exceptional men had one weakness in common these types of men felt they needed to be obeyed, submitted to, and supported. Yet she had to do the opposite with Mo Linyuan, if she was to pique his interest, she could only say that she would leave him alone and keep her distance. She tried to conceal her inner thoughts, as she claimed resolutely that she only wanted a place to live, not caring about her status or even her husband. Her goal was to employ reverse psychology on the other person and try to achieve her goal. Just as she claimed, as long as she had a way in, he would be given power over two countries and the city boundary map. Even if he was putting on the act of loving Yi Mu more than treasures, he couldn't possibly refuse this offer she made. As long as he accepted her she would then become Mo Linyuan's woman in name. Then, sooner or later she would make it so that she would become his woman in reality. It was known how her mother was known for her beauty and enjoyed many years of favoritism. Therefore she was mentored by her mother, who was very experienced, on how best to deal with an emperor. As a result, although she was on her knees begging, she was very calm internally because she felt that she would be able to obtain the result she wanted. You said as long as you are married and living here, you don't care about anything else, am I right? Hearing Mo Linyuan's unexpected comment, Zhao Mingyu's eyes shined brightly. Meanwhile, Yi Mu who was on the rooftop clenched her little hands tightly. This Zhao Mingyu was clearly suspicious in nature. That damned Mo Linyuan couldn't possibly be agreeing to it, right? Zhao Mingyu rushed to speak. As long as I can stay in this country, I won't ask for anything more. Mo Linyuan smiled as his phoenix eyes narrowed lightly, then that's good to hear. Zhao Mingyu frowned in confusion. She then heard his next statement. If it's just marriage, why don't we arrange it between you and an esteemed minister of the Mo country? Besides, if the Zhao country's monarch genuinely wants to connect us by marriage, then I will happily play the matchmatcher Yu Lao for you. Tn, Yu Lao a well-known Chinese deity who tied couples together with a red string, as a way of match-matching. Zhao Mingyu froze. She couldn't believe what she heard. This Mo Linyuan wanted both her dowry and city boundary map yet he refused to accept her. How can this be? 
Yi Mu couldn't help but giggle quietly. The doubt was lifted and she instantly felt happier. It took a moment before Zhao Mingyu found her voice again, this. That's not right. Your Majesty, my father required that I must get married to you. Not someone else. Not letting Zhao Mingyu finish speaking, M.O. Linyuan interjected with displeasure, you said yourself that if you could stay in the M.O. country and get married you wouldn't ask for anything else. You are a young and beautiful lady, how can I let you wither away in the imperial concubine harem? I will support you. With the exception of me, you can marry whomever you please. Do you not like this kind sincerity I offer? Chapter, 297 A Blunder 2 M.O. Linyuan's words left her speechless. Hmm, unless were you lying about your previous statement? Faced with M.O. Linyuan's sudden accusation, Zhao Mingyu had no way of taking back her previous words. Now, M.O. Linyuan took her words and was using it against her. It would seem, she had underestimated this man. M.O. Linyuan, noticing her silence, chuckled lightly, you should head back. Don't forget that no one can spit false sincerity in front of me after all, I am nothing like the Zhao country's monarch. His explicit warning made Zhao Mingyu grind her teeth angrily. She remained silent as she retreated respectfully. But her heart held resentment that grew bigger and bigger. She has made a blunder. Having rushed to make these claims, it was no wonder M.O. Linyuan became suspicious of her. She was too impatient. Indeed, M.O. Linyuan was more difficult to deal with than she had thought. Next time, she has to be extra careful. After Zhao Mingyu departed, M.O. Linyuan continued to read the book he had. Although he knew that Yi Mu was spying on him, he didn't care. His suspicions were confirmed that Yi Mu, though she herself is unaware, actually cared for him with more than that of a friendly feeling. Now that Zhao Mingyu has left, that little girl probably went to follow her. With this in mind, M.O. Linyuan held a light smirk as he continued to evaluate the account books. M.O. Linyuan had deduced correctly. Yi Mu was indeed following Zhao Mingyu. Zhao Mingyu was muttering about M.O. Linyuan under her breath. The moment she returned, she must find someone to deliberate with. She needs to know how best to retaliate. On her way back, everyone seemed to be greeting Zhao Mingyu in advance as they stared holes into her. Right then, as Zhao Mingyu returned their stare, she felt this palace was truly bizarre. Thankfully, she had a very good memory and knew where she was currently dwelling. The Zhao country's minister was super worried as Zhao Minyu was gone for so long. The moment he saw her, he exclaimed. Princess! Where have you been? Zhao Mingyu rushed to silence him. Once she saw that no one around overhead him, she then replied firmly. I was talking to M.O. Linyuan just now. What? The minister couldn't believe it, how were you able to meet him? There are so many imperial guards in this palace. And yet you! Zhao Mainjiu frowned. Right then, she exuded her imposing presence as the eldest princess, which was completely different from the aura she gave off in front of M.O. Linyuan. It's not important how I was able to meet him. What's important is, I have already exposed my identity as princess to M.O. Linyuan. I also told him that I didn't want any fam, didn't want to be spoiled, and asked that he give me an opportunity to remain with him yet what I can't believe is that he actually refused my request. What? But princess why didn't you discuss this with us first? But truly, how could that M.O. Linyuan refuse you? Could it be that you've accidentally revealed the truth, and so he refused you? Zhao Mingyu recalled M.O. Linyuan's last warning statement and scowled, that is a possibility. I was too impatient. Had I known M.O. Linyuan was this difficult to handle, I would have been more cautious. After she finished recounting her story, the whole room held a hushed silence. So, what now? The mini stored asked, if M.O. Linyuan truly won't marry you, then we cannot accomplish our mission. This, Zhao Mingyu was well aware of. She grimaced, don't worry, we still have time to think of a solution. I don't believe there is such a thing as an impenetrable man in this world. Even if he already has a beloved, there has to be a weakness. The minister also agreed, princess is truly brilliant. Your highness will definitely come up with a solution. I will follow the princess lead, and act according to your highness order. Zhao Mingyu nodded, evidently, there is fault in the information you guys provided. M.O. Linyuan is not the only royal family member remaining. 
The MO country also has another royal family member, a princess. Didn't you guys know anything about her? Chapter 298 What's her goal? 1. Realistically, that princess was so favored that there was no way that Zhao Mingyu hadn't heard of her before. What's more, those sent to find information on Yimu also came empty-handed. To her surprise, how could such an important figure not have any news to discover? It was truly infuriating. When the minister first heard this, he frowned in confusion because they most definitely investigated as thoroughly as they can before arriving. With the exception of Yimu, everything else about the M.O. country was investigated. It was a well-known fact that M.O. Linyuan was truly the one one returning of the royal bloodline. The others were killed by the Empress Dowager. How could there suddenly emerge an unexpected adopted princess? But he then came to a realization that made his face morph completely. This minister confirmed that there is only one royal member left in the M.O. country. But, there is definitely one woman with a status that is no less than that of a princess and that would be Yi Mu. Princess, could it be that you've met Yi Mu? From the rooftop, Yi Mu smirked. Although she was discovered, she was still feeling smug with how things turned out so far. Although this Zhao Mingyu's martial art wasn't bad, it is nothing compared to Yi Mu's. What? Zhao Mingyu shot out of her seat. As she pondered on this, her face turned unsightly. But that Yi Mu she looked so young. Are you sure she's 14 years old? I thought she was at most 12 years old. Did you guys find false news? A guy like Mo Linyuan he couldn't possibly love a young girl like that, right? Zhao Mingyu couldn't even fathom this. The minister frowned, it cannot be wrong. We may not be able to find out specific information about Yi Mu, but the favored woman by the MO country's monarch can only be her. That's just Zhao Mingyu was left speechless. That Yi Mu actually lied to her with her innocent face, and Zhao Mingyu had no idea. No wonder she was named MO Linyuan's deeply rooted beloved. What should we do now? Princess, hopefully you didn't reveal anything to Yi Mu. Zhao Mingyu shook her head, she didn't ask me anything so I recklessly let me guard down. But, only is M.O. Linyuan very difficult to deal with, to add on this cunning Yi Mu. She clenched her fist and suddenly feared she may fail to accomplish her mission. The minister also held some doubt, but he still believed in his own princess. Don't be discouraged, princess. You are talented, naturally beautiful, literate, and capable of martial arts. Clearly, you are way better than that Yi Mu. Besides, you also said that Yi Mu is very young, so then she and Mo Linyuan cannot officially become a couple yet. You still have a chance. What he said was not unreasonable. Regardless of how Mo Linyuan and Yi Mu's love may seem more solid than gold, they still haven't gone all the way with each other. There is still a chance. After all, men would always treat the first woman they've been with differently. Zhao Mingyu nodded, it would seem we have to be more careful next time. Come closer. She beckoned him over to whisper a few words into the minister's ear. Their voices were too low for Yi Mu to hear clearly. But it didn't matter, she is confident they will be able to thwart their plans like soldiers who can block the water from flooding the lands. It would seem this princess who has come here to Mo country had some secrets she cannot tell anyone. If Yi Mu remembered correctly, this princess was supposed to have become the empress of the Zhao country. Yet, she was now a princess married off far away, which was truly weird. The moment Yi Mu returned, she saw Mo Linyuan was still reading through the account books. It was almost supper time, yet he was still working so diligently. The monarchs from other countries had never done early daily assessments of cases like Mo Linyuan. Take for example the Yun country's monarch, it was said that he never attended any early assessments. Compared to the Mo country, Mo Linyuan made sure to attend them daily with skillful execution of the task at hand. It was most likely because other people are unable to put in as much effort as he does. You've returned. M.O. Linyuan looked up and saw Yi Mu's dazed look. He got up, walked over, and started brushing her skirt clean. Were you climbing on the roof tiles? You're covered in dirt. Chapter 299 What's her goal? 2. Yi Mu was a little embarrassed as she looked down at her skirt. She remembered what she had eavesdropped on and quickly told Mo Linyuan what she had heard. Mo Linyuan listened to her intently. 
Right then Yi Mu became aware that she was acting like a child seeking approval. After she finished reporting her findings, Yi Mu looked up and asked, I don't think Xiao Mingyu is the type of woman to act recklessly for love just what is her reason for wanting to stay and get married to you? Mo Linyuan replied, It isn't hard to guess why. He took Yi Mu's hand and guided her to sit with him on the dragon seat. He then guided her to sit on his lap. You probably are not aware of the current situation in Zhao country. Let me explain to you so that you can understand what is going on. Yi Mu was intrigued by his words. Therefore, she sat obediently on his leg. Mo Linyuan held a hint of a smile in his eyes. Evidently, Little Muir still hadn't noticed, but she was starting to get used to his touches. He stated, what Zhao Mingyu said before was only half of the truth. Although she is the daughter of a concubine, because she is highly favored and held a significant status in the Zhao country, she was equivalent to a prince in the palace. Yi Mu asked in bewilderment, if she held such a high status, why is she in this arranged marriage? Mo Linyuan soothingly stroked her long hair with his hand, I don't know the specific reason. But this arranged marriage was definitely something she initiated. Mo Linyuan's phoenix eyes narrowed, before he laughingly replied, the city boundary map was also something she asked her father, the emperor, to find for her. So what exactly is she trying to achieve? Hearing this, Yi Mu found it strange. As she tried to decipher the truth, she reiterated. You just said that, her status was equivalent to that of a prince in Zhao country. Mo Linyuan nodded. You also said that she was searching for the city boundary map that could only mean, she knew early on that you were looking for the map. Mo Linyuan didn't reply and simply smiled. Yi Mu bit her lower lip and scrunched her brows, that could only mean, you possess something that she wants. That's why she is willingly giving up her higher status in Zhao country to engage in this arranged marriage proposal that way, she can acquire the thing that is even more valuable than a highly valued princess status and that could only be the emperor status and the other pieces of the city boundary map. Mo Linyuan didn't interrupt her as Yi Mu continued to guess. She probably prepared two strategies, the first option would be to seduce you and become the empress of Mo country. But, she has never met you before so she doesn't have complete confidence in achieving this, so she would have another plan prepared. The second option would be, after she got married, and you have obtained the whole city boundary map, you would then seek out the treasures she would then try to contribute to the discovery of the treasures and win your trust that way she would then be able to possess the treasure. Mo Linyuan smiled smugly, smart little Muir. But what she wants, is much more than that. Ha! Huh. Yi Mu looked over at him. But what she saw was his deep endless pupils that would cause others' hearts to palpate. It is nothing you have to be concerned about. What you need to worry about is eating more and growing up faster. With that said, Mo Linyuan leaned forward and embraced Yi Mu. She then took notice that the food had arrived and was already laid out. The dining room table was filled to the brim with dishes and wine but, to have him hug her like while she ate, was just too embarrassing. Chapter, 300 Summoned to watch a performance one. Yi Mu wanted to get off his lap, but Mo Linyuan stopped her. He said with a smile, relax, no one would dare judge you. As he said this, the well-trained palace servants lowered their heads even more. Her face flushed red, but she didn't struggle anymore. Then, I want to feed myself. She absolutely refused to be fed by Mo Linyuan. Mo Linyuan snickered and suddenly stated, did you know, Zhao Mingyu actually dared to come here. She came with the intention to raise her own status. Yet why would she do that, despite already knowing I have someone I loved? Yi Mu froze. That's because my beloved has always fled from me and hasn't grown up yet. As people here know, I also have not done anything with her. Naturally, others would try to take advantage of this. Wouldn't you agree? Yi Mu pondered, Zhao Mingyu seemed familiar about the situation here. Yet, how did he decipher her intentions? Mo Linyuan signaled his hands telling his servant to bring the Zhao princess here to join their meal. He then continued to say. You probably are curious about how I know about her intention. Yi Mu nodded. Mo Linyuan replied, then you must first cooperate with me. Help me eliminate the princess' interest in me. I truly don't want to be taken away by another woman. Yi Mu's face couldn't help but burn bright red again. Not only did this guy like to confess publicly, but also like to do it at any opportunity he gets. 
Soon after, the Zhao official and Zhao Mingyu arrived. Zhao Mingyu was aware that, now that her identity was exposed, it was to be expected that Imo Linyuan would summon her. But she assumed this meal was going to be punitive or a way to find out more about the city boundary map. She soon realized, she truly had no idea what exactly M.O. Linyuan was thinking at all. Evidently, when she saw how M.O. Linyuan was holding Yi Mu at the table, the spectacle surprised her to the point that she forgot to greet them. Guessing was one thing, but actually seeing Yi Mu sitting directly in M.O. Linyuan's embrace was another. The public display of affection made it very clear that she was M.O. Linyuan's beloved. She had thought Yi Mu would want to hide this fact. What exactly are they scheming to do next? Zhao Mingyu and the minister greeted them before Mo Linyuan instructed them to sit down. Once seated, Mo Linyuan apologized on Yi Mu's behalf, Princess Zhao, I sincerely apologize. My little Muir is very timid. When a stranger approaches her, she wouldn't dare confess the truth. Now that you see her here, Princess Zhao wouldn't blame her for concealing her identity right? How could Zhao Mingyu dare to blame her? What's more, it almost felt like Mo Linyuan's sentences were pointing all accusations towards her. She hurriedly replied, I wouldn't dare. Miss Yi is truly exceptionally intelligent and lovable. Earlier before, when I wanted to meet with your majesty and didn't know how I have Miss Yi to thank for helping me arrange the meeting. She just didn't know if Yimu truly had a big heart or was just confident in her relationship that she would actually take her to go see Mo Linyuan now that she thought about it, maybe it could have been a test. Yi Mu realized that Zhao Mingyu addressed herself as I each time, which was truly not common in the M.O. country, but she didn't change that. It would seem she was fairly cocky and was unwilling to put herself down for anyone. Truly, this person sent to seduce M.O. Linyuan was extremely fishy. M.O. Linyuan nodded, please get comfortable, no need to be stiff. I invited you today especially to apologize to the princess for Little Muir's previous rudeness. This apology is too grand, your majesty. I am not worthy. Zhao Mingyu's gut tells her that this was a lot more complicated than she may think. Mo Linyuan didn't give her a hard time. He simply openly started to move his chopsticks and feasted. Chapter, 301 Summoned to watch a performance too. Right then, because Mo Linyuan didn't say anything, Zhao Mingyu also didn't dare speak. She glanced at the official, who swallowed his food with difficulty and nervousness. Mo Linyuan fed Yi Mu a piece of fried meat with his chopsticks. Originally, Yi Mu was very resistant. However, remembering Mo Linyuan's previous words, she felt guilty and wanted to play along with his performance. Besides, Mo Linyuan also said that if she didn't want this woman to be stuck on him, she would have to help him. With this in mind, Yi Mu ate the food he fed her. Mo Linyuan smugly asked, is it tasty? Yimu nodded, then pointed her finger arrogantly, I want to eat fish. Mo Linyuan didn't refute and simply picked up the piece of fish. He removed the bones before feeding it to Yimu. Yimu looked at him and smiled. Her natural mannerism made it seem like Mo Linyuan had always fed her like this. In truth, Mo Linyuan was truly ecstatic at that moment. He wanted to do this for a long time now, but Little Muir never cooperated due to how embarrassing it was. Now, seeing how someone else was interested in him, she was willing to cooperate in order to warn off the enemy. Even though she wouldn't admit to it, her behavior has long betrayed her true feelings. On the other side, Zhao Mingyu could hardly swallow her food down as she witnessed how magnificent Mo Linyuan was. She couldn't help but like him even more. Right then she had two thoughts running through her mind, conquer Mo Linyuan and obtain the city boundary map. In the past when she first saw him at the imperial court, she had hidden affections for him. If she didn't truly understand her feelings and what exactly she wanted, she wouldn't be able to sit there so calmly as she did. She reflected intently, could it be that Mo Linyuan summoned her here in order to let her see just how much the two of them were in love with each other? Impossible. Mo Linyuan isn't that simple-minded. Every move he makes has significance to it. Or could it be he realized that she wanted to make a move against Yimu, and so he wanted to show Yimu affections to warn her off? Realizing this, Zhao Mingyu trembled to the point that she almost dropped her pair of chopsticks. At that time, Mo Linyuan was still feeding Yimu another bite. Right then Yimu had a smile on her face, but her eyes were full of hidden signals, enough already. 
she is going to die from all this sappy romance. Enough of this back and forth. She is not sure if the other person got the message yet, but she has reached her limit. Mo Linyuan raised his eyebrows lightly, you don't like the soup. Then, what would you like to eat? I will instruct someone to make it for you. Yi Mu couldn't help but smile pompously, no, I like the soup, it's good and all it's just that you can drink it yourself. Only Mo Linyuan was aware of how she gritted her suppressed rage with the last few words she uttered. However, Mo Linyuan pretended to not have heard it and laughingly said, True, but I want you to feed me. Yi Mu really wanted to dump this small bowl of soup on him. How shameless. He still isn't satisfied. But, with Xiao Mingyu present, she sighed before taking the bowl in her hand. Okay let me. Feed you. Choke on this. Naturally, Mo Linyuan didn't choke on the food. He lowered his head and happily drank the soup in her hand. His exquisite face with a loving smile, in addition to his tender action, made Yi Mu's heart tremble. She suddenly felt like Mo Linyuan looked truly handsome then. Every move he made held indescribable charms. In fact, Zhao Mingyu, who sat across from them, suddenly felt her heart being moved. She couldn't help but think, what's so great about this Yimu? She simply followed Mo Linyuan for many years, but she couldn't do anything with him since she's just a child. She could only stay by Mo Linyuan's side. What's so great about that? Chapter 302 Completing the City Boundary Map 1 Perhaps Mo Linyuan himself may be the only person who truly enjoyed his time during this meal. Although Mo Linyuan mainly wanted to tease his little beloved, the warning also held great significance. Zhao Mingyu observing his affection for Yi Mu was greater than any fantasy she could imagine herself. If she ever tried to make any move against Yi Mu, she would have to reconsider it. Sure enough, the Zhao country's princess behaved a lot more following the meal. However, as Mo Linyuan tried to offer several proposals in exchange for the city boundary map, the Zhao official refused. They were at an impasse for several days. Mo Linyuan's patience was slowly reaching its breaking point. One day, Mo Linyuan dispatched an imperial edict to the Zhao official. It stated that he no longer wanted the city boundary map, and simply told them to depart with a few gifts of appreciation. Zhao Mingyu definitely didn't want to leave. She hasn't come up with a solution yet was told to return home. If she returns without accomplishing her mission, her prestige she acquired in the Zhao country will be ruined. Not knowing how to fix this, Zhao Mingyu couldn't want any longer and privately discussed with the official for a plan. One day after, Mo Linyuan met with the Zhao country's official. He listened as the official spoke. Your Majesty's feeling for Miss Yi is truly the world's most genuine love. Our princess understands this and she knows not to get in between you two. Therefore, she has agreed to accept your majesty's proposal to find her a suitor in the M.O. country. However, the right suitor must be chosen for her before exchanging for the city boundary map. She simply hopes to give her hand in marriage for the sake of uniting the two great countries. Since the beginning Zhao Mingyu had no intention of marrying someone else. However, now she was willing to marry another. This woman was truly tricky. Yet, Mo Linyuan lightly smiled and agreed. Granted. It will be as the princess wishes. Seeing that Zhao official obtained his goal so easily this time, he exclaimed joyfully. Perfect. This foreign minister will return to the Zhao country tomorrow, as the princess will get married soon. Until then, I will have to trouble you to take good care of the arrangements during my absence. Mo Linyuan chuckled and nodded, I will take care of it. The next day, the Zhao minister left. Mo Linyuan watched as the group left for the city walls in the distance, a smirk on his lips. Yi Mu asked, they totally surrendered to you, just so that they could find another method? Mo Linyuan nodded, it doesn't matter what they are scheming. Muir, let's go back and take a look at the last piece of the city boundary map. Now that all the pieces are together, we need to find out where the treasure is. Compared to Mo Linyuan's good mood, Yi Mu was obviously thrown off. She couldn't believe it if she had heard him clearly. Did he say he obtained the city boundary map? Then, since she had arrived in the past, would she simply have to touch the map again to return to her time? As she reflected on this, she couldn't help but secretly peek over at Imo Linyuan. She felt something was off with him. 
He then looked back to meet her eyes, his eyebrows raised in question to inquire. What's wrong? Ah. Uh, nothing, it's nothing. Yi Mu lowered her head. Right then, she suddenly remembered a phrase she heard a long time ago, if the person you like also returns your feelings when you are watching him, he will feel it and return your gaze. Thinking of this, Yi Mu felt even more mournful. She thought, she must first help him find the treasure and avoid touching the map until then. Presently in the emperor's palace, several people were working tirelessly to repair the map. With the peace given to them by the Zhao country, the whole map was now completed. Evidently, each piece of the map fragments were made of different materials. Therefore, they must be redrawn with a finer scale material. Once Yimu arrived, they were almost done piecing it together. In the end, the final product was the unified map. Mo Linyuan slightly smiled and everyone retreated respectfully, as if Mo Linyuan had let out a wolfish howl. The upper right corner of the map had three big characters written, City Boundary Map. Chapter, 303 Completing the City Boundary Map 2 Seeing those three immense characters signifying completion, Yi Mu's instantly felt conflicted. She stepped back cautiously, wanting to stay away from the map. Yet, Mo Linyuan looked at her and chuckled, why are you so far away? Haven't you been obsessing over this map? Come and take a look. Yi Mu stuttered nervously, it's okay. What's there to see on a map anyways? I only care about the treasures. Now that the map pieces are all together, let's go find the treasure. She smiled softly, and said emotionally, I didn't expect us to unify the pieces so quickly. Seeing her hesitation, Mo Linyuan raised his eyebrows, come over here. Yi Mu quietly walked over. The city boundary map was right in front of her. She couldn't believe that it could be such a mystical object, that just by touching it could make her travel through space and time. Although she didn't think it was the same piece of artifact, she still hesitated and didn't dare to touch it. Mo Linyuan was keenly aware of Yi Mu's guarded behavior. He raised his eyebrows and asked, you seem to be afraid of this map why is that? Does it bite? Yi Mu didn't know how to reply. Mo Linyuan was a smart guy. If she said anything, it may be catastrophic. Mo Linyuan waved his hand to dismiss everyone. He then took Yi Mu's hand. Hmm, why do you seem to be afraid to touch it? Yi Mu quickly denied it, no, I, I have no problem with it. If she said she was afraid, Mo Linyuan might destroy the city boundary map as soon as he found the treasures. Mo Linyuan scrutinized her he was doubtful of her words. Lit Muir, we've known each other for eight years now. How could I not know you by now? Tell me the truth, what are you afraid of? Yi Mu simply gazed at the map and refused to respond. She wasn't sure yet if the map worked like before but to be sure, she didn't want to risk it and return this moment. I you're overthinking it. I just didn't sleep well last night. I. As she rambled she tried to pull her hands out of Mo Linyuan's, but he held on tightly. Yi Mu couldn't continue speaking anymore. She looked up at Mo Linyuan and noticed that Mo Linyuan held a strange smile. Whatever you're uncertain about, just give it a try and you'll figure it out. With this, he gripped Yi Mu's hand and pushed it towards the map. At that moment, Yi Mu's eyes widened fearfully. No. However, she spoke too late. The next second her hands pressed heavily onto the city boundary map. She closed her eyes anxiously, afraid to look at it. Yet weirdly enough, after waiting for a long time, nothing happened. She was stunned. Does that mean she couldn't return with the city boundary map? Now she was even more frightened to realize she cannot return with the map. She looked at the map in distress. Nothing was happening could it be that this city boundary map was not as mystical as she had original thought? How how could this be? Could it be the voice from before was lying to her? She could never return home. How could what be? Mo Linyuan asked quietly as he stood behind her. Right then, his expression was hidden in the darkness. But, with a cold voice, his next sentence caused Yi Mu to shiver fearfully. So, in order for you to return to your place of origin you would need the city boundary map. Chapter, 304 This one is a counterfeit one. Yi Mu was speechless. Right then, her mind was in chaos. This contradicted all her previous knowledge from before. 
She felt her body collapsing as a her brain held chaotic thoughts. What if she obtained the city boundary map, and still couldn't return then all her hard work was for nothing, and it would have all been a joke. Why am I not able to return? Why? She couldn't figure it out. Seeing how stunned she had become, Mo Linyuan quickly grabbed tightly on her shoulders. Yi Mu. Yi Mu mournfully glanced over at Mo Linyuan, but her eyes were glazed over. Look at me. Mo Linyuan was more grave than ever, which caused Yi Mu to refocus on him. Don't you want to know, why is it that you cannot return? He originally wanted contemptuous, but when Mo Linyuan saw how devastated she looked, his lips held an inexplicable bitterness instead. Yi Mu pursed her lips and looked at him with red eyes. She truly wanted to know, why is it that she cannot return? Mo Linyuan let out a long sigh. That's because this piece of the city boundary map is a counterfeit. Of course you cannot return with it. Yi Mu immediately became more sober. Counterfeit? This piece of the city boundary map is fake. Seeing how doubtful Yi Mu was, the formidable Mo Linyuan let out another long breath of sigh. Think about it, the Zhao country already knew I was looking for the last piece of the map. Suppose they found it, why would they give it to me so easily? Yi Mu paused, then turned to peek at him, then this portion of the map. Mo Linyuan replied, I simply instructed someone to fabricate it, it wasn't a true unification of the map. This map may seem complete on the surface, but in truth many parts of it are fake. If someone saw it and tried to snatch it away, they could spend their whole life and still not be able to find the treasures. At that moment, Yi Mu was relieved. However, she let her guard down too early, because Mo Linyuan now knew what she needed to return home. The hall once again fell into silence. After a while, Mo Linyuan muttered, Back then, I had assumed you were like a little fairy from folklore, you needed me to accomplish my mission before you could return home. I hypothesized you needed the treasure itself to be able to return. Never would I have thought you actually needed this seemingly useless looking piece of map. Yi Mu lowered her head in guilt, I didn't mean to hide it from you. I was just afraid. You're afraid that, if I knew this map was what you needed, I would be the first person to destroy it after finding the treasures. Mo Linyuan frigidly sneered, it goes without saying, you know me really well. Yi Mu sighed. She had already hurt Mo Linyuan's feelings. At this point, she would simply make it worse if she spoke any more on the matter. A while later, Mo Linyuan suddenly retreated a few steps. His retreat was a reflection of his attitude then. Originally, he should have been fumingly angry. However, he already knew in his heart that anger wouldn't solve the problem. When conflicting views arised, he had to come up with a conflicting solution. That way, he would be able to devise the most suitable response to solve it and avoid producing the opposite of his desired result. Do you know why I fabricated this fake map? Mo Linyuan abruptly changed the subject, which made Yi Mu feel relieved and a little burdened at the same time. You want to wait for Xiao Minyu to try and steal it? Chapter 305 This one is a counterfeit too. Mo Linyuan shook his head, Zhao Mingyu doesn't need to steal. What she wants is to acquire my trust. Right now, I can deduce that the emperor of the Zhao country sent her because she has talents that others don't have. Mo Linyuan pretended to think over the matter that happened before and intently analyzed the situation with her. Maybe Zhao Mingyu is good at martial arts and can take us off guard maybe she has photographic memory and can easily memorize the map with one glance regardless, in preparation of what's to come, I prepared this deceptive counterfeit here to see. Yimi truly didn't know how to reply. She simply muttered, you are truly a genius. Of course. From the piece gifted by the Zhao country, if it was fake, the edges wouldn't have matched with other pieces. Although I'm guessing it is 80% fake, just based on the edges and how well they fit together, we can conclude that the people of Zhao do in fact possess the true city boundary map. Yi Mu asked, then is it possible that it is in Zhao Mingyu's possession? Mo Linyuan nodded, that a possibility cannot be ruled out. Yi Mu pondered about Zhao Mingyu and her character. She seemed to be very tough at first impression. If they tried to use force, it would be difficult to resolve. Right then, Mo Linyuan suddenly took a step closer. She was once again trapped between him and the dragon desk. You why are you suddenly in my personal space? Yi Mu made eye contact with him. 
She knew she was in danger then, but didn't dare to escape. M.O. Linyuan said earnestly, Little Muir, once you reach marriageable age, let's get married, all right? What? Yi Mu looked at him in astonishment. She didn't expect the subject to change so rapidly. M.O. Linyuan spoke sincerely, If one day you truly have to return, and I cannot stop you then I hope at least before you leave me, your body and mind, all of you will belong to me. There's no way. That would be so unfair for him. You don't have to think about what's fair and not fair. This matter is something I have decided on. I want to be able to have you, in any way that I can. His words really shook Yimou. Mo Linyuan could have taken the more radical approach, yet he didn't. He could have hid the truth from her that this map was a counterfeit, and let her become disheartened, but he didn't. He had always loved and respected her, yet she. Yimou opened her mouth, and the words, I won't return home anymore almost escaped her lips, but in the end she swallowed them back. She has to think about this. Reflect on this again. Naturally, M.O. Linyuan didn't know about Yi Mu's internal struggle. However, he knew exactly what he was doing. Before this, he had deliberately planned this temptation, but the result truly surprised him. He was really glad that he prepared early on to use a fake map to explore this possibility. He still had time. He is confident that regardless of who was waiting for Yi Mu back home, he will be able to take that person's place, little by little. Right then, a servant came by. Reporting to your majesty, Princess Zhao wishes to see you. Yi Mu quickly tried to bury her emotions and pushed Mo Linyuan away. Mo Linyuan rearranged some stuff on the desk before he replied, let her in. On her way here, Zhao Mingyu already guessed that Mo Linyuan must have the unified in his possession. Although the copy she provided was fake, Mo Linyuan couldn't be aware of that. Therefore, she would have to be considered an honorary individual who contributed to completion of the map. There was no way he wouldn't agree to her request now, right? A smirk emerged from the corner of her lip. The reason why the Zhao country sent her was, not only because of her talent in writing and martial arts, but also her superb memory. Any writing she has seen, she could even recite it backwards. Although a map is more challenging, she had already trained herself before coming here. She only needs to get one glance in, and she will be able to obtain the completed map in memory. Chapter 306 Future Female Emperor 1 Although Zhao Mingyu was mentally expecting the best outcome, her expression didn't give anything away. She bowed respectfully in greeting before she stood up. Mo Linyuan asked with a smile, what could have happened to have Princess visit so unexpectedly? Zhao Mingyu deceitfully discussed with Mo Linyuan concerning her prospective marriage partner. She then asked with a smile. Now that your majesty has finally collected the whole city boundary map, the country of Mo will prosper even more in the near future. I was not sure if I may have the honor of possibly taking a look at the legendary left behind by the empire. Mo Linyuan and Yi Mu looked at each other. Everything was going as M.O. Linyuan predicted. However, he wasn't going to make it easy for the opponent. Otherwise, the enemy would become suspicious. Therefore, he laughingly said. Although the completed map has been repainted, there are still many parts that have not been confirmed yet. Once this monarch is sure that there are no issues with the treasure map, I will naturally let you take a look as an honorary contributor. That that would already be too late. Zhao Mingyu originally thought that she would marry Mo Linyuan and gain his favor. That way she could easily get a chance to take a look at the city boundary map. Not only would she have been able to gain more insights, she would also be doted on by Mo Linyuan, before she finally made an escape having gained all that she needed. Right now she was still in danger. It was difficult to leave at this moment, but it wasn't a big problem. She must help Mo Linyuan help find the treasure, so that the Zhao country could snatch it right in front of Mo country's eyes. If Mo Linyuan already caught her red-handed, then it would be too late to achieve this. Meanwhile, she gave a forced smile, although I am uncertain, may your majesty permit me to help you a little? Oh. Mo Linyuan looked at her suspiciously, how does the princess plan to help? Zhao Mingyu replied, I was once taught by a feng shui master the art of landscape reading. The imperial treasure must be concealed in certain feng shui landmarks. Rather than your majesty seeking blindly, I could help you take a look at it. I've heard that it could be located where the dragon's vein is I may be able to point it out. 
Clearly, she had prepared this response ahead of time. Mo Linyuan wasn't sure if the other person could actually read feng shui landscapes. Since he had already changed many parts of the map itself, if she could, she would be able to decipher that something was wrong with the map. However the art feng shui is truly mysterious. What's more, this princess was only 18 years old, she couldn't possibly comprehend too much. This could simply be her excuse to take a look at it. Evidently, Mo Linyuan feigned hesitation before he chuckled, all right. Then I must ask that princess please use her expertise to point out a thing or two. After speaking, he finally brought out the city boundary map. Zhao Mingyu watched him move as her heart beat wildly. It's the city boundary map. Containing the hidden imperial treasures that held all the powers of the central plains. Before coming here, her father promised her that if she obtained the map of the imperial treasures, then he would give the throne to rule over their empire even as a princess once he left the throne. Just the thought of herself becoming the first female emperor in the continent made her excited with anticipation. Yi Mu was intently observing Zhao Mingyu's movements. She seemed fairly calm and collected, but her hands hidden underneath the sleeves were trembling. Yi Mu had already guessed that Zhao Mingyu didn't know anything about feng shui, rather she most likely had phenomenal memory instead. Zhao Mingyu slowly unfolded the rolled up scroll. She noticed the ink was still very new. It would seem she definitely came at the right time. This painting hasn't even been preserved yet. Her eyes filled with greed, but she worked to suppress it. As she analyzed it, she then frowned. Your Majesty, could this map be a counterfeit? Chapter 307 Future Female Emperor 2 Mo Linyuan and Yi Mu were stunned. However, Mo Linyuan was quick to respond, that's impossible. With the exception to the piece you gave, every single piece came from the original and cannot be fake. He said it so confidently Zhao Mingyu simply wanted to test him. After all, she herself gave a fake piece of the map, it wasn't for certain if the opponent would also give her a forged copy as well. They were testing each other, both of which were masters of deceptions. Zhao Mingyu heard him, but regardless she still put on the act. Really? I just noticed that the mountain ranges seemed to have ruptures, which was why I asked. Mo Linyuan paused before finally saying, I apologize Princess Zhao, this monarch does not understand feng shui. But no matter, I will ask a feng shui master to come and help this monarch take a look at it and check that it is not falsified. After all, I have gone through such painstaking trouble for this. Zhao Mingyu was using various methods to stall. Sometimes she would say this was incorrect, or that there were problems. Eventually, Mo Linyuan became deeply doubtful of this city boundary map's authenticity. That was the effect that Zhao Mingyu was looking for. As long as he had doubts, that would mean he wouldn't rashly go treasure hunting. What's more, he would first want to confirm if the city boundary map was real or fake. That way, her country would have enough time to go search for it. At last, she was able to memorize all the details of the map. She then placed the map down and said soberly. My apologies your majesty, maybe it was me who didn't study enough. I cannot find the dragon's vein in this map. Mo Linyuan frowned and waved his hand in dismissal, no harm done. Thanks to the princess reminder, this monarch shouldn't go treasure hunting yet until after he has checked that this map is indeed genuine. That way no one would get injured on the treasure hunt. Zhao Mingyu's eyes held a glimpse of arrogance, in that case, I will no longer bother your majesty. If this was indeed authentic, please do let me know as I am also very doubtful about it. I would really want to see for myself what the treasures look like. Mo Linyuan nodded, definitely. The completion of this map was also thanks to Princess Zhao. If you are willing, maybe we may go treasure hunting together when the time comes. Zhao Mingyu softly smiled, in that case, I must thank your majesty in advance. Sure. Mo Linyuan answered absentmindedly. Once Zhao Mingyu left, he lightly snickered, this princess Zhao is truly interesting. Yi Mu scowled and asked, I had a feeling she obviously doesn't know anything about feng shui. Yet she spoke so convincingly to seize this opportunity. She is truly someone with outstanding abilities. My little Muir also noticed it. Mo Linyuan grinned and beamed at Yi Mu. She made such a simple demand, asking that I double check the authenticity of the map. In hopes that I would delay my search because of doubts, just so that she can give the Zhao country more time what's more. 
Mo Linyuan's hand wrapped Yi Mu's hair in his fingers. He smirked with hidden meaning, in case I discovered that she forged her piece of the map, she would also have time to flee from death. I do not know the emperor of the Zhao country well, but he must have promised to give her something significant for her to take such dangerous risks. Yi Mu suddenly remembered Zhao Mingyu's original ending in the book. She then murmured, maybe, the throne. Mo Linyuan heard her, and his eyes shined brightly. That's right, why didn't I think of that before? He quickly walked over to the dragon desk and laughed evilly, if so, I must also give her a little gift of my own. Evidently, Mo Linyuan was eagerly writing a secret degree on a scroll. On the other hand, Zhao Mingyu was drawing a copy of the map. She drew quickly, mindlessly, for two straight hours as she tirelessly copied down the whole city boundary map in which she saw before. Chapter, 308 Looking at the map in front of him, Zhao Mingyu breathed a long sigh of relief. Now that the city boundary map has been obtained, the method to take it away has become the biggest problem. She is now in the M.O. country. Not only did she not receive M.O. Linyuan's favor, but she also took the risk of looking at the city boundary map. With her martial arts, she found that the people guarding her had doubled because of her actions. She can't leave right now, so how would she send out the map? Or would it be better to wait a few days, and give the betrothal gifts that her good imperial brother will send to her? Waiting for imperial brother to come is undoubtedly the safest way. However, she wants the throne, and imperial brother is also a competitor. If she could, she would prefer to give the city boundary map to the spies hiding in Mo country all these years. People who belong to her emperor father not only would bring her peace of mind, but they also want steal her credit. But how can she leave the palace? Zhao Mingyu's thoughts were complicated. After everything was arranged, Mo Linyuan embraced Yi Mu as they slept at night. Perhaps because of everything that happened during the day, Yi Mu did not do much to resist. At this time, the skylight above their heads was open, and the two of them could see the stars outside. This skylight was built by Mo Linyuan for Yi Mu. He hoped that Yi Mu could experience unfettered freedom in the palace like when she was outside. Mo Linyuan asked suddenly after a while. Xiao Muir, you said last time that someone is waiting for you to save them, can you elaborate on it? He originally didn't really like this topic, but after consideration, only by knowing himself and his opponent, can he enter the battle without losing. Yi Mu thought to herself, since he knew that with the city boundary map she can return, it really didn't matter if she told him. So, she told him everything from beginning to end. Including that sentence, that if she got the city boundary map, she could arrive at the original time and return to the original time. Mo Linyuan's mood was very complicated, because in Yi Mu's mouth, he is a figure in the history books, a man who has been weathered for thousands of years, and has long since passed during ancient times. No wonder Yi Mu behaved incompatible with the world at the beginning, because she was originally incompatible with this world. Unexpectedly, I could achieve that kind of success in the end. He finally laughed, but after laughing, he suddenly asked, if you finally find out that I am not the legendary emperor you imagined, would you be disappointed? Yi Mu shook her head and said without hesitation, in my opinion, you are more exceptional than what is written in the books. After Mo Linyuan listened, a bit of bitterness flashed in his eyes, no matter how good he was, wouldn't she still want to go back because of her father? But he couldn't say anything. Xiao Mu values relationships and righteousness, it is also the reason why he likes her. She can fight with her life for the people she puts in her heart. Compared with men, she wouldn't lose. He frowned, is there no one way to get the best of both worlds? He was sad, thinking of his ending, and suddenly felt it was very reasonable. You said that after I dominate the country, I will die in my forties. Then, I probably know why I died. Yi Mu froze, and then she felt Mo Linyuan behind her, hugging her tighter. If I lose you, even if I get the world, it doesn't mean anything. If I die young, isn't this ending very normal? Yi Mu suddenly felt sad. She had pondered the reasons before, but she had never thought that the reason was actually because of her. Chapter, 309 You want, please live well, can't you? She shrank up a little uncomfortably, thinking that Mo Linyuan would end up dying due to depression because of her, she had the thought of not wanting to leave and guarding him for the rest of her life. Mo Linyuan felt Yi Mu's trembling and asked with a smile, Xiao Muir, are you feeling sorry for me? 
Yi Mu nodded honestly. At this moment, she couldn't ignore her own heart anymore. She had already started to care about Imo Linyuan. Then, when I find the treasure, will you leave immediately with the city boundary map? Yi Mu shook her head. As long as she thinks about it, she feels reluctant, but if she doesn't go back then what about her father? When Emo Linyuan saw her shaking her head, his heart finally loosened a lot, but his desire to destroy the city boundary map did not disappear. If you get the map of the city, can you arrive at the original time and return to the original time? So if he doesn't let her get it, she won't be able to go back. The room was quiet, but at this moment, Emo Linyuan's voice suddenly rose, with a bit of shock. Wait! Xiao Muir, you just said that if you get the city boundary map, you can arrive at the original time and return to the original time. Yi Mu's heart sank and nodded. But at this time, Mo Linyuan actually sat up, and in the darkness, his eyes were shining as he watched Yi Mu. Meaning, you will go back to the moment you came. Yi Mu nodded. It must be at that time, when Dad was going to have an operation, otherwise, she wouldn't be so anxious. Seeing her nodding, Mo Linyuan actually laughed. The laughter was low at first, but eventually became louder and louder, with a bit of self-deprecation, but more was excitement. What's wrong with you? Yi Mu felt that Mo Linyuan's reaction was so strange. He knew, so why was he smiling so happily? Mo Linyuan suddenly grabbed her hand and said seriously, Xiao Mu, you misunderstood from the beginning. He smiled bitterly, then you made me misunderstand too. I knew it. I knew there was a solution to everything. I am a child chosen by the heavens, how could the heavens treat me like this? How could the heavens take you away? Yi Mu was a little confused, what do you mean? Mo Linyuan chuckled. He stretched out his hand and patted Yi Mu's head. Did you forget what you said before? You said that if you get the city boundary map, you can come at the original time and return to the original time. We can stay together for a lifetime, and then in a hundred years, use the city boundary map to go back. You will still return to the original point in time that you wanted, won't you? Yi Mu's eyes widened instantly. Can this be done? She felt uncertain at first, and then the more she thought about it, the more reasonable it sounded. That's right, arrive at the original time and return to the original time. Doesn't it mean that whenever she gets the map of the city, she will go back to the point in time when she came? The problem that had troubled her for so long was so easily solved by Mo Linyuan. Then before when she was sad for so long, what was it for? Yi Mu was stunned, and Mo Linyuan was also stunned. Before, he was entangled in various ways, wanted to destroy the city boundary map, and then tried his best to keep Xiao Mu here, but the solution was simple. Isn't it? They don't need to think so much at all, Xiao Mu is a gift from God. With her, he will never die young in this life. With her, he will never be alone again in this life. Or, this is the biggest reason why she will come to this world. She exists because of him. Chapter, 310 Meet up outside the palace one. The next day, Yi Mu was still in a state of confusion. If she went back after a hundred years, wouldn't she have lived for two lifetimes? Would there be such a good thing? She was still muddled, but when she was admiring the imperial garden, she was stopped by Zhao Mingyu. Miss Yi has such elegant interests. She wore a beautiful skirt and had restored her grand princess tolerance. In Zhao country, she was like a prince, subservient only to one, with thousands below that obeyed her every word, so her aura was different from ordinary women. Yi Mu looked at her suspiciously. Before, she had lied to this woman and said that she was a country princess, but looking at this woman now, it seemed that she didn't care at all. Yi Mu asked straightforwardly, Princess Zhao, do you have a concern? Zhao Mingyu walked over and held her hand affectionately. Miss Yi, I heard that you have been in the palace for many years. Yi Mu nodded, and Zhao Mingyu asked again, then you should know the most fun spots in the capital, right? Before Yi Mu could speak, she shook Yi Mu's hand and continued, I have admired Mo country for a long time. I heard that the capital of Mo country is the most prosperous in the Seven Kingdoms, and occasionally I can see Western foreigners. Can you take me there? To take a look. Yi Mu frowned. This princess wanted to leave the palace. There are so many people guarding around her, just to prevent her from leaving. It was impossible for her to not understand Mo Linyuan's intent, but now, 
she wants to leave the palace. Was it to meet with Zhao Country's people? Yi Mu finally understood the truth. She smiled slightly when she remembered what Mo Linyuan had said. Princess, you have a special status you can't leave the palace as you please. Don't you know? Zhao Mingyu also knew that although Yi Mu looked young, she was not easy to deceive. Zhao Mingyu could only incite her pity, and plead, Miss Yi, please promise me. My dowry will come in a few days, and after they arrive, I will not have any free time anymore because my father knows that I am accustomed to being undisciplined. This time, there are a lot of teaching mamas who have come to teach me etiquette before I get married. Yi Mu remained unmoved until Zhao Mingyu said unwillingly, Why don't we bring more people? Is that acceptable? Our safety will definitely not be a problem. What she meant was that she would be obedient, and even if she was not obedient, she couldn't create any problems with so many people around. Yi Mu hesitated for a while, until Zhao Mingyu held her affectionately and said with a smile, Don't hesitate. Let's go. I heard that today is the Lantern Festival. Yi Mu was taken aback. When she talked about the Lantern Festival, Yi Mu couldn't help but think of Wuxian who had been dead for two years. Her gaze drifted away. Can we go? Let's go. Yi Mu finally nodded. Zhao Mingyu let out a long sigh of relief. With Yi Mu, she can go out without needing to go through Mo Linyuan. Mo Linyuan was too deep and unfathomable. If possible, Zhao Mingyu didn't want to negotiate with him. It would be best to avoid him. In the evening, the two girls left the palace together. Just as Zhao Mingyu thought, although there were a lot of people following them, Yi Mu entered and left the palace with ease. Even with a foreign princess, no one could say a word. This degree of imperial pampering was enviable. Lanterns were being hung. Zhao Mingyu was right, today really was the Lantern Festival. Noticing that Yi Mu kept looking towards the temple in the distance, Zhao Mingyu rolled her eyes and said with a smile, Sister Yi, since we are out, there are already so many people on the streets, yet we still brought so many guards. Isn't that inappropriate? If the guards don't follow us, then we can go to the temple fair. Chapter, 311 Meet up outside the palace too. Yi Mu listened carefully before glancing up at Zhao Mingyu. Princess, give up because they will definitely follow you, but I can take a step ahead first. With that said, Yi Mu ordered those who brought them out to protect the princess, and then, ignoring Zhao Mingyu's protests, went to the temple fair lantern riddles were being guessed. Yi Mu remembered a few years ago, she guessed a lantern riddle and gave the most magnificent palace lantern to Wuxing his brows then were illuminated by the glowing light. Thinking about it right now, she felt the memory was still so vivid, but in a flash, two years have already passed. He once said that that day was the happiest day of his life. His happiness felt a little too simple. Yi Mu thought about it, guessed a lantern riddle, then took a lamp and walked back. Next time she visited Wuxing's grave, she would give him this lantern. After a short while, the direction she came from suddenly became frantic, and then she heard someone say, Help! Someone was kidnapped. Yi Mu turned her head and found that, as expected, the noise was from Zhao Mingyu's direction. From the moment they came out, Zhao Mingyu had been making a fuss. When she thought Yi Mu was not paying attention, Zhao Mingyu left a secret signal. It cannot be denied that just to spread news to Zhao country, the princess has done her best as a spy. Yi Mu walked back. Seeing that Yi Mu had returned, the palace guard quickly reported to her whilst shaking in trepidation. Miss, this subordinate deserves to die ten thousand times over. Just now, a lot of people suddenly rushed over. When the crowd dissipated, Princess Zhao mysteriously disappeared. Seeing the guards get worked up, Yi Mu smiled slightly and motioned for them to stay calm. She waved, and when Feng, who had been hiding in the dark, came over and whispered in Yi Mu's ear, someone abducted Princess Zhao. Although the princess looked panicked, she didn't yell out. I'm afraid it was Zhao country's people. They went in that direction. Yi Mu held the lantern and nodded. Okay, let's go over there to look for them. Remember, make as much noise as possible. It's best if you let everyone around you know. Yes. At this time, Zhao Mingyu's heart jumped into her throat. She questioned the people in front of her, what's the matter with you? Why did you act so rashly, do you want to kill me? Didn't I tell you to watch my hand gestures before acting? 
The other people looked at each other, and then the leader whispered, Sorry, princess, a crowd just happened to come in your direction and we didn't want to let such a good opportunity go. We ended up offending you, princess. Although Xiao Mingyu was very angry, she also knew that it was not the time to care about this. She frowned and stuffed a hollow tube into the other person's hand. She said nervously, this thing must be handed over to Emperor Father. You can't let it pass through anyone else's hands, do you understand? A gloomy light flashed in the other party's eyes. He nodded, and cautiously said, Please rest assured, princess. We will definitely protect it and bring it back. At this time, there was a noise from the people outside, and soon there were footsteps of officers and soldiers coming over. Zhao Mingyu frowned and said, You guys leave quickly. Her people were also a little panicked, and said without hesitation, Yes, princess, take care. Then they left. When Zhao Mingyu saw them walking away, she pulled out a hairpin from her head and pressed it hard across her arm. Blood started welling forward. She took a breath to calm down, then stumbled out. Chapter 312 Take Her Away 1 It looked very scary with blood flowing down half her arm. Seeing Zhao Mingyu staggering towards her, Yi Mu couldn't help but stop in her steps and raise her eyebrows slightly. The moment Zhao Mingyu saw Yi Mu, it was like seeing her saviors. She rushed towards Yimu, but none of them came to support her body. Zhao Mingyu gritted her teeth with all kinds of anger in her heart. Her original plan was to tuck the item in a hidden place and let the secret guards retrieve it without anyone knowing, but she did not expect that they would suddenly come out like this, making her very peeved. Now this situation was against her. Yimu and the people from Mo country had doubts about her before, but after this incident, it would be even more difficult for her to escape in the future. For a moment, she actually wanted to leave with those people. However, she knew very well that the imperial city was heavily guarded. If she followed those people, Yimu would definitely mobilize the entirety of the city's troops to find them. Once that happened, none of them could escape, and she would be forced to come back and hand over the map. Zhao Mingyu ran in front of Yimu with a very frightened expression on her face. Sister Yi, are you here to save me? Fortunately, you scared away those people. They originally wanted to harass me. The surrounding people were dispersed by the soldiers who arrived later. The streets that were originally very lively suddenly became deserted, with only the imperial army left. Only Zhao Mingyu was crying and complaining. Fortunately, I resisted desperately and escaped a catastrophe. Sister, I want thy right. Zhao Mingyu pretended to be very weak because she thought that Yi Mu and the others did not know about her martial arts, and she had a deep cut on her arm. When Yi Mu saw that Zhao Mingyu was about to faint, Yi Mu stretched out her hand to support her and sighed faintly. Let's return to the palace. Yes. After returning to the palace, Missouri Lingyuan visited the palace where Zhao Mingyu resided. Because Zhao Mingyu made a deep cut in her arm, it might leave scars. Mo Linyuan didn't seem to care. He went around for a while, and then prepared to take Yimu away. Zhao Mingyu's thoughts were already in his grasp. As for whether Zhao Mingyu could survive in the end, it all depended on whether she was smart or not. But when Mo Linyuan was about to leave, Zhao Mingyu suddenly stopped him. Mo Linyuan felt the matter was a little strange, so he listened to Zhao Mingyu. Your Majesty, can you stay and listen to me say a few words? Yi Mu looked at Emo Linyuan and said, Then I will wait for you outside. Seeing Yi Mu holding a lantern in her hand, Emo Linyuan pursed his lips as he thought of something, and let her go. After Yi Mu left, Zhao Mingyu, who was leaning on the couch, looked even weaker. She looked bright and generous, and her weak appearance at this time was also very pleasant, but Emo Linyuan sat beside her as if he hadn't seen it. Princess Zhao, what do you want to say? Zhao Mingyu lowered her eyelids and said guiltily, Your Majesty, I don't know why a culprit suddenly targeted me today. I really didn't do anything to betray Mo country. Mo Linyuan smiled. Princess, what do you mean? You are not from Mo country, so why would I ask you to be loyal to Mo country? What he said was heartbreaking to Zhao Mingyu. She quickly said, It's not like that. I really think of myself as a native of Mo country, and I really want to marry here. I intend to maintain the peaceful relations of the two countries. Truly. Your Majesty, you must believe me.